Peace family, y'all know who it is. It's Bakari Lamuma, the progenitor of LamumaSpeaks.com. And yo, Dynasty Mir was good. Right. And we're here once again on a dual live stream where we're going to have a great conversation, provocative conversation, and an evocative conversation regarding our the Black Hebrew Israelites and Black Indians. It's the conscious community, the real culture vulture so if you're watching family make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell and hit the like button you're watching dinosaur samir search for uhuru and lamumba speaks live here on youtube uh so once again um before we get started gotta go over the ground rules family because we are going to be tapping people in because the link is in the description as well as in the chat it will be there momentarily but here we make sure diversity of thought is welcome so you could be on the left you could be on the right you could be right down the middle no issue Matter of fact, we need to do a a, a, a a broadcast on Trump versus Biden because I actually think your boy gonna win. I, I actually think he's gonna win. Trump, yeah, Trump twenty twenty four. Um, <laughs> we gotta um, make sure no racial epithets are allowed. No racial epithets. In fact, we've expanded that to no epithets of any kind are allowed on a broadcast. So if you come on, make sure that you're using above board language. We don't want people to engage in untoward type of language. Uh, facts over feelings. So if you come on and we're having a conversation, you disagree with someone, make sure you attack the argument the person is making rather than the person themselves, right? No ad hominems and no fundamentally false statements. So I always give the example that you could believe that LeBron James is the GOAT. I don't think he is, right? But you could say that. But if you were to claim that LeBron James was the GOAT because Michael Jordan only won two championships, that would be a fundamentally false statement. So we are going to hit the timeout on you, right? We're going to go like the Apollo and yank the damn, yank you off stage, and we're right. going to make sure that, that we clean right. it up because it, that's our platform. And we are responsible for the information that is disseminated on our platform. And last but not least, our mission here is to not to, to neither exonerate or vilify, but to challenge conventional wisdom and re-examine what has previously been accepted as fact. So, Brother Dinus, yes, sir. Why have you chosen? Why did you want to do a show on the Black Hebrew Israelites and Black Indians? Well, well and it's, it's not. It's not. It's not culture. just. It's not just the um, Black Indians. It's just okay. not. It's not just the uh, Hebrew Israelites. You can also throw in the vegan community. You could throw in the what? The vegan community. Okay. Okay. You know. You know. I've heard Dinus. Africans didn't eat meat. Until the Europeans came, we were always vegan. Okay, yeah, this is probably okay. I see what so you're So there, there, there are certain it is like like I said, it just isn't limited or exclusive to Hebrew Israelites or gotcha. Indians. But in the the so called Black Indians and the Hebrew Israelites recently have been the loudest. Okay, gotcha. And the wrongest. Okay, I'm hearing um, we ain't African. Right, that's Indian, a lot of it. Yeah, we the Hebrews. Uh, I'm hearing Wida is Judah, which has been debunked a millions of times. Right, absolutely. I'm hearing that during the slave trade, the Africans knew specifically who the Hebrews were, and that's who they sold. Which is right. So, so we're talking right. about the falsification of African history. Absolutely. Right. And brother Jonathan Miller says, "Don't forget the Moors. We from Moor Morocco, right?" Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. You know, you don't have to drive around with a license or registered vehicle, right? Sovereign just, citizen type stuff. Sovereign, yeah. sovereign citizen. And right. what I'm noticing, uh, Lumumba, the majority of this information is rooted in coming from the prison system. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. You know, we talk, you know, brother um, B. Kualan, he always talks about liquor store scholarship. Right. right. And so this is where a lot of this comes from, unfortunately. Look, you look know. a store scholarship. Absolutely. And, and and the prison, right? The prison yard scholarship. I would agree with you 100 percent there. Is that a UGA sweater you got on right there? Absolutely. The second to last team that beat Ohio State. That that's cute. Go Bucks. But that's the number truth. one. We're but that's go, the truth. We're gonna go wire to wire number but one. That's the truth. Game. But that's the truth. That's the truth. That was a but, fact. Listen. Can you admit it, that? Can you admit that? First and foremost, now, I, oh, I oh, you not. gave your disclaimer. How are we going to tell the truth and how are we going to be rooted in facts? Absolutely, so we be rooted in facts. Is that can, can I answer the question? I mean, you you already let me oh, answer. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I can admit that Georgia did beat Ohio State on the last on the last end of the game, missed field goal. See why That's I got that? Did we win but I also need you, I need you to be honest with your with your audience about were you in the fetal position during the game when we was kicking your derriere? It doesn't matter who. So it's, simple, so it's simply a yes or no. Per permission to treat the witness as hostile. I wasn't in the. Field I position. want the truth. Hold on. 
I was in the fetal position, but I did fall out on the ground. Okay, you did fall down on the ground. Now that is that is true. I, did, true. I did fall out of the chair. Okay, okay, very I good. Did. That's yes, you did. And, and, I, and you were using some though. some epithets as well, if I can recall. Yeah, when when you guys were up by like fourteen or seventeen points, I was a little some nervous. Untoward behavior. I said, look, I didn't know they spoke that way at the University of Georgia, right? <laughs> so, but let's oh, get yeah. back on let's get back on task. So you mentioned um, the so, so we issue. have the, yes. the, the uh, you know we the Omex. Yes. Because just because so we the Omex because mm -hmm. I saw some pictures on the wall and there were some mm -hmm. dark skinned people so that's us we got that we ain't African right we the Cherokee um, we the Hebrews mm -hmm. you know the Africans knew who the Hebrews were yeah I've actually seen the picture of that I posted that on social media yeah right that uh, Africans didn't eat meat they were vegetarians before the white man came. Right. I mean, another one I, 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 you know, people would argue is that, you know, well, you know, about circumcision and Jewish people created circumcision. If you actually studied history of classical and, and classical African civilizations, we find circumcision was part of ancient Egyptian culture. Right. So right. We, we see a lot of. But what do you think um, this is rooted in? I got did another you, one for you, too. I got another one. For okay. You. Sorry to interrupt. I'm answering a question. No, no, it's all good. Uh, Hit that light. Phone. We uh, we were. Uh, uh, the white man didn't bring the concept of homosexual. I mean, the white man is who brought the concept of homosexuality to to Africa. And before the white man came, it was normal. I, I, I've heard this one, and that's stemming from uh, in Ghana. They just passed the um, the the LG, right. the anti LGBT LGBTQ. Right, right. I, mean, I think this so, person put in there, Christ yeah, the argument Christopher Columbus, uh, King James was was black. Right. I mean, I've even had people make the claim that Hitler was black. All type of stupid stuff. Buddha was black. I mean, I mean, he for example, black. Umar Johnson was the one talking about Buddha means black face, and that is not what Buddha means. <laughs> Your boy, Doctor Umar. What's wrong, Doctor Umar, man? Doctor Umar is hilarious. That, that that's your boy, man. Hey. More power to to, uh, to Dr. Umar. Yeah. So yeah, Ab the argument Abraham Lincoln was black. I mean, and if, this is a good point. I'm glad Brother Charles uh, brought this up because Abraham Lincoln was a white supremacist. So why would you be trying to claim him? That makes no right. sense whatsoever. I would. So yeah, the question is, why do you think these 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 type of uh, things are so prevalent? This is my theory. In mm -hmm. fact, it's not a theory. Well, it's it's rooted in theory, but I think it's I'm a right. consider as fact. What do what does Israel, the United States of America, will say uh, Far East, Eastern? Uh, I don't know what would we'll say Oriental religions. I don't know if that's the correct term when it comes to Buddhism and yoga and Hinduism. Right, right. What do all these? What are, what are these? What is this? What 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 does this have in common? Oh, uh, I would argue that many people view these religions or, or cultures or nationalities as some of the preeminent powers in, in the in the modern world. White people romanticize them. Mm, okay. So okay. since white okay. people romanticize okay. them and find value in them, my mm. theory is black people want to attach themselves to it. Wow. Okay. Because if you listen, if you if you listen to the Hebrews and the Native Americans, it's so rooted in we ain't African, we ain't from West Africa, that's not us. Mm -hmm. To the point where they would tell you that West Africans or Africans practicing their traditional uh, indigenous religions mm -hmm. is the reason why they're cursed and why they need to follow the Torah. Right. Then if you ask them who wrote the Torah, where, where it comes from, here comes the spookism. Right. But there's no... You sound like me now. <laughs> there, there, but there's no there's no doubt that our voodoo, Ifa, that's ours. Mm -hmm. No question, no argument. But since it's not romanticized, or romanticized by black um, by white people, right. and since it's been vilified by white people, they're now we're coming up coming up with all these theories that that's evil. And how we need to get back to what white people romanticizes, and that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think I think this is a hell of a yeah. I think you I think you're onto something here. 
Yeah. I oh, mean, it's, it's just, I mean, you just got to just look. It's mm -hmm. That's what they do. Ro white people romanticize it. We claim it. Mm -hmm. White people have not romanticized Western Africa, Central Africa, and su Southern Africa, except for somewhat South Africa. Right. It's all evil, and that's not us. Right. And, white, and people, stuff, I white, people, that. white people romanticize Egypt. That's us, even though uh, at, at, at periods of time, uh, Kim and Egypt were was black civilization. There were right. black civilizations there. White people romanticize Morocco. Yeah, Casablanca. Yeah, Namibia, yeah, yeah. Well, that, 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 yeah. That's us. We're the Moors, even though the Moors were mixed. Right, yeah, yeah. And most, I tell people all the time, being a Moor, and we could just pause for the cause very quickly, want to mm -hmm. be historically accurate, being a Moor during the Middle Ages or the medieval period was a political designation, not a racial one. So you had Moors who were Black Africans, you had Moors who were White Europeans, you had Moors who were Arabs, you had Moors who were Berbers. Right. Like, this is this is what is historically accurate. But oftentimes people conflate these things, particularly because so many Europeans would say, oh, they would call uh, the Black a Moor, but that's because the only Black people that the Europeans met at that time were Moors. Right. Right. So the context matters. We're talking about people kind of playing slick and, slick and loose with the facts. And so when you go out into civil society in the real world, it hurts your credibility when you don't really know uh, all of the information regarding the subject matter that, that one is discussing. Right. So that's my theory when it comes to why we want to attach ourselves to mm -hmm. everything that's not related to our closest ancestors, which are from West Africa. Right. And I, but I would say this, I think also there's a religious aspect to that as well, because when you talk about the Quran, you talk about the Bible, you talk about the Torah, right. the Pentateuch, uh, the, the, the uh, doctrine of those religions are anti-African. Right. Right. So because what they say, this is right and everything else is wrong. Even exactly. Rooted in devil worship. Right. So that plays a role as well, because if you actually believe and follow these non-African, what we would call Abrahamic religions, then there's no way that you could be unapologetically African and practice the Abrahamic religion because the religion requires that you go through a process of self-abnegation. Right. To get closer to the only real God who happens to be Jewish. So we've gotten away from. And, and you're more studied than me. John Hira Clark, Amos Wilson, were they anti-African? No. So we've gotten away from that part of the, from that sector of the conscious community in which the, from, from when I was in the conscious community, and I, I still am, I, mean, I still respect a lot of people in the community. That was what we're rooted in to now we ain't African. We the Hebrew Indians. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. Indians, right? Pretend. So, and, and so I've noticed you've put you've actually put a couple of videos, right, on your channel of prominent African Americans claiming that they had Indian ancestry because their grandma says so. Their grandma that, that, that's so. scholarship now, Lamuba. My grandmama said that her mama, grandmama was Indian, so we Indians. That's scholarship now. Well, I mean, but so, so, but if, so my grandmother, I think she's like 86, 87. It would be tough for me to tell my grandma she don't know what she's talking about. Because I ain't never met. I mean, but Lamumba, come on, man. <laughs> Just got to stop. And then, and then they will triple down on it. You have some people, now you had Henry Louis Gates who was providing the, uh, the DNA test. Right. You got these folks saying, oh, the DNA tests are fake. Wow. To triple down on their grandmother's lie. Mm. So and you and you would argue and I would agree with you that all of this is rooted in them not wanting to accept who and what they are. Right. Be, being West African isn't sexy. Right. That's what it is. Right. Being everything but West African to them is sexy. Right. That's where this is rooted in self hate. So, I mean, so let me ask you, let me ask you this question. I'm thinking about even writing a paper called "How to Make Black Studies Sexy Again." Um, how do we make being African sexy or desirable again? Look, there was a shift, Lamu. I don't. I, there, there was just a shift. I remember in the '80s, right in '90s, when I was listening to hip hop. I mean, I'm 40, I'm 41, but. You know, I was listening, I started listening to hip hop at an early age. I remember yeah, X Clan. I remember X Clan. You know, it was no question we African. I, I 
I mean, I think one of the brothers. Yeah, it was a shit. Now, he, now he's talking about um, the transatlantic slave trade didn't happen. The guy from the X plan. Yeah, there was a brother. He uh, Lord Tyreek, something like that. He was um, and one the of the main dude from the X plan. No, he was a he was a he was like a little bit lighter than you, but he was in there talking about you know, well, I look like a, I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, from Mexico or something like that. Shit don't even make sense. They would go use and get bring people all the way over here. Yeah. So we yeah. Uh, they, they, now they're awesome. saying the slave ships don't exist. I forgot right. that part. Right. Yeah, but I remember we, we went from X Clan to it, it, it was something you know you know who started it. I'm gonna tell you where where it where somewhat rooted from and where it really got, it gained ground. So because I, I got was, an idea too, so I'm gonna hear what you. No, no. Say. So when I was in at the University of Georgia. This is back in like 2003 or 2002, 2003. I was getting my, and this is in the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia. In Athens, Georgia right. I was getting my hair cut. And across the street, they were building this Egyptian building, like mm -hmm. pyramid. And I said, what is that? They said, oh, it's this group called the Duwabians. So that was near Athens? They were in, yeah, they were in Athens. Edith was near Athens and they were in Athens too. They had a bookstore. In fact, I was cool with Dr. York's son. Mm. Ibrahim. He had a bookstore off of uh, Atlanta Highway. So they were in, they were in Athens. And so I, I was in the Wabi. So what happened... That's why they that, kicked you off the team. Okay. <laughs> <I'm whatever. laughs> no, so how it works, like what Dr. York would do, he would take you through certain schools. Mm -hmm. So we do the school of Islam, uh, Judaism, Christianity, AEO, where um, where I joined was ancient Egyptian order. Then in that he would talk about you know more science, Indians. But the point was you were supposed to graduate from each school and go to the next. Some people just got stuck in some in the same in in that one train of thought of school. So, for example, I would meet and when I moved to Atlanta, I would meet former Nuwabians who were stuck on being Moors. Hmm. But you were supposed to leave that and go to the next door in the next school. I found Nuwabians who who were still stuck in Islam when he was doing Asura Law in in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I found Nuwabians who were still doing the Hebrew things uh, that he was doing before he moved to Eaton in Georgia. Then. You know, you have uh, Nuwabians who were AEO, ancient Egyptian order. So I just think that right there is why this started catching a lot of, because I think when it comes to the conscious community, like a lot of people were into Dr. York. Jay Z was a Nuwabian. No, I thought it was Jazz O, not Jay Z. But, 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 I mean, come on, they ran, they ran tight. I mean, come on. Jay, Jay Z ran with Jazz O. He was, he was with hanging out with. When they were answering a law in uh in Brooklyn, Jay Z was there with Jazz. Oh, okay. I mean they were Batman and Robin. So, so I, and I just think as each school was presented, some people they graduated, some people they just stayed right there. So I think that played a a, a large role in you know why some people are still Hebrews and this that and other. That if you ask me, that really gave more attention to it. Okay. Okay. So I, I would I would go a little further than that though. Our the Nation of Islam. Tribe of Shabazz. Tribe of Shabazz. What is it? What, what is Shabazz? Israel. What is Shabazz? Well, Shabazz is actually a, a Pakistani surname. And so that's where they be the Asiatic black man. All that dumb shit. See, it's all rooted in we not African. Yeah. They just, they, uh, uh, doctor, um, no, uh, well, not doctor, but Noble Jew Ali, Moore Science Temple. All of it is rooted in the fact that we're, we're something other than African. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. So these are the issues that we find. Uh, and I would argue it's rooted in, of course, self hatred at the end of the day. If people do not seek to, dis, to, to distance themselves from who and what they are uh, unless they don't like themselves. They don't like who and what they are. Exactly. That, there's no way around it. That would be like me saying I'm out of Ohio State Buckeye. Right? Well, the only way I could say that is if I but I don't like Ohio State. 
That's why you you, you claim Georgia because you didn't like California. <laughs> you like how I slid that in there. <laughs> hey, listen, I still love my home state. It's just it ain't the place for me. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, just California is not. I, I'm good on California. So, what is it about California that that doesn't work for you, but Georgia does? If you don't mind me asking, uh, I left because of the cost of living, and I tell people too, California. When I moved to LA, was one of the most, in fact, not one of the. It was the most segregated race, racist places. This most segregated racist place I ever stayed in LA. And you was in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. What part of LA were you living in? Koreatown. And I live downtown. Oh, you live downtown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So when we talk about culture vultures why do you say that many of these individuals are culture vultures because it's not our culture we're not native americans we're not indians uh, the descendants of uh, the majority of these indian tribes are still there they're still around they still speak their um uh indigenous language they have their indigenous culture their indigenous foods that's another thing if you ask these so-called we are we're, we're uh we're not african native americans okay like just share with me like I love to eat. Where where can I come get a, a, a black Native American hot plate? Indigenous food. They're gonna show you some soul food. Mm. Like that's not indigenous to uh Native Americans. Some mm. corn, some um, some hog maws or some 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 um some macaroni and cheese. So you're trying to tell me that macaroni and cheese, red beans and rice, soul food, uh smothered pork chops. Is y'all indigenous food? That's soul food. Mm -hmm. So when you start asking about their traditional culture, it's, it, it, here comes the excuses. It's like the DNA test and what's your culture, the biggest deflex. Mm. Wow. So, but this is what lawmaker Blue says. Yeah, that's another false argument they use. They try to say the transatlantic slave trade didn't happen or it happened in reverse. Right, I've seen that as well. Absolutely nonsensical. Yeah. Um, so where yeah, the slave ships at? Where the slave ships at? Right. Or that, you know, or like once again, the reverse. So they actually took Native Americans to North Africa. Right. So, yeah, right. It's, it's yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. something to consider. Right. So, so, so we're going to put the link in the chat, family, and we're going to let people tap in, be part of the conversation, share with us what you think. Make sure you're watching, you like, subscribe, and share. You're watching Lumumba Speaks and Search for Uhuru with Prince Diana Samir here yes, live on YouTube. Yes, sir. So the link That's is in the only. chat, family. The, the as, link is in the description. As Lamuba would say, tap in. Absolutely. Tap in, be part of the conversation. Tap in now so you can tap in when me and Dinas do a live when we beat Georgia in the national championship game. So absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, our squad, the way we looking next year, we, we we're we're gonna run the table. So are we. No, no, no. So are we. Who who no, 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 no. Michigan? No, they won't. They have lost everybody. Not not necessarily. Yes. They lost they, Harbaugh. They, they lost the, the, the coach. Receiver, they the lost quarterback, their receivers, running back. quarterback, running back, and offensive line. And they lost yeah. one D lineman. You know, I think like a they lineman. lost. They lost all they did. They, they only have one D lineman that stayed. They lost both their starting linebackers. Come on, B. What's going on, brother? What's the word? Oh, what's up, y'all? Y'all can hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Loud and oh, clear. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. I went through that last night. I went to a little uh, spot where a brother cooked a bunch of vegan food. And apparently, this is an epidemic in the community, man. Like, all of us think that uh, we're not African. But they'll go ahead and use a DNA test, though, to prove that the kid ain't theirs. Right. You know, but the right. DNA test don't come back. You are not they, the back African. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like. What the fuck? I don't know how uh, or what makes them think this shit is valid. Like they tried to argue me down, tell me there was no slave ships and shit. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, so where? What, what's the purpose of Elmina Castle then? It's uh, it's, it's, it's uh. Yeah, let me ask you a question, brother. Where are you located? Like you don't have to tell me the city, the state. Oh, St. Louis, Missouri. So you in you in the Lou, right? Yeah. Uh, show, show me state. Hey, there, yeah. there's there's feedback, Lou. Yeah. I don't know if it's um. Is it me? Go talk. Say something again. Testing, testing. Okay, you good now? Okay, yeah. Okay, so you're in St. Louis, and we're seeing these issues. 
<clears throat> yep. Yeah, it's, it's an identity crisis. It's everywhere. Yes, I think I think you're right. It's there's an identity crisis. In they, fact, they'll say they say, they'll say the slave councils. That's all conspiracy theory. Mm. See, uh, I think a lot of them have an issue with being able to identify with their roots because they don't have like real family. So then they be ashamed of. Uh, they see what little is thrown out there as like them slave movies, and they try and feel ashamed of it. But if you had like actual parents who came from the South or still had your connection to your grandparents, you wouldn't feel that way because you would have these stories and you know exactly how your family, you know, got through all their struggles. And, you know, you a strong person brought on by that. So they can't identify with themselves. Lumumba, the conscious community has turned is is slowly devolving into the unconscious community. Exactly. Facts. So when you say unconscious, what do you mean by that? We got out here. We got to unpack that. We unconscious. Got, community. We, we've been unpacking it since we came on the show. We ain't okay. African. We Indians. Uh, I, I I went. I saw a picture of the uh, paintings in the uh, Mayan temple, and it was dark skin. So that's us. You know, <laughs> um, the slave trade happened in reverse. You know Man. the. In yeah. high school, there was a book that I got out the high school library, and it was African trade routes to North America. And it showed, theories for them, conspiracy theories. Go ahead. No, but look, look, look. Let's say let's 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 even throw this shit out here. Let's say your ass been here before the white man, mm -hmm. because uh, damn, I can't remember the historian, but the Olmec heads is supposed to be the Mali Empire, but either way. No. Am I wrong? I might be wrong. Who knows? No, the, no, no, the, the, I, I, no, I know where you're going, though. Go right ahead. Okay, yeah. yeah. But if you was here before the white man, you still a fucking African. So it's like. Right, right. Yeah, I've heard that, too. They say, well, we got here before Native Americans. I said, but where did you come from? Yeah. They, and they right, just, so it's, Yeah, I, I'm with you 100 percent. Yeah. But like in the wildflowers thing, they claim everything but African. Right. And right. so the issue is you don't want to identify as African. There's no way you're going to fight for African people. Right. Yeah, so they're not even gonna fight for themselves. To disidentify. Yes. Matter of fact, I saw a clip um where uh th this was in New York City. Shout out to NYC. I haven't been here in about a decade. I need to go back. Um there was a there was a brother, well, shouldn't say brother, Hebrew is you like guy talking about we ain't African, da, da, da. So this is a young boy walking from a bodega, about 12 or 13 years old, black kid. And he says, Did you know that you actually are a Hebrew is you like you're not African? And he said, Yes, I am. He says, like, How do you know that? He said, Well, my dad is is from Ghana, my mother's from Mali. So then he said, Oh, you're the enemy. Yeah. What? Goofy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not I'm not making this stuff up. He was like, Oh, you're the enemy. So we, so a lot of people say, oh no. So these individuals are extremely anti-African. Matter of fact, I have a book on the Hebrew Israelites. Let me see if I can find it very quickly. Oh yeah, the chosen people. Oh man, chosen people, the rise um, of American Black Israelite religions, and it talks about how, hey Al Moors, I need you just to come up here and queue so I can make sure you're not trolling. Then we'll bring you in. Um, where the argument they make is that this was in the late 19th century. There was a, okay, I got you, brother. Right, I'm going to bring you in. You can turn your camera off. Um, where there was there was a brother. He was, oh yeah, this is Oklahoma. Let me see. The founder of the largest and one of the earliest African-American churches to preach that black people were descended from the ancient Israelites was Prophet William Saunders Crowdy, who had a revelation while clearing the fields outside the all-black town of Oklahoma in 1892. This inspiration for one of the first black Israelite churches is a metaphorically rich example of the search for roots among uprooted people. Imagine, right. if you will, the mental blade of the plow slicing the fertile soil of the prairie, plowing under the stumble, stubble of the prior season's crop as it divides the black clods of dirt to either side and or orders the earth into neat furrows. Yeah, understanding black religion, in particular the black Atlantic more. So basically, he talk, they talk about this dude had a vision. Right. By cutting the grass, <laughs> that black people shouldn't just identify with the Jewish people in the Bible, but that black people were the Jewish people in the Bible. And I would argue that is only that comes as a result of the you, ubiquitous abasement of African people, not only in America but at that point globally. I agree. You know, I think the most startling thing about uh, them wanting to identify as Americans is the fact that they talking 
about they want to take back North America. But in my mind, I'm thinking like, why would you want a place with low resources and winter? Right, right. That's so nice there are right, like man, that the in North Dakota, like you physically yeah. not going to survive a winter without you know buying your North Face coat, bro. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, what are you thinking? It's it's the sickness, and I don't know what it's going to take to. Uh, I don't even know if we can even fucking reverse this. Like, it's it's that bad. It's got, but see, it's but Lumumba, it's gotten so bad these last. Four or five years, okay. Like with access to yep. all the information we have, they've gotten, gotten dumber. worse. Like within these four or five last four or five. Years. No, I mean, so, so, with, so, and let me let me just make this full disclosure because I don't think I, I've shared this before. But my brother is a Hebrew Israelite. Mm-hmm. Oh God, my older brother. You know, I mean, I have my older brother. He used to beat me up when we were younger. He had three and a half years on me. <laughs> uh, he can't beat me up right. now, though. So just put that out there. He can't beat me up now, right? But he's an Hebrew Israelite. And so my brother wasn't someone who did as well academically as I did, right? But who the hell did do as well as me academically growing up, right? <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but the issue was, I think a lot of people who are converted into these nonsensical ideals or ideologies are people who uh, lack critical thinking or easily manipulated. I, I, right. I really do. And I'm not just trying to you know, say this to put people down, but people who typically are, are scholarly or, or read or, or have an appetite for intellectual curiosity typically don't follow those type of things because they could just they say, hey, two and two doesn't equal four here. Right. 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 But these are individuals who, you know, they don't have a strong sense of identity and they are someone who's easily manipulated. I think they could fall prey to these type of. Um, All right, but here, here's the argument. You only you see you just believe what the white man say. You only believe right. in the white man's history. Books. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because there was a time where uh, when I was still living in Dayton, where the brothers and sisters was like, well, you know, we never wrote about the transatlantic slave trade. Only they did. And I said, well, actually, that's not true. What about a lot of Equiano? What about Phyllis Wheatley? What about all these other individuals, right? So then I saw, I actually pulled the books out, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, I'll be doing now. Like, well, right. these are black people who wrote about their experience being captured and brought over here. What do you got to say about that? So then, you know, they moved the goalposts a little bit, like they did against Ohio State at the end of the, at, at, at the end of the um, big show, over, they man. moved the goalposts on us not to win the game. Over, man. You can't get like, well, Do we need to get you a counselor? Your insurance to pay for yes. it. Yes. You gonna pay for it? Your, your insurance should pay for it. Well, my, well, my insurance does pay for account. Yes. <laughs> uh, they moved the goalposts on us at the end of the Peach Bowl when we went into Atlanta into the heart of the Confederacy and was kicking that derriere. Then they moved the goalposts to a house they couldn't win the game on the last second field goal. But the guy moved the goalposts and said, "Well, the, it happened, but it didn't happen at the extent that they said it did." I said, "Hold on, you just said it didn't happen at all." What the fuck are we talking about? Listen, the same brother that told me there was no slave ships told me it was only 40 people brought over as slaves. <laughs> right. So there was <laughs> can't make you, this you see what I'm saying here. So it's like, what the French toast is going on? So let let brother Al Morris tap in. You've been waiting patiently. You gotta unmute yourself, Al. You gotta unmute yourself. Oh, so he he's left. Hopefully he can tap back in. But some of this is because people haven't actually studied actual history so and i always talk about and i mentioned this with my daughter you know i said there's a difference between a narrative and factual information right. now to give you all an example there was a time when maybe my son was nine she was six and she came to me or seven she was like hey brother she would always call him brother she wouldn't call him by his actual name she said brother's being mean to me right and I said, um, I, so I jumped on my son. I went in this room. What did I tell you about being mean to your sister? And da 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 da. And um, he said, he was very calm. He said, I wasn't being mean to her. So I said, Well, what, what happened? He said, She asked me, Did I want to go outside and play with her? I said, Not right now. So then I went to my daughter and said, Was that what happened? She's, Yes, Ashton Lewis, I need you to cam up and, and cue just to make sure you're not trolling. Then we'll bring you in on the live. Uh, just need you to come up and cue, then we bring you in on the live. So then I asked my daughter, I said, was that what happened? Yeah. So then we had to have a conversation about the difference between a narrative and facts, the facts. So this is a major issue. The moon would be trolling Georgia football heavy. Absolutely. Like I said, they moved the goalposts. I actually had a clip where they moved the base of the goalposts to make my man's miss that field goal. I'm actually released that. You're talking about conspiracy theory. I'm putting that out there on my channel because that is exactly what happened. And then I had to pay Dynast that money, but I'm going to get my money back. No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. No, you're not. 
<laughs> I'm gonna get my money back. Um, so yeah, these are some of the issues that unfortunately we find where people could take a partial piece of the truth, partial evidence, and then take that as a way to try to disidentify with their African heritage. So well, you know what's interesting? Um, and I was having this conversation with another friend of mine who's you know, he who's he's part native. I I, I told him. I said, you probably have more. In fact, not probably you do because you show me the DNA test. You have more white admixture in your DNA than you do native. Right. So why don't you claim the white part? Right. Yeah. And it, yeah. And the brother here, hold on. Let me see if I can. Ashton Lewis, once again, I need you to cam up in queue before I bring you on the live. I just need you to cam up in queue. Um, so the Choctaw own African slaves. Absolutely. All of these so called civilized. Uh, uh, Indian nations owned African slaves. So something, once again, to be cognizant of that these individuals are trying to identify with. And, and pe many people say, well, you know, we all have something in us. I say, even if I did, that's not something I would want to claim. I'm right. proud of who I am or where I come from, so I'm not trying to claim somebody else. And we know that one of the core tenets of Pan-Africanism is to be is rooted in the anti-miscegenation. And, and Lumumba, can we also speak on the number of... Um, so you just had Nature Boy recently. You had Brother Polite. Dr. York, the number of pedophiles in this community. Okay, yeah, we could tap in. Mr. Same Man, just need you to come up very quickly and cue, then we'll bring you into the line. Uh, so, yeah, that, so, you know, I, and I, I've kind of spoke about this on my channel. I have a severe anathema for pedophiles. Severe. Like, people know this about me. Okay, got you, brother. We're going to bring you in. Um, I have a severe, severe anathema. So, I heard about Brother Polite. Um, did some more research once he was found, he was convicted. So I think he got seven years in prison for pedophilia, right? Yeah. Touching on some little, some, some 13, 14 year old girl. Um, and he's what, 45, damn near 50, right? So for some reason, um, but we find this, but another issue is we tend to find a lot of American born women tend to be very cavalier when regarding the protection of their children. They allow their children to be around damn near anyone. So that's something to consider as well. And you know what? I was going to bring that part up, but I just didn't want the, why are you blaming the woman? Why you always got to blame the woman? Uh, yeah, Brother Agnaughton says Elijah Muhammad as well. Absolutely, brother. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, Elijah Muhammad, for example, was someone who was known for seeking, having sexual liaisons with adolescent or young adult women. You could say they were young adults and say they weren't teenagers. Fine. But they were extremely uh, easy. They, they were in a position where they were vulnerable and easily able to be manipulated. Another issue when we talk about this is the Prophet Muhammad in Islam. And I'm really going to roll some heads here, right? But once again, Ashawn Lewis, I need you to come up in queue before I could bring you into the line. I need you to come up in queue before I could bring you into the line. Just gonna you uh, according to the Hadith, right? I'm quite sure some of us have read, have read the Hadith. The Hadith uh, are the sayings of Prophet Muhammad. Many Over 2,000 of the Hadiths were written by his youngest wife, Aisha. According to the Hadith, he married her when she was six years old. Hey, well, one second, Lamuba. Uh, uh, Keys, can you mute yourself? It's like your your phone. You're fighting your phone. Like it's there. Right. You go. Go ahead. Appreciate it. Uh, he married her when she was six years old, and then consummated the marriage, or married her when she was seven. Then consummated the marriage when she was two years later, when she was nine. So we see we see an issue of pedophilia in Abrahamic religions. Give you another example of pedophilia in Abrahamic religions in the Bible. Um, we know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? God right. destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. They want 10 righteous men in the city. Lot's wife turns around and, and she's made into a pillow of salt. We know how the allegorical story goes. What we also find in the story is that um, they hide in a cave to seek refuge because the city is destroyed with fire and brimstone. And Lot has sex with both his, teen, both his daughters. What the French toast are we talking about, right? right. We could talk about the story of uh, King David when he's on his deathbed. Right, where he um they brought a pre pubescent <laughs> okay, we have some issues. Yeah, having some issues, brother. Um they bring a pre pubescent young lady into his Dr. King David's bedchamber to keep him warm. And mm -hmm. she has to she has to lay with him nude to keep his body warm. And it states in the scripture that he did not know her. And we know biblical sense know her is what you didn't hit it like a home run because he did not have the physical strength to do so. So mm -hmm. we see this this issue for we see this issue of pedophilia in Abrahamic religions. All right. So I, once again, and I will make the argument when I tell people as Hebrew Israelites that 
if you've actually read the Bible, why would you want to identify with these people? They were cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Right. But once again, it's because they actually believe that God has a chosen people. And as Dr. John Henry Clark mentioned, stated, and you mentioned Dr. John Henry Clark earlier in the broadcast, if God has a chosen people, that means that God is a bigot. Hmm. Okay. Fact. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Sandman, what say you? Hello, Hello. Mute yourself. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Hey, what's going on? What's Pete? Yeah, um, yeah, I was um I'm gonna uh talk about something a little bit different, but I was gonna touch on the Abrahamic uh religious topics that you were talking talking about. Um yeah, uh, my understanding about um uh, Abrahamic religions of uh, Christianity is that uh, just having something deeper to believe in, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, this world is filled with all kinds of vicious, evil things that goes on. And and I believe that, you know, um, the Bible shows you a tale of some of the vicious, evil things that goes on in our world that's been going on since the beginning of time. So I think like just because. Well, brother, uh, do, you, do you mind if I interject just very briefly? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, I would argue that the Bible actually is a purveyor of vicious, evil things. We see the Bible justifying genocide. We see the Bible justifying <laughs> ethnic violence. We see violence. We see the Bible justifying um, uh, a number of evil things. Well, I think I think you know, as human beings, it's just in our nature to be evil. Like you can't go to any place on this planet Earth where we haven't displayed um, evil tendencies. You know, I mean, we kill each other, we rape each other, and but what separates us from the animal kingdom is having humanity. So I think um the Abraham How do you know, religion, define humanity? Um to have like um uh remorse and love for your brother and your sister and not succumb into what do they what do you, what do they call it your your lizard brain? They say that we all have like in 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 inside of our brain like our most um primitive uh thought processes or our most primitive um, instincts that are just, you know, animalistic, you know, like a, a dog will have sex with anything and they'll right. kill anything. Right. right. Yeah. That, that we have similar, our, our, our brain at its, um, so you're talking about your higher lowest, self and your lower self, basically. Yeah. Our higher self and okay. our lower self. Okay. Yeah. So there's you. a difference between that. I and I think, you know, in the Abraham religious and they're trying to display it. But what I wanted to talk about is, um, uh, for instance, um, how how far back do you think we can actually um, accurately depict the history of the world? Because were you uh you, you ever heard of the Dogon people? I yeah, I've, I've I've been there. I've been to Dogon country three times. Yeah, and they claim that they had and their, their ancestors had came in contact with um aliens, and those aliens um. So, uh, well, well, they claim they came from uh, Sirius, the Sirius star, Sigatoro. Um, as far as having contact with aliens, I when I was with them, I spent weeks with them. I they never really brought that up. Well, when they say they come from a, a star, they they're not saying that it's an alien, or they're just saying something came from. I just a star? Saying that's, where they, that's where they originated from, uh, Sigatoro, from the stars, and they came to Earth. And I will say that all cultures have their own uh, origin stories, right? Right. So, so what? Uh, that's just that is a reality. Yeah, and if you look at if you look at the um, the, uh, the 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 pyramids in Egypt, and they're saying that you know those couldn't have been done with like uh, uh, manufactured by primitive thinking people. That was advanced technology that uh, built those. And then they're even talking about there was like thousands of pyramids in uh, the Americas as well, in Central and in, in South America. And you wonder, like, yeah, was, there a yeah. civilization, was there a civilization that went extinct that we lost, like, contact with them? You know what I'm saying? And, and, if, and if so, is it possible that, you know, us as Africans or even some of the descendants of Africa had circumvented the entire planet Earth and in some type of uh, advanced society that went extinct that we just don't know about, you know? No, so I will push back against that, you know, and I understand where you're coming from. I mean, to say that, you know, well, one of the things I, I brought this up when I was talking to a sister last week was that um, what we find, particularly with the Great Pyramids, of all of these seven great wonders of the world, the only the ones built by Africans are the ones that they say we can't explain how it was built. 
So that's something to consider. So I would argue that there's some anti-black racism in, in that, right? Because when we talk about the other seven wonders of the world, we're talking about uh, the Hanging Towers of Babylon. Matter of fact, let me bring up some of these seven wonders of the world very quickly. Seven wonders. Yeah. We don't hear this. The pyramids, we're talking about the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Temple of Artemis, the Statue of Zeus, the Mausoleum at Harkonnesus, uh, the Colossus mm -hmm. of Rhodes, the Lighthouse at Alexandria. No one says, oh, we don't know how somebody built this. It's only what was built by African people. So now we have to question that these people were primitive, so on and so forth. Secondly, um, the, you find the most pyramids in the world in Sudan. Right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, in yeah, Sudan. And so I think a lot of people conflate mounds. Right, because I, I I grew up in Southwest Ohio. Shout out to Dayton, Ohio, the nine three seven, the GM City. And so between Cincinnati, Dayton, and, and all of Southern and Southwest Ohio, there were large a complex of mounds that were built. So many people would conflate mounds with, of course, pyramids. But we we find this even in pop culture that you know this this disrespect for African people when it comes to the Great Pyramids. What the uh, apocalypse built the pyramids. Uh, the Transformers built the pyramids. Everybody. <laughs> built the pyramids. But African people, <clears throat> right? So that is something to consider. Jonathan Miller says, I'm going to come up and defend Elijah Muhammad. Please do. I would love to hear what you have to say. But once again, the conversation needs to be rooted in facts. Um, go ahead, brother. Um, um, what say, man? What say, man? Hey, Al, Mor Al Morris, you have, um, you have an echo, Al Morris. Okay, you say you want, you saying I could go again? Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. All, yeah, it's interesting that you brought it up, but it still, it still um remains to be explained, like how they built it. So, you know, us as Africans, we can't explain how it was built either, even though our ancestors might have built it. We still can't explain it. So, who, who well, whoever yeah, I mean, those was, was, what five, six thousand years ago? I mean, people can't. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, just because we can't explain something that happened 6,000 years ago doesn't mean it wasn't built by us. No, I'm not saying we didn't build it. I'm just saying, like, they're, these people were, like, highly advanced in their thought process and obviously more intelligent than your average black or white man or Chinese man, you know? So who's to say, like, who really were they? Who, who really were they, you know? Well, um, they study, might have, they might study, have I mean, left. there's been a lot of research to substantiate that the majority of the pre-dynastic and even dynastic ancient Kemetans were people that today are considered Black Africans. The other issue is, uh, once again, uh, one of the reasons why uh, Kemet was the preeminent uh, culture of antiquity is due to a number of factors. Most importantly, it was because the Nile Valley flooded on an annual basis every time every year. That allowed them to have advanced uh, crop cultivation, right? And so as a result, they were able then, they were able to then go from a hunter-gatherer society to a building to what farming in a manner that wasn't just simply subsistent in nature, right? And then they were able to what focus on other aspects of civilization. While when you look at places like Mesopotamia, which is what we now call, what most scholars call the Photo Crescent, which is present-day Iraq, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers flooded sporadically. And so that caused them to always have to focus on how we're going to feed ourselves rather than being able to focus on other aspects of civilization as, as opposed to what they were able to do in ancient Kemet. And, there, and there's also, I don't know if this is true, but I've also heard like um, one of, our, one of the uh, uh, pyramids in Egypt is like directly pointed at the magnetic north of our planet earth like how would they possibly know yeah I, i've never heard anything north? about that what what i do know is that the three pyramids aligned if i remember correctly with orion's belt was <laughs> the constellation of stars right and those right. and those are the, and those are the same uh constellation of stars that the dogon claimed that uh the Cyrus people could yeah, if i remember correctly no i think or orion orion and uh sirius is different i think I'm okay. Not, okay. That's well, strong. Yeah. Serious star is different, I believe. Right. Ashawn Lewis, once again, I need to come up and cue before I could bring you into the line. Brother Morris, hopefully you've been able to square away your background issues. What say you? Jeremy, is it clear? Is it clear? Uh, yeah, a, a, a little. A, a little. 
Al, Al, you got it. You got it. You can't call me on your Obama phone, man. Oh, it's messed up. It's not messed up. Yeah, that ain't an Obama phone. That's a tough phone. Call on a different. Call, call on a different device. Yeah, that, 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 call that's, on that's a different that, device. That that's that throwaway cell Trump be using to pay those strippers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, brother Bonds, go ahead. Yeah, I um, I got a suggestion. You know, I'm uh, I'm Cape Verdean. And okay. we uh, we have been dealing with this bullshit uh, for uh, for longer than uh, than these new uh, these new waves. <clears throat> and I, I'm 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 like uh, you know uh, uh, I hope uh, somewhere down the line of my uh, of my uh, somewhere down my bloodline maybe somebody will uh, will uh, invade Cape Verde uh, Cape Verde and ask everybody are you African or not? And everybody that says he's not African, okay, there's the boat. And even before the boat reaches Europe, sink it, sink it. Nobody, nobody needs needs these people. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, oh, free, free, free. We, we, can't, we can't advocate genocide, brother. Yeah, yeah. Man, now okay, okay. I understand, it's, it's, it's I understand you being upset. I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking symbolic, right? Okay. That's that's that's, that, that's how that's that's how cold we should drop them. Like like it's extra it's extra rate weight let's just focus on the future right can mm -hmm. can 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 we can we do that that and 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 the people that are not focused on the future uh just 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 let them be can can we do that we're wasting a lot of time on on people that waste their their own time uh, uh, do you agree yeah, so I understand where you're coming from there, and I do know that that's an issue of identity. If many people all get the same issues of identity that we find in Cape Verde is what we also find in what the DR, where many of our people. Who, yes, yes, yeah. we're mixed, you know, but but it's it's also very much comparable with 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 the with these uh, these some of these uh, waves in uh, in North America. We're mixed. Uh, where where uh, you, you know it, it, it's 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 actually the same but but uh, since since i'm dealing uh, with it uh, uh, longer than than you guys it's 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 like uh, the, the advice that i have is it's not going to it's it's not going it's not going away it's going to stay like like you say you know uh, 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 yeah, yes i was early in hip hop too even uh, even though i uh, i uh, grew up in the, the netherlands but i, I was i was fa fairly uh, fairly early and 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 to to be uh, honest yeah i i, I did my part i uh, i produced uh, the very first uh, hip hop project uh, uh, in uh, in the cape verdean language but uh, never mind but 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 uh, um uh, yeah uh, the Asiatic thing and uh, really early, I uh, I already had this thing. What do they mean with Asiatic? Uh, 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 and and uh, what 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 was that other uh, West Indies and Asiatic? No, you're African, right? And and uh, uh, if you're not African, then then you're you're not in my team. It's it's simple, right? Uh, can I interject? Yes. Right All right, cool. Check this out. So I was a b boy. Well, still am. I've uh, been breaking since ninety five. Okay. And uh, when it comes down to it, like I would go to a battle and I'm like one of the, mo the most known breakers in my city what and it would turn into St. Louis. OK, gotcha. And it, and it would turn into like uh, basically like a race war. The floor was split. You know what I'm saying? By the end of the battles, and it would be Mexicans, whites and Asians versus blacks. Now, when that occurs, it was like a aha moment for me years ago. I said, well, listen to this conversation. It also occurs back in, but the fact that uh, not everybody identifies on like one flat plane creates a, a lack of being able to take care of our problems on a practical level internationally. So maybe this identity issue is actually like the base of us solving practically all of our problems. Well, I mean, yeah, there, there are many that, that make that argument. Yeah, that, that 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 is the start. You have to address the fact that we hate what we are and love what we can't be. Absolutely. Um, Ashton Lewis, you got it together? Oh, he dropped off again. Goodness, y'all on these Obama phones? I told you, man. That's that's that bonus sale from Trump from the Trump campaign. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, brother Morris, what's the word? Have you gotten your your your, your um technology screen away? <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. Peace, man. Can you hear me now? Oh, no, just fine now. Okay, okay. Well, I I wanted I did want to uh tap in with the Israelite movement. Um I heard uh you know in, in regards to some of the issues that we have as a people in regards to identity um and uh some of the issues, but the but the thing about with the people that are naysayers or detractors of the Israelite movement, I've never heard anybody actually got me stuff. Yeah, I, I've never really heard anybody on that side because because with us, we're not saying that everything about that is a historical can be historically proven outside the Bible. We're saying that this is a, a faith a faith based movement based on uh, people's characteristics, and like I, I had brought this up many a time. Well, what people. do you mean by characteristics? Well, well, when I say characteristics, meaning that okay, there are, there are seven thousand plus ethnicities on the earth. Okay, and all people have characteristics in regards to their uh, culture, in regards um, to being in a land, in regards to the elements of who they are as a people. Now, the Bible it it gives you very specific. Uh, characteristics of what he said, of what God said that his people would be in, in a certain time. And I'm saying, if you spin the wheel, so if we go from Yerba land all the way to South Vietnam, Vietnam, all the way back down to Peru with, with that man, we find certain characteristics and certain, uh, that, that you don't have among the people that was carried captive on these cargo slave ships into these different lands. So when I say that, okay, the Bible, it speaks of a people that would be confused to their identity. It speaks to a people that would be discontinued from their heritage. It speaks to a people that would be confused and would go and serve a man and would be lost to his name, lost to his God, lost to his folk ways, you know, lost to his mores. And then I say, well, who is this people? If, if all these people on the earth uh, have, have their name, have their language, have their garb, are in their land, uh, can be this be themselves and accept their own. They're not confused. They're not having endless debates about who they are. But we can point to a people that fit the characteristics, these very distinct characteristics in the uh in this land. And we can and we can point out these characteristics. To me, nobody that are naysayers have have brought any to me uh hardcore proof except I'll be outside outside research, of course. But nobody has went in the Bible and the scripture and said, OK, listen, that doesn't fit you. You aren't these people according to what this book says. So, 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 that, so that's so my me, thing. So, let me, so here's the thing. And I, and I appreciate you tapping in, brother. And I appreciate you actually tapping in and being civil, because a lot of times when you come in contact with people who are Hebrew Israelites, they're not civil. They are wild as hell. Right. We're going to histrionics, so on and so forth. So one, there, there have been a number of people who have been enslaved and transported by boat. Right. Particularly Europeans being enslaved in North Africa and the Magreed. Right. So th there's been a lot of people that th that's had this happen to them. Uh, we even find these type of identities issues pertinent, uh, prevalent amongst Native Americans. They have the highest rate of suicide amongst racial ethnic groups in America because of these very issues. Right. This concept of, of uh, Norman Yoke in terms of kill the Indian, but say it's Indian and save the man. So black people aren't the only people in the world that have experienced these issues, particularly when we talk about the global effect of white hegemony, where colonization, of course, was global in nature. Well, well, see, this is the thing about it. The, the, again, the Bible is very specific about the difference between being under tribute, because you had certain nations that was up under the Grecians that took on their customs and and, and, uh, and going into captivity. When, when, when If I was to go to Navajo Nation, the man, the man even though they've been struck down and, and been destroyed to, to the uh, to the condition they're in now, the, the Navajo man still has his identity. His, well, his, no, his no, identity. actually, no, brother, because I've studied Native American studies in college. That's one of the reasons why they have the highest suicide rate is because they don't have their identity. This is why they're killing themselves. The, sir, the Navajo man, if, if we go to Nav, the Navajo man, again, being forced into a reservation isn't the same of being carried captive and not being able to point to any place on earth. It's, it's not the same thing, sir. Well, 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 well so one, I'm not saying it's the same. Number two, black people can point to a place on earth. We know we come from Western Central Africa. 
Scholarship substantiates that. The Bible is an allegorical text. It's not something that is historical in nature. No, I'm, sir. Okay, when you say you can point to, I'm saying it's it's a difference between, okay, I can point to a specific, I can go and I can point to Yoruba land. And when I go to that land, you're going to see my name, my garb, and you're going to see everything that makes me a people, everything that makes me me, everything that gives me my cultural identity as a person. That's different than being a so-called American Negro here walking around as Williams, Jenkins, Johnson, Jones. That's it's a completely different thing. If you look at the basis, the very the very foundation of our culture as a people is based in another it's based in the Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo-Saxon idea. It's based in another man's culture. It, that's different than being under tribute. The, the man in it, the man that's in that he has you. his culture, I, 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 I he I has his language. You. Hold on, you can't okay. ever talk to me on my channel because once again, if you if you've studied after, let me ask you this question: Have you studied African American culture? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what literature have you read that's that's allowed you to study African American culture? Well, I I started mostly um, with like Richard Allen. I started mostly with with. First with the church. I started with Richard Allen, Abbasalam Jones, okay. James Fortune, these gentlemen. And I and I came, you know, the Niagara movement. So I started mm -hmm. with the with the 1700s. So so the, the, um, hold on, so wait, so that's not culture. That is you're talking about civic organizations and political organizations. I said culture. Well, I mean, as far as if you look at the foundation of, of who and, and and how those generations work, I'm saying starting with the with the with like a soldier of truth in, in her culture. I'm saying starting with branching off of that, branching off the foundation of us and then branching off. So the foundation of who we were in the 1700s and then branching off into the 1800s and 1900s like that. That's that's how I've studied the foundation okay. of us as a people. Okay, so so let me say this. I'm, I'm going to clean this up. I teach African-American history for a living. Okay, I have a bachelor's, master's, soon to be in two months, a PhD in black studies. Okay, the foundation... If you talk to any reputable scholar in African American cult in, in African American studies, black studies, one of the core aspects of African American culture is African cultural attention. This is one of the core aspects of African American culture is African cultural attention. Core aspects of African American culture: ingenuity, adaptive vitality, right, the ability to adjust to changing circumstances without losing substance and essence. So if you actually, if you took my course, you would learn that even though, as Malcolm said in the 60s, the man is jiving you to believe, make you believe that you're more American than African, right? But Malcolm said what? Deep inside the, 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 the Muslim, the black Muslim movement, they found that we were still more African than we were American. And in my class, I highlight the, the myriad of examples of African culture, attention and identity in African American culture that we practice on a diurnal basis and aren't even aware of it. Right? I, I Something to, uh, if I may, later on. Yes, sir. Oh, can I? Or can I now? Go right ahead. Okay. So, so the brother said, uh, "Yeah, we we grew up in uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, stuff and etc. Uh, etc." Et uh, on the on the can on the continent, it's 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 the same thing. You 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 will see you will see you know uh, 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 these uh, these uh, YouTubers will 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 show. Uh, uh, African plates, but but uh, uh, I, I mean Senegal. In Senegal, you you will find those uh, those those long uh, those sticky uh, uh, those those French. Uh, I don't. I, I forgot how the how they call it, but the French uh, long long bread. It's it's everywhere in Senegal, right? Uh, in uh, Cape Verde, you you will you will we have we have our plates, right? Our national plate is uh, is uh, slave food, uh, uh, by the way. But but uh, there, there's also uh, uh, real African plates. But but you you, you will have uh, uh, Portuguese uh, Port Portuguese customs uh, mixed in, in 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 there also. And I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing the same goes for Nigeria and Ghana and uh, and Angola and Mozambique etc. The, uh, the the oppressor uh, uh, left his stamp on on our culture also. So so what's the point? So let, let me bring let me bring this in. So I'm gonna bring up a PowerPoint for that actually week four of my class, right? So we talk about African culture tension and African American culture, right? Because one of the part of the master narrative that that we find that we hear from people on a diurnal basis is that what our culture was completely destroyed and that were nothing but poor examples, uh, poor um, poor examples of poor poor copies of white people. Uh, uh, 
Elvis Morris, before you come in, I need you to come up in queue before I could bring you into the he, he, El Elvis is real. I know Elvis is real. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so African culture attention and African American culture to disabuse people of this belief that you know the basis of who we are is rooted in us trying to emulate someone else. So we're gonna get we're gonna get into it. So um, these are four books that I have in my personal library that hot that that touch on. African culture attention and African American culture. The myth of the Negro past by Melvin J. Herskovitz. That's a that was a Carl Stutt Celebrator. Slave culture by Sterling Stuckey. Nationalist theory and the foundations of Black America. The slave community by John Blassingame. Right. Africanisms and African American culture by edited by Joseph E. Holloway. Africa Afro American anthropology contemporary perspectives. Africanisms and Gullah dialect. Lorenzo Dow Turner. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, mm -hmm. The African Background Outline, Black Folk Then and Now by W.E.B. Du Bois, Drums and Shadows, right? Uh, survival Studies Among the Georgia Coastal Negroes, Black Culture and Black Consciousness, right? By Lawrence W. Levelin, right? So, and this is just some of the books. I mean, you got, there's over two dozen, to be quite honest with you, right? Then we talk about the work of Melvin J. Herskowitz. Yes, he was from OHIO. He's a white man, Jewish. Um, anthropologist. Born in Ohio, attended Columbia University, doctored at Howard University, taught at Northwestern University, they applied anthropology to African American studies, publications of the New Negro, uh, Racial Crossing, the Myth of the Negro Past, argues for African influence in African American culture, right? Then you had E. Franklin Frazier, who was a acolyte, a mentee of W.B. Du Bois, sociologist, doctorate at the University of Chicago, urban environments and on culture, thought opposite of Herskovitz. He believed that slavery destroyed the African cultural heritage from America. One of the reasons why, why Hersh uh, Frazier made this argument was this was at the height of the what uh, uh, civil rights movement. So there was a focus on integration and try to lessen the cultural distinctiveness of African American people, people to be accepted as American, right? So once again, we, we bring it in scholarship, right? We're going to bring scholarship to the conversation. I'll okay, say can I ask a question, sir? Go, go right ahead. Okay. Now you you you're bringing a scholarship. Now I know you're familiar with Frederick Douglass, uh, Alexander Cromwell, George Downing. Um, who else is at that time? Uh, Henry Garnett. All yes. all, all those people of the, of the free black class, free black class of the eighteen of the eighteen hundreds, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you study any of these people, the the majority. Now, and this was when Liberia, when the um when a lib Liberia has been established and a lot of these people was, you know, offered to go to Liberia. If you look at the majority uh, of the, of the people that time, they did not want to go to Africa. They did not see themselves as African and they didn't, they did not want to deal with that. Right. And so I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop you right there. And I'm glad you brought that up. No, so two issues. One, when we talk about Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass was the preeminent African-American orator and uh, abolitionist in the late 19th century. However, his counterpart was Martin Delaney, who was a, the father of black nationalism. And Martin Delaney went to Africa on several occasions and, and was welcomed and accepted by the African people. What you have to understand about Frederick Douglass, ideology matters. Frederick Douglass was an integrationist. Frederick Douglass advocated that there would be an amalgamation of the races so that black people didn't, weren't, weren't even culturally or racially distinct anymore. That's why Frederick Douglass took that position. We also have to understand the education of the day. So there were even many black nationals or pan-Africanists who were patently Eurocentric. And I wrote an article about this on Medium. Because of their education, a good example would be um, William uh, Edward Blyden. Right. His kind his, his view was that we need to go to Africa, Christianize African people, teach them the English language to make them civilized. But that wasn't the view of others, such as um Martin Delaney, uh, who was the father, the brother that coined black nationalism, uh, Sylvester Williams, etc. So ideology matters as well. So that would that so that that view of we don't want to have nothing to do with Africa was not something that was uniform. And, so, and at the time, many African American organizations had African in their name. Still, it's showing that the, the, the highlight of still claiming the African heritage, history, culture, etc. No, I, no, no. I'm saying, yeah, you you had the African Free School, you had the the African, you had that in the name. But I'm saying, if you look at, I'm saying that yeah, you had a you had a smaller minority. Yes, and Frederick Douglass was mixed. 
Well, I'm, what I'm saying is this, sir. I'm saying if you look at any of those, any of those leaders, uh, abol- all those abolitionists from that time, mm-hmm. even if you look at like what? Alexander Cromwell, he he went to Liberia for a while, and you had others that went, but it was still mm-hmm. about Christ, 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 was it uh Christian? Yeah, 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 yes, they focused and on simple. Christian indoctrinization. Why? Because they right. were themselves indoctrinated by Christianity. And we know so, that Christian, um, hold on, hold on. And we know that Christianity is a imperialistic religion. Christianity is an imperialistic religion, meaning it believes in what proselytizing. So most people who actually become Christians, they try to force their religious views on other people because the Abrahamic religions, them, the basis of the Abrahamic religions, the, the doctrine of Abrahamic religions is, is what is rooted in a religious and cultural chauvinism. So many of the people who become Christians, Muslims and, Jew- and practitioners of Judaism, or not Judaism, tend to what? Take on that type of religious and cultural chauvinism and try to force their religious beliefs on other people. So the host the context matters regarding why they were doing these things. No, no, I'm, I, what I'm saying is that my, my point of me bringing up that mindset at that time, I'm just simply saying that we were a anglicized people that like if you look at those generations that was up under that free negro class of the 1800s well that's why a lot of new people passed if you had the, the free people of color and all those the melodicized people they wanted they wanted to be integrated into the greater right, white but, society. But, but that's because they were integrationless right when you talk about absalom jones and, and um the, uh richard, richard allen, allen they, were, yeah, they, they, hold on. they were black conservatives they at, they are not representative of the large segment of African Americans, particularly free African Americans, such as David Walker, who wrote the first written Pan Africanist Manifesto in 1829, or Martin Delaney, as another example, who were free blacks who identified with the African culture heritage. For example, uh, Martin Delaney and Frederick Douglass teamed up to, to um, form the, the North Star newspaper. Right? This is one of the only times in history that we can see a black nationalist and integrationist working together. The second time was when Dr. King and Malcolm X got together, but of course Malcolm was was assassinated. And so what happened was Frederick Douglass wrote Martin Delaney and said, listen, the things you were writing in the paper are hurting me in terms of being able to solicit funds from from whites, right? Seeking white philanthropic support. And um, Frederick Martin Delaney wrote back, said, I don't give a damn. I could care white, I could care less what white people think about what I say, write, or do. Frederick Douglass said, well, I'm proud of being a man. Martin Delaney came back and said, I'm proud of being a black man. So once again, there was some black people who identified with the oppressor class, like we have today, right? The, the Larry Elders, the Candace Owens, the, you know, the Tatum brothers, et cetera. And then we have, what, African-Americans who don't identify with the oppressor class and still embrace their history, culture, and heritage. The African-American community is not monolithic. No, I'm, what, no, I'm saying my whole point to bringing that up is that I'm saying that at the end of the day, like the, the gentleman said about the Portuguese and the Gambia and these type of things, again, the, the, the people of the Gambia, the people of Nigeria, the people of Ghana, they did their their culture was not built up under another people like ours was. So I'm saying that when you well, talk I mean, about that, that's early, not true. That this has happened to people. All, this has happened to people of color all <laughs> over the world. It was called colonialism. Okay. Sir, that is that is not what the Bible described. The Bible I don't care what the, the Bible says. That's I don't care what the Bible says. Bible says. <laughs> can I, can I mean, come in? Us? No, the Bible, the, the Bible point. is inherently anti-African, anti-black. The doctrine of the Bible is extremely problematic. The Bible falsifies African history. The Bible um, or omits African history. Why would I give a damn what that book says? As Dr. John Henry Clark talks about in his book, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Abrahamic religions are nothing but what? Male chauvinist, Abrahamic murder cult. So miss me with that. Wisdom never speaks. Go right ahead. And I see you on it. You can turn your camera off. I'm going to bring you in. Yeah, I won't take it long, but good evening, everybody. And good evening. I'm glad your shoulder is healing and I hope you and uh, Prince is going to go live when y'all have your competition once you heal. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to win. I'm going to win that easy. easy He's not going to win. Easy they do. Easy money. He's not going to win. Easy you, money. You trying to start, you trying to start a real yeah, debate here, yeah, Wisdom. Uh, you trying yeah, to start yeah, a real yeah, debate. Yep, yeah, 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 y'all my guy, so I know y'all can bring it in. <laughs> Let me and we ain't, talk, we ain't talking about no no toddler reps either, Dinas. <laughs> no, no half pumps. I know how you be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. All right, so I'm not going to say long, but I want to say this to our religious people. When you keep going to the Bible, it's okay if you start somewhere, but you got to end up growing from there. You also have to say that 
you were saying earlier about faith, you, you using faith on everything. I heard the same statement prior uh, about many of you. The one thing that you refuse to do that the Bible strictly does is your genealogy. If you look in Luke 3, it starts with God, and by the time it gets to Jesus, there are 76 generations named, and when it says, so by begat this one, begat that one, and y'all refuse to do that. Y'all look at some article somewhere, you say what was said in the book, but you don't follow the rules of the book that you want everybody to believe in, and that's do your genealogy. You cannot say that I, Peter, and then my father, my, and my father's father, and go back all the way to where your family started. Because if you did, then you would know who you really are. You won't be believing about a people that was stated. The Bible in itself, and many times it's said, is, is allegorical at best. It's a story of a story of a story of a story, and then it's presented. If you really want belief in that Bible, first the Bible did is omitted the woman in the creation. It says the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It omits the actual birthing, the actual uh, channel where life is created and come and, and, through. And if I could tap in very quickly, Wisdom Never Speaks, and I'm going to use some of the young people's vernacular. Uh, the omission of a woman in the process of creating life is very homo is giving homosexual to me. Well, what it does, it goes into the patriarchal idea versus just homosexuality. It's just, it is, they know where the creation is done. They never can film it. They've tried all the time. You never know when that uh, liquid turns to start creating the human being. They have have cameras in, in the womb. They can never do it because it's the miraculous way it's done. So it's never going to be caught on camera with that change. But my whole thing is this. If you refuse to listen to facts that that, that by genealogists, by uh, uh, any any research, you got a gentleman up here that that's what his life is about is African studies, studies, books, information, facts, uh, concepts, precepts, everything concordance to one book to the next, one person to the next. Y'all only says. Well, the Bible says that we are that people, but the Bible also creates genealogy that you refuse to do. So until y'all do your real genealogy of who you are, then you are not really following the Bible that you want everybody else to believe that you, that you believe. That's just a fact. You have to stop doing that stuff like that, just talking, talking, talking. You want a land that has already been structured by some other people. You're not a nation in and of yourself because you don't know where you come from other than what you say the book says. So if you really want to do it right, do your genealogy work. So then you will have your DNA test. You will have you, where you come from and who they come from and all the generations back to that land that you say you're going to return to. But I guarantee you, many of you in that group would not make it to that land based on genealogy. And so let, and, let, and let me say this. I appreciate that, brother. If you look at the gene, the Bible, the genealogy of Jesus, um, mm -hmm. there are three genealogies of Jesus in the Bible. One is in the book of Matthew, two are in the book of Luke. Right? In the book of Matthew, the genealogy of Jesus, Jesus uh spans uh uh 20, let me see, 27 generations from David to Joseph, whereas Luke has 42, with almost no overlap between them or with other known genealogies. They also disagree on who Joseph's father was. Matthew says he was Jacob, while Luke says it was Healy. So even the Bible, the very Bible that you're using as a source of inspiration for who you are, Brother Ellis, I'm gonna bring you in. Thank you for turning your camera on. Um, we find this as an issue. The second issue in terms of the tracing of the genealogy of Jesus is that they trace the genealogy through Joseph, who isn't his biological father. You can't trace, trace your genealogy through a non-biological parent. So once again, trying to use the Bible as a reference source is nonsensical. Correct. Okay. Correct. Secondly, uh, if you ever visit Cincinnati, the Underground Railroad Freedom Center in downtown Cincinnati, which is in between the Bengal Stadium and the Cincinnati Red Stadium, they have a genealogy center 
on the top floor. The fourth floor of the museum has a genealogy center. So you are able to go to that center and trace your genealogy. I've been there a number of times with my children, so on and so forth. So just want to make you all aware that Brother Rizzo never speaks. Oh, very quickly, Pro Woman asked me about John Mills' racial contract, thoughts on it and him. Um, I don't know much, much about John Wills, but I do know about the racial contract because the racial contract is the basis of my uh, the basis of my dissertation. So, right, so my dissertation is a derivative of John Mills' racial contract, and where I'm looking at the cultural contract in higher education that is a derivative of the racial contract. So, look out for my dissertation, particularly when I I turn it into a book. Absolutely, wisdom never speaks. Go right ahead. So that, that's mainly what I'm talking about. They always hear them always going to the Bible, to the Bible, to the Bible, talking about the we will return people and all that, but you don't even know who you are. That's just what I'm saying. And it's, it's exhausting to people who research, know who they are, have done their DNA, know where they come from. And, but yet you walk around on the side of the road, yelling at people and, and, and you may win some argument for the people that don't have an education of knowledge of themselves. But for the ones that do, they go, they're turning you off because they know it's exhausting because you haven't come with any facts and history logged to yourself outside of that book. Out, listen, outside of that book. If you started with the book, then you want to find out your real person. That's what you need to be talking to people about. Just like when you're talking about the Indian folks. Remember, the ones on the reservation of the $5 breed, they are not the original people right now because it's about the money. And when the truth <laughs> was made, remember, they went and changed it and said, well, you need to let us know that you are from the native tribe. So the release enslaved didn't have any records anyway. So they couldn't say who they was really from. I think it was on like my new those was able to do that based on their master's records. Okay, so even the true Native Americans are not the Native Americans that you look talk about today. And then for those who keep saying that they are, do your genealogy and see do you belong to that tribe. That's the only way you're going to say you connect. You can keep talking about stories. You can talk about the long hair. You can talk about the high cheekbones. You can talk about all that in the family. But if you don't have your DNA, you don't have your genealogy, it's just conversation. That's all I want to say. Appreciate that, brother. Wisdom never sleeps. Uh, who's next? Is it brother Morris, America's first rifleman? Yeah. Ellis. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lumumba. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, I know you're a professor and all of that, but I think Jews are in a merch, uh, which, which is they go by their mother's lineage. And if you're talking about the Bible, the Bible prophesies that Jesus was going to come from the, the tribe of, of Judah. And Mary was from the tribe of Judah. So his, Bible, real quick, it, the Bible states in the Old Testament. So there are two books that that deal with the uh, prophesying of the Messiah, right? The book of Ezekiel and the book of Isaiah. They both state that the Messiah would be from the seed of King David. Which is from Judah. Okay, that's you great. Know, oh, now, hold, on, wait, hold on, hold on. Also, however, the Bible traces the genealogy through Joseph. So I'm just telling you what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't go through Mary. It goes through Joseph. Exactly. So no, what are we talking about here? We're just going on what the text says. Hold on. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not going to argue it, you know, but I okay. think Jews go through their, their mother line. So even That's if great. your father is Jewish and right. your mother right. is not Bible, Jewish, they don't you won't that. be considered the Jewish. They don't do that. Right. But my, my main point, I was going to get to the, to the topic here. You know, I think African-Americans have a beautiful culture. But I, I, this, I had this thought even before this show came out. I was thinking about it just in my head the other day. And we had a show on Focus on Liberia, which dealt with the Gola Geechee culture. And there's two tribes in Liberia called the Gola and the well, Geechee. We, hold on, very quickly. We want to say ethnic group, not tribe. The proper term is ethnic group. Okay, Thank ethnic you. group. I, I would say that, ethnic groups. And the reason we even cover that is because right now we have a president who is from the, the, the Gisi tribe. And our first lady is ethnic from the Gola group. tribe. See, ethnic group. Ethnic uh, group. Sorry, sorry. We're used to saying tribe or uh, ethnic groups, right? So, looking at the culture, right? And, and if I can interject real quick, Geechee is not a it's not a tribe or or even an ethnic group. No, no. The reason we we trace it back because 
not everybody who is Gola Gichi is from those two ethnic groups in Liberia. But those two ethnic groups, people have some retention of the names and the similarities because they're, they're rice cultivators. So when they, you know, brought them to the United States, you know, Carolinas and Georgia, mainly they was there cultivating rice, you know, what you call the rare rice and all of those things. So there's some similarities and some parallels we can draw back to those two ethnic groups in Liberia. But when I look at African American culture, like, you know, many people say a lot of European, you know, uh, influence is in that culture. And I think that's fine. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. So when people talk about culture, it's not stagnant. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's dynamic. Culture change. You know, people infuse different, you know, uh, culture into their own culture. So, for example, right, most African culture or Af you know, uh, uh, African ethnic groups, they have their mystery schools or their secret or their, what, what they call their, their bush uh, schools, which many people have to go through to become a man. You know, it's like a rite of passage. You know, they have, you know, certain uh, cultural practices that most African-Americans don't have. So there's a lot that's been lost, so to speak. And I know you're talking about cultural retention, but I think there's a lot of African cultural practices that has been lost with African-Americans. And they have adopted some European, you know, you know, cultural practices, which is fine. Again, culture is, 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 is not stagnant. So I think when people say that it's a bad thing that African-Americans are, you know, intermixed with some African culture and, and, and a lot more European culture, for me, that's not an insult. I think that's fine. They, they've thrived either way. You know, they've had a lot of success as a people. And they're not 100% African in terms of the cultural practices. If I would put a number to, I would say like most of them are 30%, you know, African and, and the rest is probably European and, and not a mixture of, of, of American culture. So I don't, I don't think it's an insult when people say that. Yeah, I don't think it's an insult when people say that. So this whole conversation where you're talking about African culture retention, I think the gentleman was talking about Liberia. When uh, you know, the free men went back to Liberia. One of the problems that the quote unquote native had with them is the fact that they labeled them as barbaric. They labeled them as, you know, uh, uncivilized savages. And like you said, they're trying to Christianize them. Why? Why? why so it, was that, that, that you're telling the half truth. Why do they do that? No, no. Hold on. Hold on. Dinos. I, I just want to get to a point here. So yeah, we gotta explain if why you say if you say that there was a lot of cultural retention, you know, when these free men hey, came back, can you please they explain? Would, I really like to know, Elvis. Can you please explain why they did that? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get to. It. I just want to make finish this point real quick. So, if you say there was a lot of cultural retention, these you know people who came back would see that these practices are their practices. These you know traditions are their traditions. Elvis, you're not you're not getting into why did they see them as sav savages. You're not getting into how many of the uh, the returnees, how they married into uh, different ethnic groups. You're, you're, you're completely glossing over that for some reason. Dinus, I'm, I'm getting to a point. I'm, I, my, my, my main focus here is that... Oh, but you made a comment that the, the returnees saw the, the, the natives as um, barbaric, and there was a reason why, and you continue to skip okay. over I don't. I don't know the reason, Dinus. Maybe you know the reason. You can tell uh, me what the because, reason was. Because, because when the when the returnees came back, the um, the natives were still participating in the slave trade. So wait, are we talking about particularly in Liberia? In Liberia. So when so they, 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 real quick, but there was some other issues as well, and part of it was the uh, American indoctr indoctrination that they received as well, to where they saw Africa as primitive, so on and so forth. So that played a, a role as well. Well, it, it was that that played. I mean, it played a role, but again, there was there was two sides of the story, you know. So okay. number one, when when the when the native when the uh, returnees came, you had a number of tribes who were there, and you can look up the poor Crescent massacre. Ethnic that group, still, ethnic group, ethnic group. Ethnic, I'm sorry, ethnic groups who were still participating in slave trade, and then on top of that, again, when the returnees came, a number of them lived among the the natives. They married into different families of the natives. The men were married the the women natives. The the uh, men of the natives were married the uh, returning no, women. No, so just, no, 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 no. Let me let me get. Who was the Masakwa family? Who was the Masakwa family? Hold on one second. 
the point the point here is when you're talking about the reason they call them those names is because of you know the the slave trade was still happening. It's not true. The key was the cultural oh, nah, practices. Nah. What, what hold on, the, hold on, Dinus, please. Let me let me give my little nah, time nah, here, nah, please. Nah, nah. We can't we can't gloss over that. What was the poor oppressive massacre? Hold on, Dinus. Let me let me make my point. Right. The the, the key here is the cultural oh, no, no, practices. Hold on, hold on, brother, brother, brother Morris. The respectful thing to do, because this is Dinus' platform, is to first answer his question before you make your point. That would be the respectful thing to do. Right. So the massacres are from the Vi ethnic group, right? And if you know the history of our country, the, the Vi ethnic group, along with the Basa ethnic group, were some of the earliest, you know, ethnic groups to integrate with the African Americans or the, the what we call American Liberians, right? But there were a lot of other ethnic groups that didn't come around till much later. So when you look at the quote unquote and, and, the, the and, 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 and why and why was that? You see, you that's that's the point. You're not you're not allowed me to make a point. You're, you're asking me all these questions. And I say if I'm on I'm on try. I have to finish my thought process. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute up. Right. So the point here is most uh American Liberians, as you call them, when they first came, they intermarry and inter you know uh, mix culturally with what we call the Congos, which were people who were reca you know recapture you know slaves who were free who came around from the Congo basin and were repatriated back to what, what is now Liberia. So those are the two groups that almost became interchangeable. Some people call African, you know, uh, America, Liberians, Congo or Congo. And, you know, it was kind of interchangeable because those two groups, you know, intermarry and they had a, you know, uh, inter, you know, uh, uh, we couldn't distinguish the two groups because they were so closely tied together. And then, of course, other groups were more, you know, uh, friendlier to the, the cellular class, which will be like the Basa and the Bai, like you're, you're talking about the massacres. And we, we also refer to them as Congo as well, because they're, you know, they, they practice mostly the, the African-American culture, the way of talking, the, the way of cooking and, and things like that. So the point I'm talking about is, for example, you know, those, um, what we call the Bush schools, which is the secret society, the secret society, like the Sende and the poor societies. A lot of African American or uh, American Liberian looked down on that. They thought it was devilish. But at the same time, there was the Prince Hall Mason Lodge that was also a secret society that was established in Liberia. But most people call that the quote unquote civilized, you know, secret society, which was more acceptable because right. they can and, and, that, and that is due to the Christian indoctrination. Well, let me right. ask you, Elvis, right. which which secret society are you a part of? I'm not a, I'm not I'm not part of any uh, secret society. Okay, okay. And, and are you a right. Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Now, Elvis, can all I right. ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, let me ask a question. Um, do you know about the ethnic group that came from Sudan, settling Maryland County? Do you know about um, that group? And Maryland County was a was a separate country at one point before they got incorporated into Liberia. Do you know anything about that? Yes, I know that. Of course, that's that's you know common knowledge in Liberia. But I don't know about that yeah. when you say ethnic group, because in in what is now Maryland, there's a predominant ethnic group there, apart from the American Liberian, which would be the Gribble ethnic group, right. which they, dominate they, Maryland. And they came from have, Sudan. Sudan, they came from. Well, that ethnic group is closely related to my own ethnic group. We are the, part of the same language group. So, okay. from our people, we 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 say we came from what is now the Ivory Coast. Where you have a lot of crew speaking people like the Bete, you know, the Dita, the the, the, the crews, the crowns. Right. The Basa, they came from the Grimo, you're absolutely and the correct. You know what you're talking right. about. You do. You're absolutely correct. And they came from right. the Ivory Coast, but they came from Sudan before that. That's what they said. That's that's what people say. And we yeah, we, we try to claim it a long time ago that we were some you know Sudanic people, but yeah, that's what you know, said. contemporary would... historians say that we came most likely from the Ivory Coast region, which is you know, right close to Liberia. But well, I'm going to pass the mic. I think I've been on for too long. But I just want to make those key points and, you know, okay. you just, I, just show wanted, back. I just wanted to ask you that because I was listening to someone from Maryland County the other day. Elder, he was the elder from the uh, community. He was a leader in the community. And he was saying that that's where they came from. They came from Sudan, then to the Ivory Coast, and they had some problem in the Ivory Coast. So they, he told his story, but it's so long to repeat. Then they came to Maryland County, and it was a separate country until further on they got incorporated into Liberia. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. that's that's pretty accurate. The Sudan part of it, we've kind of maybe for some it's of debatable. us who are more contemporary, we've kind of yeah, it's, it's debatable because okay. we our culture is not really Sudanic. It's more you know, cool, uh, crew quiet you know, kind of culture. So yeah. most people don't really claim the, the, that lineage. But maybe it happened a long, long time ago. But I'll pass the mic. Okay, to you, so um, I'll make my little point, Lumba. I have a quick little point. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Okay. All right. So um, I'm gonna keep everything practical. Um, I was privileged to work in about over 35 states and I have to live and work wherever I go to work. I have to live there for a while and work there. And I met a lot of people. I've worked on at least four or five native American reservation. And, um, I, me personally, I've never met a black person on that reservation. Um, I've met some, I saw and met some mix, um, you know, Native American with, with African American, with white American and so forth and so on. But I never seen like a a group of black people. Maybe they are, I don't know. I'm not on I'm not gonna say it, so I don't know. I did know um I did know um a person I had a friend of mine when I used to be a um a cyclist in New York, he was from an ethnic group in New York someplace. And he was definitely um, mixed because his mom was Native American and his father was black. Those are the only people I've met so far, but I never met um, on any of the reservation. I went to Oklahoma, here in Georgia, and um, and Florida, the reservation in those um, states. And I think South or North Carolina. I can't remember one of those that I've been on, and I've I've never met any. So I would like to know where are they. That's what I got to say. Well, well, per per their uh, conspiracy theory, um, sometime back in the I would I would say seventeenth or eighteenth century, the white man switched out the uh, the black natives with the monsters. Right, and, and reclassify the black natives as African. Yeah, Imp impossible, impossible. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the conspiracy theory. Impossible. But Dinus, what a lot of, what a lot of um, African American, not only African American, I'm talking about, pe I would say people in general don't realize that Africans have been traveling for a long time, BC, to the Americas, to the Caribbean, and stuff. I don't want to get mixed up. Africans travel a lot all over the world. You know, when we were traveling, people were living in caves still. That's just that's just the facts. So they might get mixed up with 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 those um black people. Of course, if you're gonna travel and live someplace, you're gonna intermate with the, um whoever's native in that land. That's gonna happen. That's impossible for it not to happen. So black people, yes, black people was traveling to the to the Americas way before the white men know what a, what a what a ship was. That's just a scientific fact. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So maybe they're getting mixed up with those people. Of course, they're gonna have a mix after a while. That's just natural. That's just natural. And the post that you put out, um, Diana, the other day was beautiful because it showed that people think they were. Native American. Oh no, you're mixed with white. Oh no, you only have one percent. All those actors that you post that you put out, you see. So you could easily say because your hair is straight or or whatever. In Africa, in Nigeria right now, they got an ethnic group in Nigeria. They look Chinese. They got Chinese features to show you um um that we were the first people. Period. Everybody came from us, but they they right in Nigeria. They got they got Chinese features. The sand people, so-called sand, that's not their name in southern Africa, Botswana, Namibia. They look Chinese, you know? And they've been there for the sand I, I, would, I wouldn't say they look Chinese. Or the I Chinese look like them. them. Yeah, I wouldn't say they look, but I know who you're talking about. Right, exactly. So, you know, the black people, I'm just saying black people come in men different shades. And they don't have to be mixed. They just come in men different shades and features and true. all kind of things. very true. You very see? True. It's as simple as that. Absolutely. Ashawn yeah. Lewis, you've been waiting patiently, trying to tap him back in, tapping out. I hope you've had your electronic issue squared away. You got to stop using that that burner cell from the Trump campaign. 
you know, see what you've been talking to. Go right ahead, Brother Lewis. Ask Sean Lewis. Trump. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, how you doing? Not hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Well, I have to say first, uh, from the from the beginning, uh, uh to uh, Brother Lumumba. Is that your name? Yes, that's my last name, Lumumba. Yes. Uh, well, I'm sorry if I was like making so many comments. I I know I wasn't trolling or anything. I was just trying to like to. Just do, this, do the very same thing that you guys are doing. Just bring up a lot of the the stuff that these crazy at any crisis of people were were saying. So, if that was a if that was considered trolling, then I apologize. But I no, wasn't no. trolling. Just let me know. <laughs> no, I think no. My control the trolling was I wanted you to cam up while you were in queue, while you were backstage. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I was trying. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to cam up for for some whatever reason. The cam couldn't like put my put my camera. On, so okay, I was just going to okay, leave. No, it. I had no I issue with someone making front. comments. So go go yeah. right ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, well, I think my take on the whole thing from from the uh the topic. It's like I don't get where where some of folks actually believe all this stuff because if they think that there's nothing African about them, then why are they still why are they still like doing the same things that their ancestors were doing? That there's nothing African about them. And who who are you referring to, Lewis? Well, I'm referring to uh, some of our folks that. Basically, just um, basically just um, walk around thinking that they're Indian and so okay, they gotcha. think that they're, gotcha. you know, think that they're Hebrew Israelites or they think they're Moors or whatever and all that sort of stuff. But like, like for example, they'll bring up a lot of the, a lot of articles or something, and thinking that that's some sort of like you know gotcha moment where they show they show a lot of stuff about that that they think proves their uh their theories or, th or proves their um their ideologies or something like that but really when you look at the what the article really says or what the book really says yeah, it actually it just says counters their actual argument yeah i've had that happen yeah. to where they'd be like well this article i'll read the article and the article actually act actually makes a counter argument. It disabuses them of the very uh, argument they were making. So I would have to argue that either they haven't read the article or maybe they aren't able to read at an adult level. So they yeah. didn't understand what the author was saying. So they might have just seen the title and then made the assumption. For And a good example of that, I'm sorry to cut you off. It Well, it's yeah. my channel, but is uh, the book by um, uh, Ivan Van Sertema, We Came Before Columbus. Many people cite that book as an example However, no one's ever read the book. I have the book. I've read the book. That book is not a historical, uh, it's not a history paper, a history book. The book actually is just a lot of charismatic storytelling. So once again, this is an example where people will, you know, like uh, you stated, the, cite, the a author, cite a book and oftentimes never actually read it. Brother Lumba. Yes. I've been friends Sertima, who I met personally, right? He never said he said they came before Columbus. I mean, black people came before Columbus, came before Columbus. Not they were there. They came there. They came. They came from someplace else there. That's right. what he said. Right. You see, he's not saying that um, the indigenous from right there, not that. Right. Maybe, yeah, but maybe I'm not saying that on many of the pretendians. Okay. We'll make that argument based on. Yeah, he never, he never, he, he, never he, he never said that. He he never he's, said that. He's he's never said that. He's a he's, he's a historian that studied all over the world. You see what I'm saying? So he he never said that. I've been had that book, and like I said, I met him personally. You, you see what I'm saying? Another thing I want to say before before I, I stop a, a two minute thing. All right, why if I thought. You see what I'm saying? That um, say it's okay. Say let's pretend that I was from here. 
I would lie and say I'm from Africa. Okay? Because when you think about all of the achievements, all of the empires, uh, studying the stuff, eh, whatever, why wouldn't you want to come from a place? Why would you want to come from, come from America? That, that, that's that's what, what I'm getting. And for the present and future, everybody on the mother right now, all on their mind is Africa, 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 because it's the richest continent on earth. So why wouldn't you want to associate yourself with that when millions of other people are? I gave Dinah the list. Hey, Gerard. I, I don't get it. Gerard, could I push can back I a little a bit? I can, I, yeah. I can answer that question. Go right ahead. Can I say yeah, I, I just want to say quickly uh, before you come in. I think it would be... We, we can all agree that there's some percentage of African-Americans who intermarry with, you know, Native Americans. Of course. So they have some some heritage to that. Well, I think where the, where the problem is, is when everybody starts to claim that all black people or all African-Americans, you know, are from, you know, the, the, the real Native American. But I think there are some people, some portion of African-Americans who have. Native American uh, ancestry. Of course, have to be so, so, so it's not completely out of the, the question that some of them are, you know, quote unquote Native Americans. So, you know, maybe many generations back, their parents intermarried with, you know, uh, their, their forefathers intermarried with Native Americans and they had that heritage. So we can't just dismiss it that there's no African Americans with Native American history. I just want to uh, ancestry. No, no, that's not, that's, very, very quickly. One that's mic, not what one I meant. Mic, one mic. But the yeah, issue yeah. is, and Brother Wisdom never speak, spoke to this. If you're going to make that claim, trace your genealogy. Don't don't make that claim based on conjecture, right? That, that that's all we're arguing. If you're going to be able to make that, if you're going to make that claim, substantiate it. And people aren't doing that. People aren't tracing their genealogy. They're exactly. just saying, "Oh, I'm Native American. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm a Moor. I'm this. I'm that, and all of the above." Right? Because they're simply seeking to disabuse themselves of their African heritage and identity. But brother Lumba, hey, can, the Moors are from West Africa. I'm sorry. The Moors are from West Africa. Well, they're from Northwest Africa. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're from Morocco. Thing, that, that's thing. not West Africa. No, it's it's not the same thing. Huh? It's, My, it's not the same thing. And, um, and very, very, but and some of them, quickly. some of them came from, according to um, who um um Diop, according to Diop, some of them came from Senegal and all those places. I mean, I mean, Morocco, Morocco, Moroccans now didn't look like um, um, a Morocco then. All of Morocco was black at one point. Well, no, no. Is, no. Moors, and very quickly, Moors, uh, being a Moor, let me turn my camera back on. Being a Moor in medieval African, in medieval Af African history was a political designation, not a racial designation. You had Moors who were white Europeans. You have Moors who are black Africans. You have Moors who are Arabs. You have Moors who are Berbers. These right, are the so, so who are the Moors? Because if you go to Europe right now, right, all those statues and 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 you know dignitaries and people like they have a lot of them were black. Right, a lot. But I'm saying, saying? A lot, but the being, being, but I'm saying that but being a Moor was not a racial designation. It was a right. I understand. I, I understand. Right. I understand. Um, so, but very quick, I, I want to speak to this point that you made. You talked about people trying to disavow themselves of the African yeah, yeah. right? So Ali Missouri, who was a Kenyan, Kenyan-born political scientist, he was a, he's actually the, was the former um, chairperson of Black Studies at the University of Michigan, or as I like to say, from a, being from Ohio, Michigan, right? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's a basketball thing, right? But how, how, many, about, how, many, how many times have you guys beat them in the last two years? Medina, stay focused. Um, <laughs> so one of the issues that he talks about, particularly for African-Americans, in which they seek to disavow themselves of the African history, heritage, and culture, he talks about this in his book, The Africans of Triple Heritage, what I have up in front of me here in the library is this process of dis-Africanization, right? So this is coming from week four of my class that I teach. One of the prominent strategies of slavery was to make captives forget as soon as possible where they came from, i.e. contrived amnesia. 
For number one, removal of personal identity. Enslaved Africans could not carry the names of their own cultures. Yoruba, Mandika, Iwe, Wolof, etc. Removal of collective identity. Ceased being Africans became niggers or Negroes. Three, removal of collective pride. This truly speaks to what you were talking about, brother. The removal of collective pride. Mm. African nostalgia was undermined and destroyed by perpetual negative indoctrination. Being a slave was deliverance from savage and primitive Africa. Ashamed, they became ashamed. Keyword, they became ashamed. They became ashamed of where they came from. Removal mm. of religious beliefs. Traditional religious beliefs survived less in the U.S. than in Brazil and the Caribbean. Linguistic removal, African languages you ceased as the enslaved learned the language of their masters, English. But number three, removal of collective pride. They became ashamed of where they came from. This is why we find black people trying to claim that there's something other than African. This is a derivative of the Holocaust of enslavement. Point blank period. Yeah. Hey, can I can I bid on that real fast? Please. Okay. I, I wanted to ask Mr. Elvis a question. I, I, I the brother said he's from Liberia. And um Okay, I wanted to ask him because he because he can point because the gentleman was saying that the thing about black American and some type of African history or African heritage or African culture or whatever the case. Right. And it's like when I hear black Americans speaking about uh, Africa or African culture. Very African quickly, Brother Morris, Brother Morris, very quickly, here at Lamumba uh -huh. speaks, we use the term African-American rather than black American. Go well, right Af African, African-American. Right. Now, when I heard Mr. Elvis, when he spoke about his African identity or his 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 African ethnicity, he pointed to a specific land in a specific place with a specific culture and everything that comes with having a specific ethnic identity uh, and a specific F, uh, cultural identity. He he didn't talk about a hodgepodge of places or not being able to point to a specific places. So he's saying that he's not discontinued from a land and from what comes with having a land or what comes with having a culture built in a land, he's very specific of where he's from, very specific of, of what you his culture that. is, right? I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. So, so here's the issue. African-American uh -huh. culture is an amalgamation of West and Central African cultures. That is, so that, that, that is a reality. So for example, one aspect of African-American culture that we find, particularly in Black churches, two things. One is call and response and the ring shout. Right, the uh, I'm sorry, not the ring shout, uh, shouting, people shouting and all that type of stuff. That comes directly from the ring shout in the Congo. Right, so there are African American culture is an amalgamation of, of Af but actually all West African uh, diaspora cultures. So you talk about African culture in America, or African Americans in America, Afro Jamaicans, Afro Haitians, etc. Throughout the the diaspora is an amalgamation of West and Central African cultures. A good example that we even find in Haiti in terms of um, Bookman being from what many call you was Sina Gambia, but also being a voodoo priestess, right? And we know voodoo was the state religion of Dahomey. So this is an example of the amalgamation of African cultures coalescing in what the death, decadence, and dysphoria of the Western diaspora. Can I say something? Right. I, I, I wanted to respond Black church real quick. are you talking about? What, what black church are you talking about? The AME or the NB, NBC? Like what this Congo culture that you're speaking of in what church? Are you talking about what exact church are you talking about that this is practiced? We find this in, and we find this in several African American churches. Christian churches, the practice of shouting. Right, right, but that, that's a that's that, a small that, that's a small piece of African culture. Though, no, no, right? no, I'm, just, I'm just giving a example. Like I said, I listed eight books earlier. So what I would argue is you need to read the literature, the scholarly literature on African cultural tension and African American culture, then come back in about a, about a month or two and we could revisit this conversation. All right, let me, because can I respond to you, thing, brother, brother either, Al? Hold on, either you trust my, my, my skill as a scholar or you don't, and if you don't, which is great, then you, as, as our brother LeVar Burton would say on Reading Rainbow, don't believe me, read it for yourself. But then we right. come back and have this conversation. Right. So the point I was making, uh, Al, you know, it's not a it's not a, a jab at African Americans, right? Uh well, you're talking about having a, a land and, and something that hasn't been, you know, 
diluted, so to speak, a culture or people that haven't been diluted. And it's not the African Americans, you know, fault. This was a, you know, intentional uh, and 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 prolonged effort from quote unquote the, the slave masters. So the culture, if we can say that, the African Americans who are the African Americans now from the African nest. You know, less so in other parts like Haiti, where you know they have their, you know, the, the voodoo's and other. They speak even some form of African languages in other parts of, you know, of the Caribbean where you know black people were enslaved. But especially in America, it was a concerted effort to really deculture, you know, those slaves because you know they could speak in their native tongues. You know, they could plan uprisings to overthrow their, you know, the, the slave masters and other other things like Correct. that. Correct. So I think, yeah. So I think having that. You know, being so prevalent in American, you know, transatlantic slavery in America, that took a, away a lot of cultural retention for African Americans. So that's why it seems like they have a quote unquote high spot or hodgepodge, you know, culture. You know, well, but the reality is they still have form a beautiful culture. They've had a, a tremendous impact on the world in terms of music and other things that they, they contributed to the to the to the planet. So for me, that's why I say it's a beautiful thing because with all of the, the, the you know the effort that was made against them, they still rose up and they still became very influential into this world. So that's why I'm, I'm not saying that my culture is even greater than African American culture because my people haven't accomplished as much as African Americans on a global stage. So just having culture that is intact is not better than people who have a quote unquote hodgepodge culture who has been more impactful and more successful economically and culturally, you know, culturally, globally. So that, that's I, the point I, I was making. I appreciate about. that, Brother Morris, but I would say it isn't a hodgepodge. It's an amalgamation, right? And the thing right. is, before I went to school, got a bachelor's degree in Black Studies, got a master's degree in African Studies, about to finish my doctorate in two months, I wasn't aware of these things. And so I wasn't aware of the various forms of African culture retention and African American culture. In fact, I would tell you, don't even read all the books I gave you all. Just read this book right here, Afghanisms in American Culture by Joseph E. Holloway. And in the introduction, they give, they give, they in the introduction, they go over probably about two dozen different books on African culture retention. And in each book, they focus on a different aspect of African culture retention in African American culture. Just, just read the introduction to that book, right? So that way you ain't got to read all eight books like I was mentioning. But once again, these are issues because the master narrative, when we talk about Dr. Carter G. Wilson, Miseducation Negro, the master narrative is that what? Your culture is completely destroyed, and therefore you need to just emulate white people. But we find, when you actually, with the devil's in the details, we find, just like Georgia moved that goalpost against Ohio State to end the Peach Bowl, we find that what? This, what? this is not the case. We were able to retain our culture, right? Even though... Even in the death, decadence, and dysphoria of the Ma'afa, the African Holocaust, right? In which, once again, there was a, a very strong push to decautionalize African people. But as I stated, one of the core aspects of African cultural, African American life history and culture is what? Adaptive vitality, the ability to adjust to changing circumstances without losing one's substance or essence. And many scholars argue that adaptive vitality and ingenuity is an example of the strengths of African people in America, right? For example, we talk about the Maroons, not only were they able to fight against the, 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 the slaveocracy and be successful and go into actual treaties, right? They actually had booby traps, right? They had underground, underwater passageways to their, to their living, living spaces, right? So we find that it, irrespective of where we were in the world and whatever they tried to do to us, they could not kill African blood. And that's something to be proud of. Uh, brother Lumba, yes, I can't you, you're not gonna you're not gonna leave Georgia alone, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dinus was there. He, he wanted to be up so bad. He wanted to be up so bad. Look, so oh. Dinus Di Di was there. So Dinus and I, we did a, we like we did a, we stayed up, watched the game together because we put money on. How much money did we put on that game, Dinus? So like three hundred, three hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, something like that, right? Yeah. So I'm talking shit the whole game. <laughs> That punk, that punk son of a bee missed that damn field goal. I hung up on his ass, sent the money, and went straight to bed. I'm out of here. Like, ask him, he'll tell you. That's exactly what happened. You, you, what know, happened. you know they're coming back this year. Did you see the recruiting class for this year? 
It don't matter. It don't matter. matter. We're going to be preseason number one. Did you see our recruiting class this year? Did you see our recruiting class this year? Hold on. I got, I got, oh, I can't even bring my arm up, but I got the, I got the tattoo. Oh, I got the tattoo on me, right? I'm lifetime. You know what I mean? I'm like, see, listen, 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 Dinus is old state because he got recruited there. He's he's Georgia because he got recruited. So J- Dinus had to be jumped in. I was born in. Okay, you know, I, you know what I'm I was born into this. So I'm real. <laughs> this is blood money for me. This is blood money for me. You know what I'm saying? Before we go way off, before we go way off subject, uh, getting back to these so-called native people or or whatever, do they believe in si- the science of DNA? Or they just they, they, don't scam. they say it's a scam. Yeah, apparently they don't. Science, yeah. DNA, a scam. Are they out of their mind? I, I would, I would presume so, because as Dinah stated, and Dinah is much more knowledgeable on this than I am. But what uh-huh. Dinah shared with me is that you have people who have had their DNA, DNA done, DNA test, and when it comes back, they're not Native American. They say well, it's a lie. Science, I mean, people may lie. Science, mean, science never lies. True. If that works, then a lot of men would say that the DNA test that proves they 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 the daddy. Right. Isn't the case? Because you know, because you know Dinah's got a baby on the way with sexy red. Math and science <laughs> cannot lie. <laughs> math math <laughs> and science cannot lie. It's, I know, but real, real quick, real quick, because you know, Dinah's met sexy red at a Trump at a Trump rally. And they've been together ever since. <laughs> science, science and math cannot lie. That's right. what everybody in the chat right. to know. Yes. Science, without math and science, we cannot exist on earth. I would agree. I would agree with it's that one. So, Lamumba, I have a question for you. So, do you think African American culture, as it is currently constituted, is worse than quote unquote pure African culture, even though there's no such thing? Well, so, so I, I would say, say I, we could use the term traditional African culture, and by traditional African culture. Uh, I define that as African culture independent of European and Arab influence. Right? Does that tie? Does that definition work for you, Brother Morris? No, no. I would say no because culture is is, is dynamic. It's always changing. Well, you I, get I understand, I understand that. That's true. It, but right. when I say traditional African culture, I'm talking about African culture independent of European and Arab influence. I mean. Every culture is influenced by outsiders. We know that, right? From well, from, from Europe to Asia, their well, culture this, is also is influenced from outsiders. Before, this is before those things, were, particularly West in West West Africa. This is this, West Africa was more so insulated before you know what Muslims began to trade in Western Sudan, right? So this is the that when most scholars, when we talk about okay, what is a African has cultural the African culture personality, right? But can you imagine? Can you imagine that far back to our African culture that is devoid of "quote unquote" you know Arab? Well, yeah, I, I can't because I've read. Influence? I can't. Be, I can't because I've read the literature. Okay. So, so I, 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 I maybe you can answer my question now. So go right, go ahead. Ask. Yes. No, no. My question was: Do you think African American culture as it is today is worse off than African culture as it is today? You know, let's not put that caveat there because this is what we have right now. We can't go back to what we had. Um, so I would say this as an African American, I would say I'm very hard on my own people and our own culture. I do not. I believe that we are seeing aspects of the culture that are devolving rather than evolving. Right. I would, uh, and so there are a number of, of black psychologists, African American psychologists, African Center psychologists. I talk about this. They talk about concepts t- such as culture misorientation. They talk about alien self disorder, anti self disorder, where we find African people, African Americans engaging in behaviors that are in contradiction or, or that are in contravention to their own self interest, right? Um, and so from that perspective, I would argue that it's extremely problematic. We can also argue that we see these issues globally amongst African people, right? So I would argue that we see some issues that are systemic, irrespective of where we are in the world. But um, Brother Lumba, me for one, coming from Jamaica as a as a child. Shout out to Jam Rock. <laughs> I am, I am, before I was not, because, you know, my mom took me out of my environment as a young person to come here, so I was very upset. But growing up here in America, um, but to the African Americans, I am so glad I grew up with African Americans because mm. if I didn't, I would not learn my true culture. It's from African Americans, believe it or not. 
I learned African culture from mm. African Americans. You see what I'm saying? And I I would not. I would have just been a regular, probably a farmer, which I would love, Christian or or whatever, if I remained in Jamaica. What do, you, what do you consider be, African culture? What do you consider African culture? I, I didn't say African. I, I, huh? You said so, you learned African American? culture from African Americans. Right. No, no. But that's why I'm asking no, what do you consider no, African what, culture. Right. It, it's from African Americans, right? That's that what I'm saying. I, what, that could, I what, what is African, the culture? Describe it to us. I wouldn't say culture. Yeah. I would say more history then. Let's put it that way. Okay. All right. I would say more history. Learn my African history, right? Not hey, culture. It's true because you're right. Culture change, culture change all the time. I mean, Europeans got their culture from us. They didn't know nothing. They got it from us, you know. And then they developed their own and turned it into whatever. But all their knowledge they got from us. That's just a science fact. Um, you see what I'm saying? So you're right. Culture always change. You Can know. I say something. Good. So you learn uh, African culture from African Americans. So. With you being from a uh, from Jamaica and everything, there's no African culture in Jamaica that you learn from. Um, Jamaica, let me tell you something, bro. Jamaica is British. Okay, period. British. Mm -hmm. the the on, The only type of small culture we have was from the Rastafarian. Other than that, we were a hundred percent British. Period. One hundred percent Christian British. That was us. It's later on now. Of course, now they have, you know, it's, 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 it's better now over the past couple of years. But, I mean, before, we were straight up 100% Christian, Protestant, British. Period. You know? You have one and two people like Marcus Garvey and so forth and so on. But those are the ones and twos. You know? And, and they didn't listen to Marcus Garvey. The Marcus Garvey had to come here. You know, no, but, uh, so let me say this. I, I would I would push back a little bit against that, brother. I know yeah, I know you're from Jamaica. Debate a couple weeks ago. I know you're from Jamaica, know. but you know, J Marcus Garb actually was able to link up with a brother who was in Jamaica doing some Pan Africans work. He was from the Bahamas, right? And one of the issues that led to Marcus Garvey leaving was because people wanted an accounting of how he was, you know, spending the money that was being raised for the U UNIA. Yeah. So I mean he did get some, he was getting some support, but you know. Yeah, I'm sure he did because we had. I didn't. I think. Bookman I mean, yeah, he, came even from held, Jamaica. he even held political office in Jamaica. Before right. He yeah. Yeah. So. Bookman came from. No, I'm not saying they didn't have none of the few and far in between. I mean, we had the revolutionists from Jamaica. We had we had Bookmans from Jamaica, right? Yeah. Well, the most most Jamaicans identify with Ghanaians, don't they? Uh, we're talking about uh, Queen Annie. Right? Yes, she's she's right. the only female woman who's a national hero of Jamaica. Right. Ex they, exactly. had, they had the paper mache exactly. statues about the national heroes when you fly into Kingston, uh, the airport in Kingston. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm just, just saying, Jamaica, right? I'm just saying, that, yeah, I'm just saying the Jamaicans in general, we're just plain, regular British Christians, period. That's just the, the overwhelm overwhelming um, aspect of, of, of Jamaicans, period. That's, that's just um, what we are. Right, and like I said, me personally, this is what I'm saying, person for myself. I'm I'm real glad I came here because I, I met a lot of people. I met Dr. Ben. I met Dr. Clark. You know, mm -hmm. I met Ben Surdam. I met I met Professor Quasi and his wife. So <laughs> much people that I met here, and learned from you know, and studied from. You know, so what, I, what, I what part of Jamaica did you grow up in? I came from. Um, I was born in Trelawney. And I lived in Kingston for a little bit before I came here as a young child. How old? I think I was like 11 or 12 years old when I came here. Okay, so you would say you didn't have a cultural consciousness before you moved here. So you can't say that Jamaicans no, no. are British because you, you didn't have a, a full concept of who Jamaicans were at that age. No, but um, after, after I became an adult, after I became an adult, I saw traveling back and forth. And trust me, bro, I've millions of families down there 100 percent british right now we are we won't even give up the, the king barbados gave up um the british um queen we still have the king as the head of state in jamaica okay and we claim that we're the baddest of the bad right and we won't even give up the king so we're still british right now 
But you know? don't you don't you see <laughs> their con, you know, their con influence in Jamaican culture? Because I don't know if you're fam familiar with their con people from Ghana. You know, yes, the Ivy yes, Coast the, the, so the, um, um, the, the Maroons, the Maroons. I'm from the Maroons. If you're born in Trelawney, you're automatically from the Maroons. So that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. So when you say you didn't learn anything, any African culture from Jamaica, yeah, there is an influx of a con culture that's interwoven into quote unquote Jamaican culture, yeah. right? The, the, the Maroons are the Maroons are are pure Christians. Yes, they have their um their African belief and culture, but they they're Christians first. Period. Right. But relig first. religion is not exclusive to your you know a uh, culture is not exclusive to a specific religion, right? So you could be African, quote unquote, and 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 have your African culture, but have a quote unquote yeah, European yeah, but, or Middle Eastern I mean, religion. Me personally, bro, once you start throwing Christian, I grew up in church. My mother is a is a minister, right? And once you start throwing Christian religion in there, any religion, it, it messes up everything. So you think Africans should only practice African traditional religions? If they could practice anything they want now. It's 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 too late to do anything else now. So, you know, so they could question. practice anything. They could practice anything they 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 want to. And now it doesn't matter because it's, it's it's just too late. It's, it's not like you said. You're not gonna go back. It's too late. You're not gonna go back, right? But don't don't think you know that's our religion or or our way of. I wouldn't call it religion. Way of life. That was a spiritual people and is a is our way of life. The way of living with each other, with the way of living with the earth and in nature and with the animals is just a way of life for us. I mean, that's us. But black people will never go back to that again. It's it just never. Period. So I'm not even thinking about um, um that. It's not, never going to happen. But one thing black people better do, though, this is what they better do. And if they don't, this is going to be on them. They better cling to Africa, whether they claim it or not, because that's it, right? The the the, the makeup of the people them that's living in Africa right now is is about maybe about a million Chinese, probably about ten million whites, Lebanese, Indians, you name it, right? Yeah, so yeah, if, if y'all yeah. want to claim, it, one, it's okay. One one could argue that collectively. African America is doing as good or even probably better than the entire continent of Africa, you know, in terms of economics, in terms of, of education, in terms of social stratification. That's you can argue probably, that. So you're, that's probably true. I'm just talking about I'm just talking about for presently and the future. I right? disagree. You I'm not saying to go there, you know. I'm not you don't have to go there, you know. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to live there, but you better make connection and do business and whatever if you don't want to live there. That's what I'm saying because that's what everybody else is doing. And and I don't think um um it's going to be long before um um African Americans fade away right here. That's just the facts, man. That, that that's 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 what I see. That's that's what I'm seeing. So I'm telling um especially young people, listen cling to africa right before before they click just like they just like they they they, they cling to our music or rap ne next you know oh um this that and that person is the best rapper ever this and that all kind of different things right you don't claim it don't worry somebody else will claim it that's what i'm saying and i have a i have an issue with that a deep issue with uh quote-unquote african-americans or black people right when they say that this is our music and other people can't, you know, have it or be a part of it, I think that's a, you know, I, I don't think that's a good argument because there are other things that we benefit from into this world that came from other cultures, things that we use in our daily lives, things that we use to, to learn. So we are, mean, as a, no, right, as a people, that. we, yeah, we, we benefit from other cultures. Right? You're right. So if they right. take something that black people invented, or African American in specific, in, in, in particular, invented, and they like it and they benefit from it and they enjoy it, we should share that with the world. It's, it shouldn't be no, something no, that no. we get in but, but, terms but, of, of music. You're absolutely right. But guess that. what? But guess yeah, what, but, brother? But, guess but, what? But, if African Americans, if African American, I mean, hear me. If Africans, if black people didn't share with the world, didn't share with the world, 
everybody else would be in trouble, man. That's just that's just the so, fact. But, but, but let me speak to this. When we talk about hip hop because I'm a hip hop head, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the issue is control. You know, Mar Marcus Garvey, right? He focused on controlling industry, right? right? So the fact that we don't control the industry, we see ourselves being turned up down, turned upside down, being used, and actually promoting these very negative caricatures of what it means to be a black person. Right. So when we talk about we, whenever you create something, you need to control it. You need right. to own it. And if you don't, you don't own it anymore. So, for example, in the 80s, many people argue that the golden era of hip hop is most scholars in 1987 to 1994. Right. When you look at the early 80s, the, the, the established music, musical industry looked at hip hop as a fad that will go away like disco. Right. And but when you, also when you look and talk about the MCs, male and female, there was a focus on lyricism, promoting positivity in the community, education, Afrocentrism, et cetera, et cetera, being politically and racially conscious, right? Once white people got control of it, the whole message of hip hop, which I would now argue is rap, changed. For example, Kara's one argued that what rappers spit rhymes that are mostly illegal, MCs spit rhymes to uplift their people. So yes. we saw this difference once we didn't control it anymore. So in anything, if you create something, you need to own and control that shit. If not, someone else is going to take advantage of it, and it's going to be oftentimes used to a, to 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 our detriment. That's the reality. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. So you think, for that. example, country music or other genre of music that is exclusively, let's say, Europeans, African Americans should be kept out of it, and that would be a, that you'll be you'll be fine yep. with that. So, so hold, on, hold on. So what you're doing is you're trying to conflate the argument I'm making. What I'm saying is that whatever you create, you need to control. You need to own and you need to control. That's what I'm saying. But you you look at the the economic part of it, uh, Lumumba, which is distribution, also, also you know, distribution culture. of music, right? Also, you need a lot of you need a lot of money. Hold on, hold on. You can't over talk me on my platform. That's not going to happen. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, not only is the economic, but also the cultural message. Right. When other people take control of an art form, they change the cultural message to their benefit. And, and the documentary 500 years later, that was um, co-directed by Malefica Asante Jr. We know Malefica Asante Sr. is the head of Africana Studies at Temple University and the author of the book Afrocentricity that came out in 1980. They talk about that. Um, one of the reasons why we see this type of the, the buntry, lowbrow type of music being pushed in hip, hip rap music now is because these are images and caricatures of black people that make white people feel comfortable. Uh, Brother Lumba. Yes, sir. Let, let me ask you a question. This question is for Elvis, too. Could you name me one music genre or one invention that white people made that black people truly benefit from? I mean, of value. So one music genre, one, think of all the music throughout the world, all opera, um, symphony, right, you right. name it. Tell me one that um, that um, they invented on their own, hundred percent on their own, that black people invented from aura invention. Oh, that, that we benefited from. I couldn't tell you that, but I will say this. And brother Elvis asked that question about if so, with white people, should they keep black people out of country music? That is something that has happened. Um, what the good, the one of uh, the song by Little Nas X. It was supposed to be his first hit single. Was supposed to be a country song. The, the, the country music industry said, no, this isn't a country song. We won't allow this to be charted on our our billboard chart. The same with um with uh Beyonce. Beyonce she made a country song and they they refused to allow it to chart on their billboard. So we <laughs> see other we see them doing this. And no, brother Lumba. Rock and roll music. Rock okay, and brother, Lumba. Lumba. Brother, Lumba. 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 brother Lumba. Yes, sir. No, a music that they invented because they didn't invent rock and roll. No, no, I know, I know, they didn't invent country. They, they didn't they invent school. symphony and all those type of things because right. we know about the great people them better than Mozart, right? right? That Mozart copied from the dude from France. I mean, from Haiti that went to France in the 13, 14, whatever century um, um, that it was. Right. Yeah, music. So yeah, we let, know me, let me give you the simple. Let me give you the simple answer, mm -hmm. right? global economic domination so the quote-unquote europeans or the white men have a global economic domination and in order to distribute music which is why you you make money from it 
they have that, you know, uh, sector, they have that the keys to the door, so to speak. So if black people or even other groups of people who want to, you know, uh, distribute a music that is popular globally, you have to go through that global economic network, which is dominated by white Europeans. So yes. they benefit from it either way. So that's yes. how the benefit. Yes. If we as black people had the keys to the global economic, you know, uh, a network we would be the ones benefiting from it so it's just yeah. economics it's not, it's not, just, it's not a cultural thing it's an economic you're, you're absolutely so that's you're why absolutely. they benefit from you, you any genre correct. music and even, even 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 korean music you know the, the k-pop groups they're mostly most of them are signed to these white you know labor uh, labels like yeah. universal and, and, things, I, and they benefit and I, from it so it's not just african american music well, and, I, I, mean, I, would, I would say this correct. much the most um uh, musical artists are dead broke so I don't know if they're benefiting. A good example would be Q-Tip, right, of the, of the group, um, A Tribe Called Quest. Before his de debut album came out, he said, I was sleeping on my mom's couch. Another good example would be, the, what's the group, um, what's the group from Atlanta? T is it TLC? TLC. Yeah, they were dead broke. Dead broke and they had just sold 10 million albums and won like four or five Grammys. Well, I, I, so, I, so, I what we find is that, that the, the, the Jay-Z and the Nas's and the M&M's and the, uh, the 50 cents, that's an anomaly. Most of those people actually are in debt to the record company. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And I blame us. I blame us, brother Lulumba. That one, that one is on us. But I was more speaking on, um, they didn't, they didn't invent, they control, but they didn't right. invent nothing. Yes, they sir. didn't invent nothing. Yes, All sir. that music came from us. The rock and roll, the, the symphony music that Mozart wrote, all of it came from us, period. 99% of the invention of value, scientific discovery came from us, period. That's just period. All right. That's what that's the part I'm, I'm trying to say. No one could tell me what did a white person invent of value <clears throat> that black people benefit from that they invented. Right. It ain't nothing, it, nothing modern. It ain't the cell phone. The, none of those type of things It's not. You name it. We invented it. Period. Well, let let, let, let me say, let me, let me disagree with you. Uh, uh, tell me, just tell me. I would like to know. I, hold I don't, on, hold on, hold on. I would like it's to not, know. It's, it's not going to be a straightforward answer, but more like mm. white people tend to, hold on. White people tend to refine things and benefit from it to the maximum. Right. Refine, and I was having no. this conversation. One second. I was having this conversation on another platform. We were talking about why are we selling our natural resources to you know European countries? And I, I made an analogy, it's a common analogy, it's, it's you know, it's not it's nothing sophisticated, but if you take a cocoa plant, right, and you give it to a, a Santi man in Ghana, it, he, he doesn't even know how to really make coffee from that cocoa bean, doesn't know how to make chocolate from it, can't make you know a, a, a hot chocolate from it. But the white man would buy that material, take it to Europe, take it to Belgium, turn it into a toffee, turn yeah, it into a chocolate it bar, you know, turn it into, we don't have any mm -hmm. African, or, you know, let's, let's just go to West Africa, any West African chocolate company. And we have a lot of cocoa plants in West Africa, in Liberia, in Ivory Coast, in Ghana, they, and so they, forth. They we, have, we are, they have, we are they plenty have some, of it, but not in, one in African Ghana. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. some. They have some. Ran by, they just yeah, not ran, by, ran by Ghanaians or, 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 or by you know, Ghanaians. Hundred percent by Ghanaians. Hundred percent by Ghanaians. They have them. Right. Hundred percent so, um, um, by Ghanaians. And and no, no. Um, as far as refining and and stuff like that, no, no. Black people. No, refine I, those and I'll give you another example. Nigeria, right? Nigeria have a lot of oil. I think a while ago they had a couple of refineries that went down, and it, they had not been able to refine their own ore that they have so many, so much of, they have to send it out of their country to get refined and then brought back in and sold for a profit to them. Lazy, lazy. And a, lot, like yeah, and a lot of other things we can, we can talk about, even cell phones. Is there an African comp company on the continent that's making cell phones? Uh, one in Rwanda. We have cobalt, we have coal tents, all of these things that without, you know, those uh, minerals, cell phones can't be made, but we have no African, you know, companies even in the right. Congo and, and, and other you know, places. There's, so the point is, that's why I said refinement, because the white man can take right. those materials and refine it oh, and make well, it useful have, to the entire world. They have something that you just don't one know. Mic, I'm telling mic, you. Mic, they have one them. Mic, one mic. One mic. So one, Go ahead, Brother Lumba. So, and this is something Dinah would say, you're glossing over a lot of issues. While we talk about the global economy, 
coming out of colonialism. It was set up for what Europeans to manufacture right. um, uh, the goods, and then for Africans and non-European people to simply what provide the Europeans with the, with the natural crude resources. Right. Um, what we tend to find, even if you ever get a chance, read the book uh, "Confessions of an Economic Hitman." In many nation states, the reason why these nation states aren't provide aren't manufacturing uh, actual goods to sell on the global market is because you got neocolonialism going on. So this isn't just a situation where Europeans are just entrepreneurial and have their know-how. No, it's blood money that we're talking about, right? So we need to be cognizant of these things rather than, and, and one thing we don't do on my show is pedestalize non-African people. So that just ain't going to happen, right? If you no. want to pedestalize non-African people, Bro you can go somewhere else. Bro we don't Bro do that Brother, Brother Lulumba. Yes, sir. And you see, what a lot of people don't know is they do have African manufacture. People don't take the time to research and, and learn. I, I do. I'm telling you, I'm going a, I'm to a take Nigeria, for example. They have manufacturers in, I mean, in Nigeria. If you go to um, the states of Abia, Abba, uh, no, Abia, that's the name of the state, right? The capital is, is Abba. It's a manufacturing hub of, of Nigeria. And you have people over there, say, making shoes and they sell into Italy. Next, you know, they have an Italy name from it. And the, 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 brands, the brand says made in Italy, but it's actually made in the state of Abia. You could go there right now and go to the, the places where they're making these things. They got rice mills and all different types of stuff that, that they make. They make, um, uh, they got this um, brother over there. He manufacturing, he manufacture, um, military vehicles right and he, he sells some to bulgaria and stuff like that the, uh, and other parts of, of africa they have innocent car innocent car that's manufacturing in um um in in Newe, it's a, a place called Newe in anabaris um state right yeah, manufacturing I'm, I'm cars. Right. there's a lot of different um things going on no it's not a lot we need a lot more right but they are they do have people um, with companies doing manufacturing um, 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 over there. I just wanted to point that out. Right. So when you say manufacturing, and, and I think the mobile is, is, is getting to a point where, you know, maybe I have to slow down. But the point here is invention, right? Taking, taking something from nothing and making it into something, right? I can 99% guarantee you that he imports uh, from innocent motors who make you know who assemble those cars he imports a lot of those parts some of those parts some, yeah some of those parts are imported right. some of them are, right. are made in house but here our cars are imported um parts are imported we import a lot of those stuff from china and different places also right but, but not africa that's the, that's the point that i'm making so as a people we have to be inventors and i mean most of the things that we use today has already been invented most people say oh everything you use has been invented by a black person and all of that fine i take it but inventions are not complete. Most invention has been refined and, and, and made better. And most of the products that you're well, using how you now know, how are, you know, are the, how you know How you know it wasn't black people that made it, refined it, and made it better? Okay, if, if it is, let yeah, me know, a, but a good, I don't a know. Good, a good example what do you mean of that, a, a good example of the refining, right? And, hey, if you watch, hey, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, like, hit share, the like the notification button. bell. But a good example of that, and Dinah can speak to this, is Lewis Latimer. He was the one, it wasn't Tom uh, Edison Bell. The Tom Lewis Latimer was the one who was able to get the light bulb. The and you're fine. Good seconds. example. Good yeah. example. Right. So these, we, these, we've we been doing these things. We just aren't taught these things when we go to school. Exactly. A good example is if you learn in math, let me turn my camera on. In math, you learn about A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What is that, Brother Ellis? It's Pythagoras. called what? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. yeah However, but it's not. If, it's it's if, actually. I Right, because if you read the writings of Pythagoras, he said he learned this mathematical equation from black people in ancient Egypt. Exactly. Simple right? as so that. If we're talking about, once again, goes back to Dr. Carter G. Woodson, miseducation. So we're exactly. talking about white people are the purveyors and progenitors. All these, they're these not. Good they're things, not. When the reality is they're not. They're not. So, they're so not. Lumumba, a, a, a quick question, all right? And that's that's the thing here. If you were, if you wanted to learn uh, uh, algebra, can you go to Egypt right now and learn algebra from a, a black uh, Egyptian? I haven't been to Egypt, so I couldn't tell you that. Right. 
I don't so know. I'm, the knowledge that was quote unquote invented by black people has not been retained by black people. Well, I, 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 stop, stop. Have oh, you been what are you talking about, man? Oh, yeah, Come on, I'll just give you an example. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, I like to be honest, oh, right? You, you, you oh, mentioned oh, algebra. You can't over time. Go ahead, you can't, Have you been to Egypt? No, I haven't. Okay, so you can't you can't say that they could somebody a black person they couldn't teach you that if you never been there. No, I, I asked the question. I'm I'm not. I wasn't saying that I was there, and I I, I no, seen you, it. I'm, I'm asking the question. You, know, you just stated, and somebody right. help me out. You just stated. Well, see, the issue is black people created this knowledge, but they haven't. And white people refined. That's what you just stated. Right. And when I and so, yes, you're talking. We were talking about Egypt. The second issue is that white people didn't refine anything; they just claimed it. Because so that, that's, I, I, that's, I, that's, I, that's my point. I, I so if you I, hold on, I'll give you another example. Um, if anyone is familiar with the space race between the United States and the USSR, the Soviet Union in the sixties yes. and seventies, it of was course. black women mathematicians that, that were able yes. to what, have them send those rockets up to space, yes. space to the moon. Yes, right. When we talk about the super soaker, right? I've actually met the brother who created the super soaker, even though the, and the, and he sued but the, the the company and he won like. Damn near three, four, and five million dollars. Right? Lonnie Smith, Lonnie Smith, right? Well, Lonnie Smith. I actually met him, picked him up in the airport because he came to Wright State for Black History Month celebration. Right. So once again, they ain't perfecting nothing. We talk about the first person to, to uh, successfully split Siamese twins, a black man, the first person to successfully form perform open heart surgery, a black, black man. man. What the French toast are you talking about? You've drunk the Kool-Aid. No, yep. the point I the point I was making was. You said that this, he brought up the you brought up that equation uh, with the ace or whatever you're saying, right? And you said he got it from yeah. black Egyptians, and that's what I'm saying. Yes. Are we did we retain it? Because even today in Egypt, if you say Egyptians are black, that the, the Egyptians there would well, tell well, you well, no, well, they're well, not. Well, so stop. So the, it, it's well, stop, called colonization stop, and slavery. Stop. One, once again, you're conflating a number of issues. The people who are in Egypt today are the descendants of Arab invaders. Okay. Fine. So, so the point is, we didn't retain that that Once that map that map as black people. We don't we didn't Once we don't again, have it. Stop! Stop! Of course, you retain you start, it. You start, you stop! Hold on, because you're starting to piss me off. Okay, retaining mathematics has nothing to do with being conquered by somebody militarily. Those are two. The, those two things have nothing to do with each other. Exactly. Nothing whatsoever. Being a mathematician and being to keep somebody from invading your country and taking over and killing everyone off has nothing to do with each other. So I'm tired of you being disingenuous with the arguments you're making. This is the last time I'm going to tell you, I'm going to kick you up out of here. What you're doing is, 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 is you we know, it's a form of intellectual bully. You know, because if I have a different perspective and you disagree no, you with that. Disingenuous brother, brother Elvis. Fuck up out of here. Brother Elvis, please. I, I beg you. As the Nigerian says, <laughs> I beg. I beg. Like I, I, like, like um, I said, I'm, this, this is who I am in person. But, but, but he, he's always like this. I, mean, I, I don't know the guy. But this is who I am. Like but, but here's the issue. This is I'm not a YouTube. Let me let's make this. I'm not a YouTube tough guy. I'm mm -hmm. like this in real life. In real life, I'm like this. You start talking that dumb shit. I tell me, shut the fuck up. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Br bro brother, 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 Elvis, please, please. He's done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I, and I'm good. big and strong He's enough. Good. And I'm big and strong enough that can't nobody punk me. That's a reality. Yeah, but you know, you know, brother, brother, um, Lulumbo, People have to understand when you when you um finally you know reach your reach your zenith. After after you used to love Batman and 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 Robin and all and all the, and all those stuff like that. Of course, we thought at one time these white people did everything because that that's what was forced into us. We didn't know any better. But when you when you start learning, you have to learn and accept say, accept what you learn. That's what I understand uh, understand these these people. You know. I, I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's 2024. Come on, black people, man. Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just the miseducation you know? machine. That's all. That's all it, it is. So. Yeah, but 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 it's 2024. <laughs> when are we gonna stop this? That's what I'm I, saying. I when are we gonna stop, from, brother? But like I said, it's just uh, I don't allow that type of dumb shit on, on my on my channel. Like if we would yeah, have serious uh, conversation at school. But one thing I don't allow is people to conflate an issue. That that would be like me. I'm gonna try to use an example. Um. That would be like me. Um, so let's say we were talking about um, the Haitian Revolution. 
Right. Right. And then I say, well, black people, we can't do, we don't know how to run a country because look at Haiti. And as Donna stated, I'm omitting all of the facts that took place that led to Haiti being the condition that is in. Right. Right. I'm being disingenuous. Right. And I, I don't, I don't even allow my children to be disingenuous. So I think there's no way I'm allowed an, an adult to come on my platform and be disingenuous. I just, that's right. just the way I move, I move or live my life. I mean, what you said was so insulting. The white people refine it. What do you mean by they, they refine well, it? This is what? someone who's drunk. To, like, and like I stated, I don't allow anyone to come on my platform. I know this is a dual broadcast, but I don't allow people to come on my platform and pedestalize you know. any other racial ethnic group. Now, I don't allow people just to, you know, disavow and speak and dehumanize other people. Right, exactly. Right? Dehumanize. But I don't allow anyone to come on a black, my, a black empowerment platform, Lumumba Speaks, where we believe we could gain a competitive advantage by mm. always betting on black. And then it's talk about other people or this, that, and the third, and all of the above with a big body being rolling on doves. Don't work here. Like, mm -hmm. if we had a show on hip hop, and you said Eminem was the greatest MC ever. Out of all the great black artists, like Stephen A. Smith just said, get the French toast up out of here. You have no self -esteem. Right, it, it, exactly. That's why I came up, that's why I asked the question, name one invention or uh, um or music that black people benefit from white. No, because you can't say what Mozart wrote. No, he did not. And, like, and, and, very, very, and very quickly, I'm cool with people having a, a, a different opinion. Dianus is mm. voting for Trump. Dianus, you are, like we cool. I'm cool on that. Mm. Let me make this clear. I don't right. have Trump a 2024. Right. You see, <laughs> I don't have a problem, and I don't know who I'm voting for yet. But I'm, to be honest, I'm, vo I'm voting for Trump. But I don't have a problem with that. But you can't kiss it up here and just be, you know, being disingenuous. You're conflating facts, so on and so forth. Right. Right. You could vote for Trump. You could make the. We could, I'm gonna do a show with Donald on why he's voting for Trump. <laughs> right. I, you, you don't have to agree with me, but you do have to provide factual information. Right. You see what right. I'm saying? There are people on this broadcast who are Christians. I'm an atheist. Me right? too. There are people on this, Right, Muslim, etc. I have people on my show who were Buddhist before. Cool. Yeah. You don't <laughs> gotta agree with me. Just make sure what you're saying is it's factual. Correct. Exactly. That's, That's my all. point. That's my point. When you talk about refined, man, my blood, I'm like, is this guy crazy? It was what about the Nigerian um scientist that refined the, the, the internet and made it faster? I forgot his name. I forgot his name, but but that's he's all, the one that's, who, that's all I'm saying. Just, just, right. just, just, just be factual. And like, right. and, and don't omit the facts. Like, that's one of the things I talked about with the Bible, and we're not about to get back into that, but, you know, the omission of African history, extremely problematic, right? So when we mm. had that conversation, we didn't have the whole conversation, context matters, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Brother Lewis, go right ahead. You've been waiting patiently. Yeah, that guy right there was, I don't know what was going on with him because it seemed like he was just emotional about not wanting something that a lot of things did come from black folks. Now, for me, everything, I'm not gonna say that from black people. Everything we didn't create everything, but right. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, that's what I'm going on. It's like not every white, not every white people didn't invent everything either. Exactly. Some some things were invented by white I mean, folks. But, yeah, the Chinese invented, invented the Chinese invented gunpowder. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I mean, no, I know. I know. With us, we want to sit around and say that we came up with the guns. We did not. No. That was the story about the Chinese and everything else. Right, but yeah, but he was like talking about refining and all that sort of stuff. Like, dude, they didn't find anything. They took a lot of stuff from us, Thank sold you. it, made money <laughs> off of it, yeah. sold it from us. We didn't get anything from it. So I was like, "What is this dude talking about?" And right. it makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. uh, hey, Lamumba, I have to drop off, man. But um, I appreciate you know the stream and appreciate y'all and. Have fun. Uh, yeah, we, we probably go for about another 20 minutes and then we're going to um, call, call it a night. Um, All right, so, cool. yeah, we'll keep going because we we'll probably go to about 9.30 and then we, we're going to uh, call it a night. All right, for sure. All right, y'all. Peace. So somebody peace, asked peace. me, uh, why are you an atheist? Uh, we'll do a show on it. We'll do a show on why why I'm an atheist. Cause I don't oh, that's, a, that's an easy answer, boy. You don't have right. to do a show. That's a, that's an easy answer. Hey, well, we know we trying to we trying to build content, brother. So we go we go we go put okay, that yeah. we go put a pen in there. So yeah, that's that's yeah. easy, boy. That's easy. You mean that's so easy, I'm, like unbelievable. I'm sorry. You being atheist? I'm saying you being atheist. I don't have an issue with that. 
You said my brother? Right, right, but and I, I'm the same way. Like, if I have brothers who are Muslim, Christian, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know what I mean. I got a brother who's a Muslim who came to me, came to me and said, "I want you to be my mentor." Mm -hmm. Right. So once again, it's just when people start. For example, I was having a conversation uh, about two weeks ago about the LGBTQ community, right? And so I was telling them from a historical standpoint in Af traditional African culture. Um, homosexuality was not, it was viewed as a pejorative, but people who engaged in that behavior were not criminalized or discriminated against. But we also find that there was no examples of people engaging in that behavior. They never engaged in lifelong relationships with the same sex or gender, right? It was typically in the absence of the opposite sex or gender that people engaged in these type of relationships. So, but I said, the issue I have with that community is the fact that they are now, they are now, um, misappropriating, falsifying African culture to promote their own ideological worldview. I said, this is something that white supremacists and Arab nationalists did. Right? Yep. That's, said, that's anybody exactly. who can falsify exactly. my history, that, that, that's not somebody I can rock with. That's someone that I view as an enemy of our people. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So once again, I said, I don't give a damn what you do with who you do it with, as long as the person's above over 18, right? But when you start falsifying my history, now you're an enemy of African people. I can't fuck with you. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So once again, it comes down to facts. I, I I have an issue with people falsifying information, you know, because we know that one of the one of the biggest issues that we have is we are being oftentimes what manipulated into working against our own best interests, and to yep. work against our own best interests, it benefits what the power structure. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue there. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I take that very, very serious. And then we talk about one of the key goals for us to even work to what better our community, right? Uh, Lamuva sounds gay, very infeminate, et cetera, et cetera. Then get the fuck off my platform then. That's, 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 that's that dumb shit I was talking about. I said that at the beginning of the platform. You attack the argument, not the person, right? Because I'm quite sure if the person was talking, it was in my face today, they wouldn't be saying that shit. See what I'm talking about? That's that fuck boy shit. You know what I mean? I wasn't uh -huh. always Lamuva. I'm from the real hood, not the rap hood, right? If you if you got an issue with this, you can ask Donna for my number. And when I get about this brace, we can meet up in the boxing gym and get that work in. I'll show you how infeminate I am. That's my word. That's that stupid shit. I'm a so, scholar, but now you're trying to bring another part out of me. You know what I'm saying? You see, you see the, the room, but these people are not in, in the best interest of moving black people forward. And that's, that's the problem. Facts. You know? Simple yeah, Brandon, Brandon say I'm too sensitive. Brandon didn't want that smoke either. He yeah. didn't want that smoke eat. I, I called this man and said, let's get this work. And he and then he started making all these excuses. Someone I was afraid of him. Fuck out of here with that fuck boy shit, man. Keep your ass in count. Oh, Brandon. Can I say something? Like I said, I, I called the yeah. man. I called him and said, let's get it in. You was talking reckless on down the show. Let's get it in. Let's get some rounds in. He, he didn't want that yeah, smoke. Like I, said, yeah, I'm, 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 like I said, I'm I'm really about that life. Really about Brian, like I'm from the Brian, real hood, not the rap hood. But anyway, Brian, just stay focused on the topic at hand, okay? Brian, Brian, Brandon don't like black people. I know. So good. once again, he don't like black people at all. So like I said, I said okay, the fact he, that they're like in African history, this person therefore can't be a friend or an ally of African people. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I mean? So Brian, that's, I don't, that's I don't know why Brandon go to, to. Go, to, go to Kenya. I, I I really don't know why. He he don't like black. Just stay over here, Brandon. Just do yourself a favor. It's, it's okay. I still love you. My problem with Brandon is uh, he claims that he's trying to help out black folks or saying like he's trying to say that we're making too, too many excuses about talking about racism all the time. We don't talk about what black folks are doing to other black folks, that type of stuff with him. And he's sitting there in Kenya trying to talk about that while well, we don't not going to Africa, but his mindset is somewhat in the same way as FBA since, but you know, he loves to bash FBA, but his mindset is a little bit like the FBA. I'm not saying like a whole lot like FBA, but it's a little bit like right. that. So yeah, we, we're going to get back. We're going to get back to the subject though. Um, but like I said, the major issue that we find here um, is what? Unfortunately, once again, as I mentioned with Dr. Ali Missouri's work, this negative indoctrination caused Neg black people to hate where they come from. Yeah. That, that's just that's just the reality. Un it's unbelievable yeah. that in 2020. Uh, that's, that's the root of black that. people trying to disidentify with being African and seeking to what identify as something other than African. 
that's the basis of it. Mm -hmm. But but I, I boy, I, I'm so surprised that we're still going through this now today. It, it it's it's incredible to me. Well, I mean, I, but I think if you think about it, you're from Jamaica, brother Lewis. Where are you from? I was born and raised in the United States. I'm from I'm from the United States. I'm African American. Okay. Um. um and, and let me, but brother Bronze, where are you from? I'm from the Cape Verde Islands. Okay. Yeah, Cape Verde. So once again, we talk about these issues. I, I talk about anti-blackness. It being ubiquitous, right? I'm the president. Nature. These issues are global, and part of it is due to what the education that our children receive. That, uh, in Gugi Wathiango, his book Decolonizing African African Mind, I actually have above me here. He talks about the cultural bomb that African people face, not just in America, but also in the Caribbean, and in the United States, and even in Europe. Right to where we're taught that we 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 receive an education that is what psychologically harmful to an African child psyche. The right. Too. The continent too, brother. Yeah, yeah. The right. yes, I, 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 the the continent continent too. So this is the issue why it's still prevalent. And this is why Malcolm said only a fool will allow their enemy to what educate their children. So um, so this is part of the issue because part of the education we see is one is to teach you the skills to be what? Uh, be able to be successful in the society or the world that you live in. But the second is to teach you uh, cultural competence and pride in who you are. And so the education that we receive typically doesn't allow children to what? Do that. Our children to do that. So as a result, they become, you know, indoctrinated with these anti-African views. Fortunately for my children, that wasn't the case because I raised them up in an African center household that taught them to be proud of who they were. Exactly. That's what I yeah. did, too. Yeah. But th this is this is a major issue. And so I would push everyone. A good example would be my daughter when she was in private school. She's always been in private school. Um the, at the private school, they had they had like a bullshit. They they had a BS Black History celebration, and what ended up taking place was uh, I went to the director of the school, a white woman, and said, "Hey, this is unacceptable." I said, "This is disrespectful to African people who we resisted from antiquity to today." And the only thing we accomplished was one man, one quote, and a, a black woman sat down on a bus. She said, "Well, we don't have anyone here." I said, "As my mentor taught me, Dr. Sway, who's from Liberia, he said, whenever you put you talk or you raise an issue, you better be able to propose a solution." So I said, "I can provide a solution. I will. I will do the Black History Celebration next year. In fact, I'm going to be the president of the Parent Teacher Association. And since the school is 98.7 percent African American, we're going to make sure that every time, every every month when we have a family night event, it's going to be African centered." See, so I, I didn't just talk that talk. I walked that walk. You, 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 feel, you feel what I'm saying here? So, but I was able to do that because the education, you know, my, my college education allowed me to do so, right? And so when we had a Black History Month, we focused on African cultural attention. We talked about Black women in the Civil Rights Black Power Movement. We talked about the Maroons. We talked about uh, African civilizations on the continent. No one understanding that your history did not start on a plantation, right? We focused on... Um, Dr. Dr. Carter G. Wilson that created Black History Week, which later became Black History Month. And why and, and that this was important because the first books that he wrote was focused on the African black ground so that black people knew they had a history and culture to be proud of before they were brought here. Right? Man, it was a, it, the kids went, they they loved it. Loved it. Loved it. But right? um brother Luma, this is what my wife did. This is what we had to do. Um, when the kids was growing up, um, we said, okay, this is what actually happened, right? But this is what you have to do to pass your test and pass your class. So mm -hmm. this is actual, this is what you need to pass the class. That's what we sort of what we did. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You know? Yeah. So, so this, this is what we, what we did. So as far when it comes to history, we taught them our history at home and said, this is this is actual truth, right? right? But this is what you have to do to pass the class. And that's how they grew up. I mean, now they're grown adults now and everything like that. But this is what we did to get them through public school and so forth and so on. We end up having to put our daughter in private school because she was too smart for the public school. And as a matter of fact, the teacher told us, listen, you have to get Denita out of my class because she's disturbing the class. She's mm. too far ahead. And that's when we moved her to- Yeah, I figured, um, I figured, yeah, I figured that that would yeah. happen. I've, I've seen that a lot. Either the child is too far ahead or the school would dumb the child down. Right, exactly. 
Now that's typically what would right. take what would take place. So yeah, to either the child yeah. is too far ahead or they would dumb the child down. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then back in the day, a teacher friend of mine, she got um fired because um she was caught um teaching the um children um true history, true black history. And they um they fired her. And as a matter of fact, when she was teaching the class, she was the only class that the, the her students was high school actually attended one hundred percent. And the principal couldn't believe she got these kids to do it. But she used to close the book, right, and start mm -hmm. teaching her her way. That's how the, the children got interested in actually learning truth, you mm -hmm. know, and stuff like that. And they found out she's not teaching the curriculum. And they fired her. She never they went back to wow. teaching again. Yeah, they fired her. Is she teaching somewhere else now? She quit teaching. She was so dis dis um hearted. At the, she was young. She was about twenty six at the time. At the time, and she quit and went into something else. Right. Mm -hmm. wow. So that's to show brother Elvis what black people go through. You see what I'm right. saying? He don't understand. Right. right. Real quick, if you want to okay. subscribe to my channel, my channel, if you go on YouTube, put in Lumumba Speaks, and you can subscribe to my channel. That's okay, the name of my channel, Lumumba Speaks on YouTube. Okay, uh, I'll do that. Ask the question. So, okay. um, yeah, but yeah, th this is this is the major issue. And I think one of the major issues, of course, is the the school, the educational system, right? Uh, that's why mm -hmm. Malcolm called them what killing fields. Malcolm yeah. called the schools killing fields. Because of and a part of it was based on his own lived experience in school, right? And he said they called him a nigger so much that he thought it was his name. He said they talked about me like I was an animal, like I wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also remember uh, the teacher said that he couldn't. Uh, he he's a teacher said that being a lawyer because he wanted to be a lawyer. Right. A lawyer is not a realistic goal for an word. I don't yep. want to say that they have on your on your platform or anything like that. Right. Yep. But yeah, that's what he said. Yep. said. That's yeah. Exactly what happened. But your hands are very good. So you right. were want to be a carpenter. That's he what said, he, that's Jesus what was a carpenter. We all like you, but you gotta mm -hmm. be realistic. Right. So yep. very quickly before we cut out cut out real deal, you said, but they didn't listen to Elijah. I know you want to have a conversation about Elijah Muhammad. So tap in, brother. Um tap in, tap in, tap in, tap in. Uh, Kaki W. Baron, you said Elijah the Fry, so tap in as well. Want to get you um, in here. I'm going to put the link in the chat once again. Definitely want to get y'all in here. We can finish up by talking about Elijah. Mm -hmm. because one of the things we talk about is you know, we see this movement, this push in a lot of black organizations to have an identity that is uh, other than African, right? The black Asiatic, so on and so forth. You know, Dr. Uh, well, not Dr., but Elijah Muhammad in his book, Message to the Black Man, which I have behind me, he talked about the only civilized people in Africa were Christians and Muslims. So we see this very anti African perspective coming from Elijah Muhammad himself, right? So, uh, Brother Kaki, hope you could tap in. And, hey, Brother Real Deal, you know, I want you to tap in as well and we can close out. Go ahead, Brother, brother you Lewis. You know what I mean about uh... I think about Elijah Muhammad, he was kind of a complex kind of person, you know. And, you know, sometimes we love, I know sometimes we love to bash him for that, for that religion that he didn't ask to be part of, you know. But at the same time, we tend to forget that he actually was the one to lift us up out of our situations. And actually, he was one of the ones that actually told us to do it for self. I mean, for me, that's the only way we want to remember him for what we want to but we want to like oh his personal life which is no problem that he was a human human being like the rest of us well i understand that but you know th th i think it's a lot more um a, a malcolm x for example call him a religious faker right you know uh dr hockey arm at booty who was a mm -hmm. creator of third world press told me before you go off what anyone says go first look at what someone does you know malcolm x talked about that there was a time where Elijah Muhammad had built up enough wealth to create the very nation that he said he wanted to create within the nation. And he, instead of doing that, he actually was just hiring his family members and giving them lucrative, high paying jobs in the nation. Right. Um, another example we could talk about is the Nation of Islam. They had the program for to end economic want. Uh, I had a conversation with one of the ministers of the Nation of Islam. I probably will post this on my YouTube channel because we I actually recorded a phone conversation and they said that, yes, we have this program to end economic want. I said, okay. He said, if you donate a particular amount each each week or each month, 
we could do X, Y, Z with the Nation of Islam's businesses. I said, okay, well, if we are going to provide the, the, um, the, um, what's it called when you provide money for a business, the capital for the business, I said, well, will we receive a quarterly semi-annual or annual dividend based via the, based on the profits of these businesses? He said, no, that's not how it works. He said, I said, so how does it work, brother? He said, well, it, the way that Nation of Islam put, uh, program to end economic want um, happens, the way it works is we, we give the money to Elijah Muhammad and then we have faith that he's going to do the right thing with it. I said, well, that doesn't help anybody but Elijah Muhammad. It doesn't even help the people in the organization. So how is it going to help the black community as a whole? So once again, the devil is in the details. The devil's in the details. Yep. Yeah, I think all this stuff did to him to a certain degree. And I think that's the way we have to look at it with him. But like I said before, he wasn't he wasn't a god, he wasn't a prophet or anything like that. He was a human being. Right. That's the way I look at it. Now you um, can actually you can respect him, don't respect him. It's your choice. And but the other thing is in a lot of it is the teachings as well were, were nonsensical. So I'm about to pull up some of the teachings from the Nation of Islam. Because the one thing that the Nation of Islam does, and I think they do it rather skillfully, is they make sure that they're very careful in terms of the information that they dis that they, they, they disseminate to the what? To the uh, general public. So this is from the book Modern Black Nationalism from Marcus Garvey to Louis Farrakhan, right? And so they have an excerpt from 1965. The Making of the Devil, uh, Know Thyself, 1965, Elijah Muhammad. It is knowledge itself that the so-called Negroes lack that which keeps them from enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. It is God's will and purpose that we shall know ourselves. Therefore, he came himself to teach us the knowledge of self. Who is better of knowing who we are than God himself? He has declared that we are descendants of the Asian black nation of the tribe of Shabazz. The origin of our kinky hair, says Allah, came from one of our dissatisfied scientists. 50,000 years ago, who wanted to make all of us tough and hard in order to endure the life of the jungles of East Asia and to overcome the beast there, but failed to get the others to agree with him. Right? So these are some of the nonsensical teachings of the organization. Right? They made trouble. Uh, we have seen the white race devils in heaven among the righteous, causing trouble, making mischief, causing bloodshed until they were discovered. They made trouble for six months right in heaven, cast the troublemakers out into the worst and poorest part of the planet Earth, they were punished by being deprived of divine guidance for 2,000 years, which brought them almost into the family of wild beasts going upon all fours, right? So as one at the surface level, what we're talking about, the devil's in the details. And if you come in contact with Brothers in the Nation, which I have, because I've been doing work in the community for about 20 years, outside of rhetoric, they typically don't have much to offer. This is a reality. They really don't, yeah, that's... So, you know, then we have to look at, because, so we have to actually look at, right, Afro culture concepts, dumb shit, exploiting African American ignorance. I'm glad you said that, because Malcolm X said the same thing. He said all the things he was teaching us, he had just made up. None of it was true, but we believed him because we didn't know any better. So, how that does that happen? That? Yeah, that, that's like me going out, creating this big old organization where I'm teaching black people pseudo history. Then I, I'm not actually helping nobody. No, it's not opening, but it's just brainwashing everybody, if you ask me. And that's, no, the reason why you left. that's why we need to be critical. Um, um, yeah. Brother, and we, we don't even have to talk I'm about the fact to... that, what, he was committing adultery, right? And then kicked the young ladies out <laughs> of the organization for fornicating, because, you know, one of the rules in the Nation of Islam is if you're not married, you can't have premarital sex, but then they had premarital sex with him, got pregnant, and he kicked them out of the organization for violating the rules that they violated with him. Get the fuck out of dating with that bullshit. Your brother Luma and, Max, your and quick then, And then wouldn't even take care of the damn kids. Wouldn't even take care of the children. Jonathan Miller, come up in, in, the, um, in the queue, and then I'll bring you on just to make sure you're not trolling. Right? Uh, can't see your face, brother. Okay. All right, I see you, no doubt. Right? So, these are things that you need to be critical of. Like, what the French toast? What's going on here? This is why Malcolm X stated, he said, man, this dude is a religious faker. Yep. He said he don't care about black people. He's attacking his own followers. That's right. And a lot of stuff he, he thought was just nonsense. 
And I still got some of them in, in there today. So getting announcements from, of course, from a lot from um, Mr. Faircom because when he brought it, he brought all that stuff back. This same, it's the same thing like from the previous uh, nation as well. And that's why now you see because they're splitting off and making their own factions in Nation of Islam. It's not the same Nation of Islam from the 50s and 60s. And that's how a lot of them are still following still following the same stuff. And they don't realize how that's really brainwashing them and thinking that he's some sort of messenger or God, something like that. Right. And matter of fact, but, what we tend to find, even in, in these schools that they have, because I've met people who've gone to the schools, he said, we didn't get a uh, African centered education, we receive a European centered and Arab centered education. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the Bahamas right. University. Yeah. So it's like, what the fuck? We're still being miseducated. Uh, Brother Luma, can I ask you a quick question? What's going on? Um, do you, what do you think about our, the reason why Malcolm was eliminated? Do you think it's because that? white people and other people were actually starting to listen to him, what he was saying? Do you, do you think so? Well, I, don't, I don't think it had anything to do with white people. One, uh, if you ever studied the book, if you ever read the book, um, The Plot to Kill Malcolm X, what we know based on, you know, uh, released FBI cables from COINTELPRO is that the uh, Edgar, Edgar Hoover had a goal of trying to separate Malcolm from Elijah Muhammad way, way back even in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that, that's one, uh, the other issue is Malcolm. The reason why Malcolm was assassinated, you know, he was assassinated before Dr. King was because Malcolm had the backing of five African nation states to actually support okay. him and going to the United Nations and having the, uh, United States charged for crimes against humanity against African Americans. So that, that was the major issue. What we also find is that Malcolm was politically mature. Uh, pl Malcolm wanted to focus on human rights rather than just focusing on a spiritual issue, right? Because the nation says that this is a spiritual issue. If we if we uh, uh, submit to the will of Allah, then Allah will fight our battles. And what we tend to find is people who join the nation who have the mindset of one Malcolm X or Kyla Muhammad, et cetera, they tend to not last long there. So that, that that's an issue as well. Right, so right. So, that, so that's what I'm saying. So as, as far as the, the practical side, I, I'm, I was thinking, you know, a lot of people w was being to say, you know, wait, well, wait a minute. This man is probably actually right. You, you see what I'm saying? He's probably telling telling the, the truth. Or there's something about him that they like, or or you know, whatever like that. Th that's that's what I'm saying. They, they the religious part they could deal with, but they couldn't deal with that other part of of Malcolm. Right. Absolutely. Do you want me to say Farrakhan claimed that they were wives after Elijah Muhammad's death? Correct. Mm -hmm. And so the issue is in Islam, you can have up to four wives. So if they were his wives, then why would he excommunicate them from the organization? Right? Because in Islam, yeah. you can have four wives. One, two, three, four. Right? So something to consider. Once again, family, if you have, a, if you push back, make sure that you, as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, you attack the argument, not the person. Right? We don't do the juvenile type behavior here on Lumumba Speaks. So if you have an issue, attack the argument that I'm making or the argument some, many of the guests are making. Don't attack the person, okay? Something, just want to make you aware of that. Uh, Brother Miller, you've been waiting patiently. Most certainly. Earlier, I wanted to call in to uh, make the defense for Elijah Muhammad not being a pedophile. So some people in the comments were saying that. Right, and, and a pedophile is someone who has a sexual attraction to prepubescent children. Yes. The young ladies that he slept with were teenagers or young adults. Yeah, that that would automatically exclude him from being the pedophile. Right, absolutely. That, that is absolutely I, I, I just hate it when people say stuff, and they don't even either don't know the meaning. Right. It it, it just it just kind of sounds retarded, and it makes us look bad as people. I, I would agree. Because with we that. our people do it a lot. I would agree. Yeah. But than that, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Long as long as we don't be saying he's a pedophile, right? Yeah, he was not a pedophile, good. and even uh, R. Kelly. You know, we're not talking about R. Kelly. He ain't R. Kelly pedophile. Was not either. a pedophile. I, I, I don't. Where did that come from? Um, I, I think it's just a term <laughs> that most people know because the the term attraction to teenagers or is like epopobilia. It's really hard to pronounce. So, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna see if I can pull it up here. Uh, the pronunciation. Yeah, but. Uh, excuse me, brother. You're saying it wasn't a pedophile. Yeah, that you're absolutely correct. But um, are you saying it was okay 
what he did? Yeah, why not? Okay, all right. I, I hear you. I, mean, I, I don't time, agree with you. I'll be one, one of those people. So why, I, I, I why are you okay you. with him? Um, you, you, do that to my, you do that to my daughter, you are a dead man. Dead man. Well, like, likewise here, I have a daughter as well. Okay. But the question you is, why would you be man. okay with yeah, a 60, yeah. a 60 something year old and, man? And likewise happens, there, I would feel the same. Real quick, real quick. I have a question. Why, why are you okay with a 60, 70 year old man having relations with 18, 19, 20, 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year old young ladies or young girls? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the teenagers, 16, 15, and all that. No, no. I, 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 I would say simply, I'm not necessarily okay with it. Okay. But yeah, as a person who lives in Nigeria, the age of it's consent is 11. Good. Am I really going to go around and start trying to whip everybody ass? <laughs> Well, like I, if like I don't I have said, that bro. mindset, if I don't have that mindset anywhere I went to in Africa that do it, that does it, I'm not gonna bring it back to America. Yeah, that that, that that's yeah. Fine, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna be if you're gonna be authentic, you gotta be that way across the board. I, I and I am that way across. The I'm, board. I'm, I'm that way across the board. I don't. I am. I'm, I don't I'm trust none of them. I don't care who it is. It could yeah. be my yeah. brother. Yeah, and, and let me so let me speak to this. Let me speak to this. And you brought my brother is a pedophile. Okay, thank you. Oh, he's in prison right now. When he told me this, I, I pulled out my gun and almost shot him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Literally. So th this is no cap. This happened a year and a half ago. You see what I'm saying? So, so for me, this isn't a situation I'm consistent across the board with that. Like literally, I pulled out my firearm. He said, "You better get the hell away from me right now." And I told him, "I said I'm I'm going to nail your ass to the cross. I would test. I'm going to testify against you the whole nine." This is my blood brother. We're talking about the guy who protected me growing up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm consistent across the board with this. Literally. Now, just out of curiosity, the, uh, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want y'all to make it a, make a clear statement. What's your definition of a person that's able to give consent to sex? Um, and, why, and why do you come up with the number that you come up with? Well, why don't we come up with any number then? Why don't we come up with any number? The number, the number that's accepted that I that I accept that I, no, you're 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 saying you're saying sex as far as what? Two teenagers having sex, a nineteen and a seventeen or eighteen? What, what are you saying? It's got to be an age because a nineteen and a seventeen year old those are kids to me. I would agree. Okay. Both of them are kids. Even 20 years old. This is a kid to me. Yeah. But our age, absolutely, that's a child. You see? It's a child. Yeah. For me, I'm 40. You see? I'm older than that. I'm, I'm right? 35. It's a child to me. I don't want no But I'm saying, what is, what is your standard? If you, if you were in a country, what is the legal age limit that you would create to say that this sex is consensual with this person? And why would you make it that number me per me personally i would say i would say between 17 and 18 and 18 years old that, why? that's what i'm saying and the reason why i'm uh, and i put more emphasis on 18 right i put more a little bit more emphasis on on 18. Why? Mm -hmm. what, what, what makes you come up with the number 18 18 is a number that's that's that that's accepted by most people you could go into you could you could go fight for your country at 18. The majority of the world, the number is sixteen. Yeah, in some in some states in the United it, States, even 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 in the United States, States, the majority of that number is yeah, sixteen. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You ask me, you ask yeah. me. So when you, you know say I'm saying, the, well, I'm I'm saying, saying that between, when you said the majority of the world accepts it, that's not I, true. I, I, I said the majority of the world accepts the lower number. So why would you come up with something that's different? Where did you get the idea for that number? Dark Dark Miko <laughs> says it should be twenty one and up. So tap in. It, I want to know why you think it should be it, twenty one and up. And the bag seven bag said uh, five states in the United States do not have a age. I in California, someone last I year, a thirteen year old got married to a twenty seven year old. I see. I'm unaware of that. And Wait, I, in I, America, I'm not a fan of that. That, that happens. That happens all the time in America. In, in, in America. Yes, in America. So, so let me, and, and and you accept something like that? What am I supposed to do about it? So you would accept your your daughter marrying at thir uh, twenty seven years old at thirteen? You would accept? You have no problem with that? 
I wouldn't accept it. Okay. All right. A no. real deal. Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just uh I wanted to speak upon the uh Elijah Muhammad uh conversation that you all were having. Go ahead. Oh, what happened? Did he just leave? All right, come, hey, real deal. Come back in. Come back in. I don't know what happened. He might have maybe his phone died or something like that, but he, he could come back in. Uh, Mary Shy says this is a sensitive topic. Uh, we didn't talk about bad teen moms, et cetera, but make, make teen moms. Yeah, teenage mothers is a definite issue. You know, you typically are a child raising a child. Uh, not a fan of that at, at all. Um, but maybe we could do a show on that later. Very sensitive topic. I have a 14-year-old daughter, so there's no way that I want my daughter in a situation like that whatsoever. In fact, I'm very protective of my daughter. Exactly. I don't allow other men to talk to my daughter. Like, I'm serious. Like, my mm -hmm. I, people know, like, hey, don't don't say nothing kind of because he's going to punch you in the face. Like, people is know that, that about me. Brother Lumba, is, is that child ready for responsibility? You are going to be the one who take care of that um, child and the daughter at the same time. Right. Uh, so real deal, you're back. Go right ahead. I don't know what happened. Somehow you you dropped off the call. Yeah, my bad. I got cut off. No, I was just okay. trying to speak on the Elijah Muhammad uh, conversation you all were having. And it seems that, you know, a lot of people pretty much start speaking about his, you know, uh, his adulteries and, you know, him having uh, like what uh, illegitimate children and stuff like that. But like what 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 all y'all speaking about is pretty much the groundwork that Elijah Muhammad laid. You know what I'm saying? Uh bettering his people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the conflict that he had with Malcolm X was that Malcolm X went outside of America and realized that Islam had was a bigger, you know what I'm saying, entity than what Elijah Muhammad was was you know what I'm saying? Showing to that, that, con that conflict was much deeper than that. It, it, it started when he realized that Elijah Muhammad had Ill Ill illegitimate children or children that he just wasn't, you know what I'm saying, claiming like he said. Well, actually, well, if and, I put, if, if, hold on real quick. Uh, if you read Malcolm's autobiography, Malcolm stated that even before he learned that, he was questioning Elijah Muhammad's leadership starting way back in 62, 63, where there was that shooting at the LA mosque. Right when the police killed okay. all those brothers and at, at, at Los Angeles mosque, Malcolm flew flew out and talked about, hey, they're gonna pay for this, they're gonna pay for this, they're gonna pay for this. Because people were saying, well, the Muslims always state an eye for an eye. And Elijah Muhammad called Malcolm and said, No, I lie will fight our battles. And he said that was and he states this in his autobiography. That's the first time I began to question his leadership. So then Malcolm had to go in front of the people. And talk and explain away why they didn't do what they said they was going to do, which is when you put your hands on us, we're going to put our hands on you. He said that was the first yeah. time he began to question his leadership because what he was saying and what he was doing were not mutually exclusive. I think Elijah came to the realization that, you know what I'm saying, they would have, you know what I'm saying, they would have destroyed the uh, nation of Islam if they had a press like they were. He had to do it, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of a passive aggressive approach after a while. They couldn't it it, it couldn't be all physical because me no, and like, I, I understand I understand that. I, and I agree with you there. However, that he's going off what he said they were going to do and what actually happened. That's all. The other issue Malcolm talked about in right. his autobiography was that what? He Elijah Muhammad had got to a point where he had raised enough money to be able to do the things he said he was going to do about creating a nation within a nation. Yeah, Instead I, of I doing that, that, he was, what, hiring family members and giving them high-paying jobs in the nation of Islam. These are things Malcolm X stated in his autobiography. He also stated that Elijah Muhammad was teaching things that were ahistorical. And that when he got with uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, he realized that he was playing on our ignorance and just telling us anything. So, so that, 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 that's what issues. I was speaking on. That, that, in other that's words, a two-bit preacher. What what was happening was they were preaching preaching pro-black and only black in Islam. When Malcolm realized that Islam was a wasn't just a black thing, and that you know, what I'm saying like he said, it was blue-eyed white people that were praying right next to him. It it made them universal. 
Well, but no, but Malcolm also that, stated it, even though, but Malcolm stated in his autobiography, go back and read the last two, three chapters of his autobiography. He said, even though a lot, even though Islam promotes the, the, the oneness of humanity, he says, I know I live in a world in a country that does not. So he says, my perspectives are black, my loyalties are black, and the institutions I want to build are black. So Malcolm said, even though an, an Islam teaches this, he says, I'm still going to be a Pan-Africanist. Oh, right. that's a, brother, are, are you saying that um, Malcolm didn't know that other people in the world are Muslim besides black people? And that's are not you, true, because Malcolm had been to Africa on well, three different I, Right, that's well, what I'm saying. He, that said what, it, that he, said it he said it himself. That he he said it himself on, when he took what about his the Arabs? Said, what about the Arabs? What about the Arabs? Well, he I, what I'm saying is what he came across were the Turks, and he didn't and the Czechs, and he didn't realize. Oh man, these these are the people that in Elijah Muhammad's book that that are said to be the demon, the evil, the white devil, as to say. What and when he opened it, it's, it's what about it's the Arabs? But Malcolm, no, Malcolm know that all, Arabs, Arabs are Muslims. I'm saying that he, Malcolm he, he was he also aware that. of the I mean, history. Malcolm was also aware of the history of anti-blackness in Islam and Arabic culture. Have, let me right. ask you this. Hold on. Real, 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 hold on, real quick, real quick, real deal. Mm -hmm. Have you read a lot? Have you read Malcolm X's autobiography? No, I'm not going. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Nope. Okay. The one by Alan so I, I, What you need to do, brother, is right. I'm not going to tell you to read the whole biography because it, it takes forever to read. Read the last three chapters of his autobiography, okay. and, and you will find that everything I'm saying is true. Like he never, like he was a, he became a Pan Africanist, right? He he wasn't like oh, oh whoa, all the world come together. I mean, he wasn't on that, right? He said that Elijah Muhammad was a religious faker. He said that he didn't actually believe in the things that he was teaching. He gave a new, numerous examples why he felt that way, right? So it, 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 it but it's it, it didn't even and it didn't even start with the issue of what him having those children. That was a major issue, right? Well, I, I, I thought it was, it was just it was, a, I thought it was a, I don't mean to cut you off, sir. I, 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 th I thought it was just a conflict of the belief. I think, you know what I'm no, saying? No, like no, I say, no, sometimes. No, Ma Ma Malcolm was becoming person. more, Malcolm was becoming more political. Okay. And Elijah Muhammad was saying, no, we need to stay focused on the spiritual. Malcolm had become thought, a revolutionary Pan-African nationalist. Right. Okay. Malcolm said we need to be That's fighting it. right for, for our people, not just talking and giving speeches. He Malcolm was like, no, we need to be actually on the front lines fighting. Right. As I say, read the last few chapters of his autobiography. He goes in. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't it, the basis of it was not simply religious. It was political in nature. OK. Yeah. That's why I said that's just why I kind of Muhammad like black people who are actually serious about that life. And not wouldn't you just be a dogmatic Muslim, right? They don't last in the nation. Yeah, I, yeah, I, like I, I met Khalid. I, I love Khalid Muhammad. Muhammad. Brother Lewis, go ahead. Yeah, uh, to the guys, I'm going to say that, okay, you have to realize Malcolm was seeing a lot of things that were going on in his life while he was still with the nation of Islam. He also, also realized that he was not he was moving on from the stuff that he he learned from them and also was calling out the stuff calling yeah calling the elijah muhammad a religious faker because he wasn't moving forward to a lot of things that he wanted to move forward to because he wanted him to be stuck on this um muslim spirituality type stuff and also at the same time he um was uh was moving forward out of that and going to something else. And he was a pan Africanist, yeah. Because you know, he was he already had that installed in his in his in his childhood. I, I like a, the the book, yeah. our, our and, and that's a lot of things Elijah Muhammad was doing. They were paying billions of dollars to the clan in the South. I mean, all, all type of crazy stuff was going on. Oh, I mean, they were even inviting white supremacists <laughs> to their to to their Savior's Day uh, meetings. I think with that, and let me push back against that one. That was on that that whole thing was about them trying to separate, have their own separate nation. That whole Coco Clan thing, because a lot of people kind of like. But no, no, no I, I'm, I'm I'm aware of that. But also there was an aspect to where they were seeking to do business with the with the clan, 
And the clan yeah. was simply, and this clan was simply getting, uh, charging them, absorbing them out, amounts of money and doing yeah. very little work and they kept paying them. And the clan was yeah. being extremely disrespectful to the people, to the brothers and the sisters mm -hmm. and, and, and Georgia mm -hmm. and Atlanta in particular. So and they and they just accepted it. So we we see that even though the bravado was one thing, that they still was engaging in a level of racial deference to white people when they actually came in contact with them in person. The other issue, and I know Brother Dilo can gotta talk about this cost don't cultivate. We find this in the nation of Islam, find this with Hebrew Israelites, New Wabians, etc. Why is that they actually they actually they 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 provide all of this militaristic bravado regarding that hey we're going to fight against the oppressors and that so on and so forth, but they tend to what. On the, on the, at the majority of the time, they're violent against the very people that say they try to help and liberate. Yeah, Brother Lumba, you, you, they knew they were, they were um, clan members. They knew that for real. Yes. yes. Oh my God, are you yes. serious? I'm not making this Man. stuff up. Was it, wasn't it the movement like uh, the the third way or the third route or something? No, so it was a situation where they they had established a mosque in Atlanta, and um, they. They there's something happened like they you know they the P brothers had got into it with some some clan members so Elijah Muhammad approved the meeting one of the clan members showed up at, at one of the ministers' house that ran the mosque in Atlanta was like listen um you're gonna be a good boy doing this meeting if not we're gonna I'm gonna have my people come back and blow the house up he was like yes sir we ain't gonna have no problem so long story short they hired some clan members as they that that were attorneys to represent some of the brothers in the nation. They did, but they really just was extorting money from the from from the nation of Islam rather than actually providing an adequate defense for the black men they were representing, and they just kept milking them for money, milking them for money, milking them for money. So, like I said, all of this bravado when you actually went with the with the devils in the details, all that shit was just rhetoric. They were just talking a good game. I've been around people in the nation. When they buy themselves, they straight punks. When they forty deep, then they god body. I've been around this shit my whole life. Uh -huh. like I said, I'm from the real hood, not the rap hood. This is a reality. Yeah. And they tend to only be violent against other black people. When have you seen the person in the nation of Islam be violent against one of the white devils that you're always talking about? Not now. I never seen nope. them in my yeah. entire life. Matter of fact, they matter fact when, when, when black people are victims of extrajudicial violence, they go on, they go on social media and blame other black people. Well, see, yeah, the problem is you want to wear all these Jordans and all these expensive shoes. They ain't got shit to say about the people that actually call that that's murdering us. Okay, exactly. I've never so seen like it. I said, once again, the devil is in the details. They want to attack Reverend Chickenhead, but not the motherfucker who just killed the black boy. Uh -huh. Or the black bit, girl. I'm a bit shocked about what I hear because the N N N NOE uh, people that I know are good people. Uh, actually, people that repatriate to, 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 to Africa. Mm -hmm. Right, and I and I there are some brothers that I know who are in the nation that I think highly of, but that doesn't change the organization. I know some people. I know some people who are Christians that I think highly of. My parents are Christian ministers, by the way, but that doesn't change that the doctrine of the religion is vehemently anti-African, anti-black. Okay, this, this is a reality. So I say the devil's in the details. Lamumba, how do you feel about Farrakhan? He's a charlatan. <laughs> and I, 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 one. It ain't what I feel, it's what I think. Okay. Right? He's a charlatan. I've seen Farrakhan, and I actually used to have this recorded on my channel, where he is in the Mosque Maryam stating that the reason why fathers molest their daughters is because the mothers are overweight. I say, get the French toast out of here, man. Mm. I'm not making this up. This is somebody I'm supposed to take serious? Mm -hmm. This is somebody I'm yeah, supposed to take serious? Hard. This is someone I'm supposed to look up to for guidance? Get the fuck out of here, man. He also said that black is a curse too. He didn't said that too. So how black about black is the black is serious? And you he make said it that black is a curse. There are hair is something I forgot what the first yeah, thing he said. Talk about yeah, we were cursing. That's why uh, our hair is not the um, the texture of our eyebrows. I, I saw that video as well, man. Come on, man. Get the, get the fuck out of here, yeah, man. I, 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 got more self, I got more of a self-respect as an African to, than to follow some bullshit like that. Who, who cursed? God cursed us? That's what he's saying? Well, I mean, I, he didn't say who, but he just said that, that it was a curse. I remember watching the video. So, but, but Brother Lou is saying it's factual because I saw the video as well. And when he mentioned the thing about the I, I know what he's talking about because I saw the video myself. 
Oh boy. Yes, yeah, so like I said, I, I look at in totality. For example, I could be saying I'm a I'm a pan I'm a revolutionary pan African nationalist. But if you find out on the back end that I'm a I'm a, a dope sniffing pedophile that like little boys, and we don't give a fuck about what I'm talking about. You gotta look mm -hmm. at my actions. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't care how many institutions I built. You get a lot of pedophiles that go to third world countries or developing nations, just you be politically correct. And then they 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 building these schools for kids and the whole time they raping the little boys. Yep, they do it right now. Mm -hmm. They do it right now. You got, you got, there was a white dude from Connecticut. He did that shit in Haiti. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about no damn institution. And you out here uh, um, right. manipulating teenage girls to get in the bed with you when you 70 years old? Mm -hmm. Why people are... That's one of the problems with Freak Nasheed, the, the shit that he's doing, where he's trying to get people to believe everything he is and look at his background. And you check his background, he was a pimp. Yeah, he's a pimp. He was like, I'm the only pimp that wrote a book about pimping. The fuck? So you, so what you, what, so what, the, what you were about is what ensnaring our women into what a sexual, sexual slavery. What? And we know the concept of black women being hypersexual was something that was created during the Middle Passage. Well, they justify raping African women during the middle passage by saying, "Well, they're they're Af that but African women. They have a they have a voracious sexual appetite. They want it all the time, so you can't rape them." Get the fuck out of here, yep. man! On the real, on the real. Fuck out of here! You know what I'm saying? Well, that's why I say I have to look at you in totality. Totality. Every a broken clock is right twice a day. Everybody can say some shit that sound good. A lot of people are master organizers, but what is your character like? What is your character like? What do you do behind yeah. closed doors? Did Tariq Nasheed do? He's still currently a pimp, or that was his old life. Uh, 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 uh from what we we followed, and he said that he's not into that anymore. But what I can tell you, and people that know me, who I am on this platform, I'm the exact way in real life. Uh, Tariq is pimping people. He he is pimping. People. I mean, like I'm talking about pimping women. Exploitation part. Well, but but Mufasa. On he, there was a he had a uh, actual he, Tariq Nishi was actually on a one of those late night shows, right? And Conan O'Brien, I think he was on the Conan O'Brien O'Brien show. And on there, he said, "Yeah, I wrote a book about pimping, and I'm the only pimp to write a book about pimping." So this is what he stated on a late night show, which in which he was one of the featured guests. Didn't didn't Michael Moore also have him on on the show as pimp? I, I don't know about that. Yeah, he was acting as a uh, Michael yeah. Moore approached him. I and saw a video of that before. He was acting like a pimp and everything. Yeah, and just the, like a uh, like stereotypical black pimp from the black station movies from back in the day. So just something, just something. I, but I care about a person's character. And one of the things that Don has talked about earlier before he left, we find a lot of people in the so-called conscious community who have things for children. We find this in my hometown of Dayton. There was a couple cats who was always acting like they were this, that, on the third. Then we find out they were trying to. There was a brother who was in the nation who was writing letters to the sixteen-year-old girl who was in high school. He actually went up to a high school and um, was trying to act like he was her dad to sign her out. This is a real issue. Yep, it is a real issue. I don't trust anyone around my with my daughter. Nobody. I'm telling you. Uh, right, that, because uh, that, that's, that's the same part about us. That, that's that where you'll find pedophiles. And here you'll find pedophiles at uh, soccer clubs and uh, and and those those kind of things. I mean, uh, yeah, children are like magnets to them, of course. <clears throat> I think that's the worst crime in history, boy. That, that, that's a, that's a, anything to harming children, you, you, bro. Listen, man. That's the reason why that nature boy did this in jail for what he did. Mess around with uh, young girls. Who? Well, yeah, who that's was another the person. The, the guy um, in Atlanta, in my hometown Atlanta, that's in jail now for what he did. He ran yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, I just heard about that. So he was yeah, messing with young girls too? I, I guess. I mean, I, I, I didn't follow the whole thing, but I just heard about, I mean, it was either girls or young women or something. I'm not sure women in his age group, but yeah. He was doing the very same thing, okay. and that's why he's in prison too. And when I heard his name, I think of Nature Boy. Yeah, he got what, Nature Boy player. Oh, that Nature Boy. Okay, 
<laughs> yeah, he got life. I got a question. Yeah, got one, that yeah. Countries in Africa, for the most part, have the lowest age of the consent in general. Do y'all still believe that our people should go back to uh, to the continent? So, um, what's that question again? I'm sorry. Being that African countries generally have the lowest age of consent, like all throughout all the other continents, do you still believe that our people should embrace the African way of life, considering that that is a part of the African way of life? Well, African, well, um, but when you say when um, you say African way of life, which African, I mean, African way of life are you talking about? The colonized African way of life, because Africa is a hundred percent colonized. We we we, we don't want to. We ain't gonna put everything on white people. We, we they're not colonized in uh, and, and the things that they do and everything that they've done. Um, um, we, we, we do. We gotta have some kind of self accountability. Yeah, but, that, but that's everything. what I'm don't saying. Which up. one? Because oh, the, the the Africa oh, I know, the Africans I know is a hundred percent colonized. Uh, we 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 have to be uh, serious. Also, uh, you know, when you when you when you're defending and and and. When you're defend, defending your nation, you know this. This uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, where, where do you got to get, get that from? It's just, it's just your defense of, of, uh, of the nation of Islam. I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not, not a member of the nation of Islam. I'm yeah. a certified Christian, and still. Oh yeah, uh, I, I would say this still. much. Um, there was a time many years ago where I dated a sister from Sudan, and she shared with me these type, of, these type of issues. So I would say that. Um, and the sister, I think Sister Muhammad says the base. We can embrace Africa without accepting the negatives. And we know culture is fluid, why right? culture is not static. And so we could change those aspects of the culture. There's an aspect of, of our culture to where, um, and this is a colorful example, being intimate with 12-year-old girls is acceptable, then that's something we can change. We can say, hey, this is not a part of our culture that we want to uh, accept or think is positive or think is right. And so we can organically change those things. I agree with you, Lamumba. But yeah. the only thing I question is because earlier I was asking about what y'all thought about age of consent and what age would you put it. I was expecting, and I got what I expected for the most part, age of 18, somewhere in that number. Uh, a pretty westernized viewpoint. Does that mean that you're taking your westernized viewpoint over there to Africa and saying, we want you guys to change and become you know what, like brother, this? That's, that's a great question. I go like, that, that is a great question. Because, it, I mean, we're doing that. What's next? So, I mean, we so let me ask. Let me ask something. Um, um, which are you? You have a, a specific country or anything like that? Nigeria, Benin City. Okay, Nigeria, Benin City. What is it? What is the accepting age in Nigeria? Eleven. Completely against it, but it's eleven. Lower, lower my um, what the first toast. Um. So let me. So let me ask something. Um. 11 years old. Uh, Benin. Benin is mostly Christians or Muslims? Christian. And they they accept at 11 years old. It's the culture. So, but, hey, brother, brother Shabazz says I that mean, age, the thing I is. 11. Brother Shabazz, can you tap in? Uh, tap, in tap in, Shabazz. Because he's saying that that's not the case. Are you sure about that, bro? I've never seen that before. I, I know a, uh, I know a lot of Africans. I grew up with Africans in in New York. They never you said grew, nothing you grew like with that. Africans in New York. In New York. Well, we're, we're talking about actually being on the continent. Here. No, I know, yeah. I know what you, I know what you're saying. Then I know let what me you're saying. And let me speak. Uh, then let me share my uh, uh, personal uh, experience. So, so uh, I, I frequent uh, this village. Uh, I, I have a brother from another mother uh, uh, in the north of uh, Senegal, and uh, and I visit. Uh, I frequent it uh, now and then. And there was this. Uh, there was this. This. Yeah. I mean, she had. Uh, she has everything that uh, that you would uh, want to see uh, in a in a woman. Good looking. Uh, all the bubbles uh, in the right place and the right size. And she, was, bubbles, okay. <laughs> she and she was uh and she 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 had uh she had something for me you know or, or she wanted uh, something from me and when i wasn't present she would uh, ask about me etc cetera, etc cetera. and so uh so i'm i'm i'm, I'm like okay uh, good looking uh, young uh, young girl right uh uh but 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 she was 12 and 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 when 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 that when that came 
came to surface, when her age came to surface, everybody was was like, oh no, no, she's too young. And yeah, of course, me too. And uh, and and it's immediately over. But the, I mean, twelve was too young. Even even how she looked or whatever, you know. Uh, I, I bet, I bet, I bet, physically. She 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 could do something, you know. She could she could fool anybody. She could fool any anyone on the panel that that she was like uh, twenty three or something like that, right? But twelve was too young in the culture. Uh, for me, the West the Western minded uh, 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 African twelve was too young. So so I'm I'm you, you know every everybody just just th th says says things about Africa. You know, you can you you can you can pull uh, anything out of your ass and say and say it happens in Africa, and I'm I'm you know I don't like it. So hold on, real quick, Mr. Sandman says the age of consent is 18 as established by the Child's Right of Act, Child's Rights Act of 2003. Um, I just did a Google search and I do see it says uh, the lowest age of consent is in Nigeria, age 11. So there seems to be some conflicting information here. The biggest conflicted thing is that. In Nigeria, and this is true around all, a lot of parts of Africa, there's this age that the government says, right? But everything else is practiced differently. And, and let me ask something. Are you talking about all of the different ethnic groups? The Yorubas, the, um, the, the Igbos, and all the different ethnic groups? All of them. And they, 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 accept, they accept 11 years old? The, what I'm saying is, they don't actually, Do they actually follow, follow a particular through? standard. But, so, but, uh, but, but what I'm uh, saying, do they follow it through? Do, is that the is that a norm? Literally a norm. One hundred percent a norm. So we might have to do a show on this. Okay, it, so, you know, and I would here. encourage it because the no, only okay. thing that the only thing that that bothered me about this is that we always encourage people to come to Africa, but. Are you coming with a westernized mindset? Because earlier, brother uh, Ellis, you said the the common number for age of consent was eighteen, somewhere down that line. That's what I in, would expect. In the majority of the 18. world, is sixteen. No, I I would I, I no. I said I. You asked I. Who okay. what would I expect yeah. between seventeen and eighteen? That's what that's what I would accept. That's that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I also have eighteen, nineteen. I mean, actually, for me, you I see, would accept 20. And, 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 anybody that, that accepts 11, 12, 13 should be, should be shot. Because that, that's, that's, that's the whole I feel about it. You know, I agree with you. But 11, 12, 13. I was just no. curious because oh, uh, we were talking about Elijah Muhammad and 11, the whole pedophilia mm -hmm. thing. Hey, I'm getting yeah, I understand. Feedback. Somebody, okay. I am to hold on. Okay. Well, boy, I'm, I'm gonna find out more. Cause I'll be there in August. You coming to Nigeria? I'll be in Nigeria in August. Yeah, slide through. Okay. I think you love the country. Mm -hmm. I know I love it. Listen, uh, uh, that's, where, that's where my ancestors are from. As far as food, uh, jollof rice with suya on top. In that little tomato sauce that they usually put on other things. <laughs> that shit is the bomb. Try that. Yeah, I'm gonna try everything. I'm gonna try everything, bro. I certainly am. But I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be in, I'll be in Europa land and all those places. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna find out. Brother Mufasa, hey, if I ever went there, I might find out myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna find out. Did they accept it? Okay, fine. I'm not gonna accept it. And I'm gonna tell them that. Uh, what I was trying to say was um um that was the thing what well because you know you have a lot of like genital mutilation going on on the cons as well too. And I think that was the one thing that Tom Sankara was trying to change. Why he became when he became when he got into power in the eighties. In Burkina Faso, he was on mm -hmm. a chain. He changed a lot of that and put women in positions, and he and he saw forced marriages as well too. So if he did that back in the and he was only he only became he was only there for four years, right? Straight. In the 80s, right. But that's an and example of what organically mm -hmm. moving the culture forward. 
That's a perfect example. If he did that back in the 80s and he was there for four years, what makes you think they can't do that today? Uh, the, the, my baby mom is, um, is, um, circumcised. Let me, let me call it circumcised. And, and it's, uh, it's culture in, uh, with her people. And, uh, it was her mother that made, made it, made a point out of it, uh, that, that the daughters were, 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 yeah, cut. That, 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 that came, that came from the Arabs. That's where that came from. Well, no, we, we do find historical examples of female genital mutilation taking place independent of Islamic and Arab influence in Africa. Exactly. Well, uh, like but, we actually, what, I, what I understood, what I understood is they take a, they take a, some, 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 they, they take a female piece off of the males and they take a male piece off of the, off of the females. That's what I, what I somewhat understand. Is now, I, I agree with Brother Baron. We need to protect the children. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. One hundred percent. When it, I think this is a great point. When all is said and done, period, we need to be looking to protect children. Period. 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 Yep. At the same time, I would say that. Same point, period. One of the main things that I really yeah. hate about Nigeria, I don't really try my best not to express my dislikes about the country, because it kind of feels like I'm being like I don't know, hella like European or white supremacists about a whole lot of shit. But the way that they treat females, especially like my sister-in-law, she goes to school. They gotta, they make the girls shave their hair completely bald, and then after that, you get mad at the girl for wearing wigs and all kinds of shit. It's just like a whole lot of shit that they do here is weird as hell. And I, and so I'm let me ask something. It. The reason why they, because I think they do it in Ghana too, um, is to. Is to at least this is what I, I I I've read. I'm not sure, but it's to um dissuade them from you know worry about material stuff them all uh, um all the time. It, it, it's could this be be true? I have to worry yeah, that, about hearing. Working. It's not working. That don't work. But but that was the plan, right? Wasn't that it? I mean that's that's what I heard. But for the most part, I see. Unfortunately, I see the future of. Nigeria in a lot of ways being ratchet as hell. Right now, the, these females literally copy American females. They're on TikTok being half naked. Maybe single mothers are becoming a, a real normal thing out here now, mm -hmm. like badly. So, I, I mean, I, well, when, I mean, listen, man, they're, they're Christians. Or, or the other half is. is, is it don't make a difference if it's Muslim. You know? It's the same thing. You know that's but that's that that's what I'm saying. They they I mean, they got white Jesus statue and paintings all over the place. I mean, they hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's one thing if you're a Christian, but you um. To me, I I my mom is a is a a, a minister, and um I love my mom right, but um to me religion is very dangerous, and I tell that all uh, um um all the time. Yeah, you you see right. you see the the whole uh, uniform in Senegal too, but but uh, but my impression is that they see it as uh, as chic or as uh, you know as as, um, uh, as official uh, uh, attire for for parties and that's and and, and uh, but it's it's it the the behavior doesn't match uh, uh, the behavior of uh, of uh, of females in the West. So 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 they 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 copy from TV. Yes, they they copy from the West. But but not 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 the the behavior and and another thing in in Senegal in Senegal women are holy, you you even raising even raising your voice to a woman uh, gives you um, lowers you in status. Let me put it that way. So different area, different um, cultures. Nigeria have a, Nigeria have a, they, they have the the most potential, but. Um, Man, that country should be so far now, but the thinking of the people from what I've been observing um, so far is, is unbelievable. But that country should be way further than, than it is right now. Way further. Yeah, yeah I've I spent some time in Nigeria. I agree with, um, with his point on the West, Western influence. 
it's a lot of Western influence uh, in Nigeria, you know, in the southern area. Not, not I wouldn't say with the the Muslims. Yeah, but, yeah, but in in the southern area area, I would agree with that. The influence starts dropping off once you pass the Buja. And then I, yeah. I haven't I haven't seen the single uh, I I haven't seen any um, anything that would say single motherhood is normalized. When I was there, it was still very much uh, demonized. Like uh, I remember I was talking to someone and her eyes started to water when she admitted to me that she was a single mother because it's so people are so against it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. I just I didn't see that. I seen it still being against. But I would say that I'd have heard that, you know, say, for instance, a girl would have a single mother. She pass it off to the auntie or the mother or something and they just cover it up. You know, they got this thing happen. called baby factors that they actually will sell the baby. Yeah. Yep. They'll yeah, go, I've they'll seen go that. To the baby factory. I, I've seen that. Yeah, they'll go and they'll pretty much stay there. You know what I mean? So they'll, they, you know, mm -hmm. no one will really see what happened, and then they give the baby. A, I still don't understand what they do with these babies, though, man. Yeah, they 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 sell. I've Sometimes seen, they sell them, and people raise them in to be the slaves in another country. Uh, no, or are, are other there? Times. Are in Nigeria? Or in another town, Nigeria? That what about when the family member sold them? Uh, another sometimes you got that weird people too. that do sacrifices with the damn kids. It's just a lot of problems. I, I, just, I just need something concrete on this because I yeah every time it comes up I watch all the uh, the news um, stories and I've seen a bunch of them but I never really get that far to what really happens and it, the, what I hear is kind of like folklore and just kind of people just saying things but I haven't really seen anything solid on any of the things you guys just said. I've heard. Yeah, it, but I, Go yeah, they, they they do it. They do it. But you know, they did it in places here in the West also. You know, I mean, let's not get it twisted. I love Black America. It used to be looked down upon to be a single mother. Somewhere down the line, it changed. Yeah, not that far ago. Not that long yeah. ago. I mean, wasn't that long ago? Yeah. Well, some of these single mothers is is um is, is the fault of, of these nuts these idiots male men that's running around that's calling themselves men they don't know nothing about being a damn man yeah, it's well, hard to stay with a woman that wants to be well, a single mother I, well yes exactly i uh i got lucky uh lucky quote with with big quotes to uh to hit uh to hit well, uh, hold, hold, hold over quick brother bronze what did you say mufasa no, I said it's hard to stay with a woman that wants to be a single mother. Well, was, I, I, and I would say this: what we tend to find is, and we're really dovetailing, but with this, we'll wrap it up with this conversation about single motherhood. Is well, at least in America, a, no child is born without the mother deciding that that child comes to term. That that's the reality, right? Mm -hmm. And so I tell women all the time: if you did not require that man to marry you before you gave birth. Then you wanted to be a single parent and we do know this because there's data to substantiate this particularly dr t hassan johnson's book just came out in november um solutions for anti-black misandry flat blackness and black male death the black masculine's turn he talks about that 80 percent of marriages and relationships involving children are dissolved at the behest of the mother so we find that mothers are the ones who are going out and creating single motherhood. It ain't the man leaving, it's the women. Um, but brother yep. Lumba, don't don't let some of these punks off either. Okay? Because I know I, some I, of them. I, I, I understand that, but this I know is, some of them. So for example, I have a daughter, she's 14, and I tell her, I said, listen, if you're dumb enough to get pregnant by a man who's irresponsible, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. you, you we all know the African story of, of the um was it the the um the scorpion and, and the to tortoise yeah and, and, the, and the, the scorpion asked the tortoise hey can you get me across the river the tortoise says no uh you're gonna sting me and we're gonna drown and die no i'm not gonna do that the tortoise says yes you will the scorpion says no i won't the tortoise gives them a ride across the river the scorpion stings them and then they drown and die why did you do that i'm a scorpion that's what i do Brother Lalumba, I have a friend, right? He's um he have three kids right now. He's um and he's with that woman, but he had another woman before with a child. I I knew the woman. I met the woman, and I asked him why did you leave this woman? So Dora, I have no goddamn idea. This was a good woman. I'm okay. out of my damn mind. And and, 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 and and that happens, but the data shows. I'm just talking about data. 
the data shows, and this isn't just from blackdemographics.com, but on, when you look at the census, you know, they look at, you know, marriages, families, divorce rates, who's filing for divorce, all of that. The women are the ones who are leaving relationships. For example, I'm a divorce, I'm divorced. Mm -hmm. My ex-wife, when I came home work, was like, I don't want to be married anymore. Five years later, she's like, hey, can we work things out? Hell no. I'm 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 saying I'm saying I, all I'm saying is on a macro level, and I can just speak for in America, irrespective of race, the women are the ones, and the data supports this, who are leaving families, creating broken homes. This is one of the things I agree with, with Kevin Simons when he says that these women tend to be actual home wreckers. They're the ones wrecking their homes. They're the ones leaving the household because they say, well, family life is boring. I understand that there are things that men do, but nowadays, in 2024, mm -hmm. a lot of this has to do with what? Feminism, right? And the, the feminist belief, because I've I read a lot of feminist literature, I even minor in the undergrad, that having a family is what? Oppressive to a woman. They make this argument. To, to, yeah, I, I see. I, I agree with you to, at, at some point, but I'm still going to stick to they have too much punks out here. You have to be strong enough and know how to guide that particular woman that you're with. Also, you give up too but, but much. This, this, but this, this you is what I'm what, saying? But this is what I'm going to say. And I, that's why I'm going to disagree with you, right? Because I am a extremely masculine man. I make good decisions. I'm responsible. I'm dependable. And I'm a liar. Reliable. I've prided myself in that. I taught my son since the moment he can comprehend that that's what a man is. You right. can't make a woman. And that's you. No, and no, here's the thing, though. Like I told my son, told my daughter, you can't make a person do anything. You, I told my daughter, I said, you could be the prettiest woman, had the best body. You could give head like Maggie Simpson sucking on a pacifier. You could have a box like ocean spray. If that man's a cheater, he's going to be a cheater. I said, son, you could treat that woman like a queen. You could provide. You could be loving. You could be charismatic. You could be everything that you need to be. You could be Prince Charming. And if that woman doesn't appreciate you, she's going to leave. This is a reality. Mm -hmm. Is that Holly Berry, for instance? She was getting cheated on. It doesn't matter. You can't change another. I tell my kids, you can't change an adult's behavior. They gonna be who the hell they who the hell they are. Yep. That's a reality. It doesn't matter what type of man you are, how responsible you are, because I experienced it. I've seen men who I think are even better men than me experience the same thing. Well, well, I'm, I'm, it, well, it goes both ways. Like I'm saying, it goes both ways. But I'm, the man is supposed to be the stronger one. And um, a man, of course, you, you cannot, you're not going to keep every woman. Some of them going to want to leave, of, of course. You see what I'm saying? But, but my thing is, there is too much punks out here. They're just ready to run in a second. You see what I'm saying? Not everybody have the character like okay, you, brother. So, um, so, 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 so you let, me, let me ask you this question. When you call a man a punk, the majority of the time, who are these guys? So you're talking about boys who are masquerading as men. Who are yeah, they? That's what I'm, that's right. what I'm talking about those kind. I'm not right, talking about right, a, right. a real so, man. So the question I'm is, talking about them. Right. Who are these young, Who are these boys who are masquerading as men? Who are they raised by the majority of the time? Ah, so, ah. So, some uh, a lot of them are raised um by women. It, it is okay. true. So there's the problem. You see what I'm saying? So there's the problem. But, but, yeah, but what? But but what happened to, to the to, to the men that have them? Well, where, I, I, where I, I, are you? Hold on, wait. I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm gonna even get personal, hey, uh, right? I'm gonna tell you what happens. And, and Dr. T. Hassan Johnson talks about this in the book. It's the fact that the court system is vehemently against the man. I give you an example, and this is a true story. I'm gonna bring my personal life into this. My son is 16 years old. Okay, 16. When my son was 10 years old. I, that boy was on the road to being a Rhodes Scholar, but not the Eurocentric white supremacist Rhodes Scholar, but you know what I mean. He was reading the New York Times. He was reading the um, Wall Street Journal. When I would have speaking, speaking engagements, he would open up for me. He was cooking with fish grease, boxing. He was a swimmer. He was getting gold at Midwest regional meets. He said, man, dad, I'm going to go to the Olympics as a swimmer. I said, cool. When he was 10 years old, my ex-wife's family put up half the money for him to get a lawyer and said, we want you to get custody of him because we think if he stays with his mother, he's going to end up in prison. We have a two-day hearing. Her family testifies on my behalf. It's not looking good for her. She takes my son and runs off to the Washington, D.C. area, DMV, okay? I haven't seen my son in three and a half years, even though I'm still paying child support. Why? Because she will not abide by the court order and she doesn't live in the same state as me. So the warrant that's for her arrest for being a contempt of court that isn't nationwide. I got a call last night, said my son has been charged with two counts of armed robbery. 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't because I was being a deadbeat. It's because most of these women would take the child and then purposely try to do what? Raise the child without the father, even though they do a horrible job of doing so. Boy, well, what? I would, I think I would, you... I, hold on. This, this, I just found this out last night. I took, I went on a date with a woman 13 years ago. Good looking sister, was an athlete, everything. We're having dinner. She tells me, I want to have children and then raise them without their father to prove that kids don't need a dad. I said, well, check, uh, at I least she was you, honest. She, what, told, she you. told me this. I said, check, please. Check, please. Three years mm. ago, I ran into her. She's a single mother of two kids. She said, this is the biggest mistake I ever made. Mm. Too bad for her. And, and, and she said, and she said, man, and now I see why when I told you that you asked for the check and got the fuck away from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, you, we're going into situations where a lot of these women want to be single mothers. And so yes, I agree. I agree with that. Probably seeking out men who are irresponsible to have babies with because they have a baby with a man who's responsible. They know there's going to be accountability involved. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I'm talking about the punks. <laughs> I'm talking about the real the men. Punks are raised by the by the mothers. Not They're all of them. Some, some of them are raised by the fathers too. Come on, bro. Something's from the department the house. Of the time, they're raised by mothers. Okay, well, if you want to put it that way. And I'm not I mean, just being real. You know? The David Davis shows um, this. Like I said, I know some of them punks. That, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Okay. I know some of them punks. They're raised and by I, women. That's where you get the. This this isn't an African American phenomenon. I I I worked for a year with the Montgomery County Fatherhood Initiative. We find this irrespective of race. Europe, Europe, same story. Yeah, we find this irrespective of race. I got lucky, quote unquote. Uh, I repatriated to to build a family. You know, I I I thought, okay, I I, I escaped. I was responsible in Europe. I escaped. Uh, I'm lucky uh, to to not have a, I have a child in here. So so I, so I bump into this uh, ICT uh, 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 a woman. Uh, me with my uh, uh, old back I, uh, old ICT background. Uh, we we planned everything everything. The moment the moment she 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 fell pregnant, she she switched. Everything, you know, uh, so, so she, uh, the NGOs, Western NGOs go, go to these universities and gas up these females. So, so you're, you're going to see that, that shit in, in, in Africa too. I was lucky to bump, bump into, into exactly what Lumumba uh, uh, explains, you know, and uh, she drops off my, my son at her, at her mother and sisters. And, and uh, it's a house full of women and, and my, my child is 10. And he's already bragging about having uh, it. It translates. It's dochem dochem bandi in Wolof. So it it translates to gangster truck. So so my boy of ten thinks it, it's it's already thinks it's cool to be a gangster. He 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 he, he lives. He 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 he's he's brought up by only females. Like four. There's four of them in that house, and still there's no there's no education. Well, I mean, the bottom line wait, is wait, it's wait, a wait, European wait, wait. phenomenon. Let, let, let Sister Muhammad speak. She's been waiting patiently. Well, I just got on. They can go ahead and finish. Okay. Well, yeah, but you was waiting in queue for a while, and I didn't see you all. That was the issue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, go ahead. Well, I don't know if you guys are... I still I just wanted to make a couple of points about Elijah Muhammad, if you guys are still talking about that. Go right ahead. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, there was a brother who commented he was it was concerning that people in the chat were calling him pedophile. So I just wanted to kind of clear the air on that. Uh, Elijah Muhammad had a wife and had children with several other women. The youngest right. woman he had children with was Tanetta Muhammad. Tanetta Muhammad was born in 1941. She died at the age of 73. Her first baby was born. Let me see when was Ishmael born. Ishmael was born in 1964. So if his mother was born in 41 and he was born in 64, she was not a teenager. So, and I think this, this is kind of how this happens. When Elijah Muhammad, when it was found out he had these children and it was told to Malcolm, the person who reported the incident was Elijah's son, Wallace. Right. But it was also after Malcolm had already seen it for himself. Right. 
But these, we don't, maybe maybe Wallace was kind of shocked or upset that his father had other children. I don't know. But Wallace was sent to Egypt for, for to study Islam. So he's, he should have been well aware of men having more than one woman. I mean, he was, he was, that was thrust upon him. He, he had knowledge of that. So I don't know why he would have been surprised. But well, Tynetta, I mean, well, he wasn't surprised. The issue was, they took issue with him telling Malcolm that this is what was going on. But he was like, I told him that this is what was going on after he had already seen what was going on because one of the women were bang at the house, which is located in, um, what's that neighborhood in Chicago? Uh, on the south side. I can't recall the name. It's near the University of Chicago. And uh, she was banging on the door saying, you're going to help me take care of this baby. Help me take care of this baby. Malcolm saw that. And that's when uh, he was like, well, what is this? Is this what's going on? And, and Walla said, yes. Now, that was a little bit before my time, but I was in the nation for like 25 years. Mm -hmm. So with these sisters, you know, they all profess to get along with each other. They all profess the children get along with each other fine. And they're, they never claim to have, have had any issue with Elijah taking care of any of their children. Well, now, hold on, hold on, because we talk about what facts. They filed paternity suits against him in court. So you don't file a paternity suit against someone if the person's taking care of the child. Number two, Malcolm saw the women themselves banging on the the, the front the door side door of the house, complaining that he wasn't taking care of the children. And I hear what you're saying. I'm not saying those sisters ain't telling the truth. Right. All I know but, is that what can be substantiated is that they filed paternity suits against him to get him to take care of the kids. That is something that can be substantiated. Right. But the sisters that I've met personally several years ago, they don't claim any of that. Oh, I'm quite sure they didn't. It's called damage control. Okay. Well, but, but you can't change the court documents that were filed. The, the, the second you issue can. was the fact True. that they were excommunicated from the nation for being engaging in premarital sex, even though they were engaging in premarital sex with Elijah Muhammad. These are th these are facts that are irrefutable. Okay, brother, I hear what you're saying, but hearing the hearing it different from the sisters, I don't know. It just it kind of just yeah, sounds really different for me. I understand that. I understand that, but. Once again, it's, it's, it's called damage control. Even the stories around Malcolm, it's called damage control. But once again, he wasn't a pedophile. A pedophile is someone who has a sexual attraction to a true blessed child. I think Don has got off. Right. Yeah. So just I it was above was 20 at that time. So right. that doesn't Because he, he switched it to the other show. But and like I said, once again, yeah, if it wouldn't have been an issue because of Islam, right. you could have up to what four wives. I, I to so there would have been no need to kick. Oh, uh, I'm thinking this is a YouTube thing. It is YouTube. So, I mean, so like I said, uh, if you go um, sign up to Ellis, because mm -hmm. you Ready got boy, why you not doing boys there. So once again, we're talking about being above board and just dealing with the facts of the situation, right? True. And the facts of the situation is. This is what actually transpired. I understand that. I remember when Farrakhan brought them out on stage. It's called damage control. A lot of people do these type of a lot of people do these type of things. But I, I'm rooted in the facts of the situation. And the facts of the situation is these young ladies were kicked out of the organization for engaging in premarital sex with a man who was the leader of the organization. That's that's what happened, and they had to file paternity suits because he right. wasn't taking care of the children. Now. Now, Elijah Muhammad was a, a, a man small in stature. Yes, he was. He wasn't the type of brother that women just go fawning after and chasing after. He didn't, very true. he didn't have that type of look. He didn't have that type of personality. He wasn't very charismatic, which is why he had other, he had spokespersons. This he had a true. speech, he had a speech impediment. Yes, he did. So he's not the type that women are like, oh, I got, I just got to have this brother. These women and you know, and they were they were of age, they weren't teenagers. So yeah, it was their right to to or to consent to whatever they wanted to consent with that brother. But he just would I mean, he just wasn't the type that women went running after. So mm. he had a speech impediment. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But once again, here's the other oh. issue. Here's the other issue. So let's say above board, they consented. So 
But once, once again, here's the issue. But once they got pregnant, he kicked them out the organization. Yeah, but I hear what you're saying, brother. You say damage control. There's no way around that. But you said damage control. And then, but then, later, control, but then but... later, Farrakhan said, oh, these were his wives. He said, cool, and as long as you can have four wives. So if that was the case, then why he kicked them out the organization? Like, come on. Like, we got to just keep it a buck here. I don't know. Like I said, I hear, I know you said damage control. Yeah. The, two, the, the three that I knew personally, I mean, they're dead now. But the three that I knew personally, they don't, mm-mm. They're not, they don't admit to any of that. I, 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 I get it. I understand. Okay. Okay. What, what, what did they admit to? Was it love? Was it they admit, love? they admit to having children with the brother. I mean, like I said, he wasn't, he wasn't like one of the finest brothers around, but it's, it's something that they saw in him where they wanted to reproduce children. Well, I, I, I would actually push back. I would argue that he was pursuing them. They weren't pursuing him. Right. Because and, and there's a lot of literature on this. That he was going after a lot of young women who were, you know, what we would call very impressionable, right? And there were some young ladies that he would walk up to them and just kiss them, and then they they were startled by that, and then he would say, "Well, fine, then you can't work for me anymore as my secretary." So this wasn't a situation in which they was coming for him; he was coming for them. Here's the other issue: if I was 65, 70 years old, and I had 18, 19, 20 year old women coming for me. Just based on my own personal morals, I wouldn't even sleep with them. And for example, I, I had a couple of female students in my classes that I teach who I could tell took a liking to me, who started trying to follow me on social media. I blocked all of them. So just, just from being from, from an, a grown man perspective, I'm not going to be sitting up here at 40, 50, 60, 70 years old having sexual uh, consensual, those, those type of relations with a young lady. Just from a no, what? And I, and I, I agree with you. I agree with that. I, just on the real. I would be appalled if my father did such a thing. Yeah, like what she but, came at me. And right, but if a, if an old man like that was seeking, was chasing me, and I consented, you know, that would be just as much on me as it is on him. And, and that and that I can understand and agree with. So 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 we're we're, we're locking. We're one. We're on the same accord there. The only issue I have is after they became pregnant, they were excommunicated from the organization. That's what I have an issue with. Yes, they committed adultery. Yes, they were fornicating, which is against the rules of the nation, but they were fornicating with you and you're the leader of the organization. That's the issue I have a problem with. Uh, yeah, and I see what you're saying, but I mean, when you, for me, is it's kind of different because I knew the sisters personally and they don't, and I know you say it's damage control, but when they go through the stories, I can be like, oh, really? Okay, I see that. So yeah, you right. know, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of in a different and a slightly different spot with. That. I understand that. We're quick, by the wisdom of my crew. But part of that is because what Farrakhan paid their ass. We got to keep it real here. He gave them money. Well, and you have to under look at it like this: when the nation split after Elijah Muhammad passed, and the the brother who his son who reported right. to Malcolm wow. became the leader, mm -hmm. you know the nation kind of splintered off into yes, like did. fifteen different groups. Yes, it did. Some of those women and their children went with different groups. So, hey, a lot a lot has gone on. A lot, so you would never can really tell. Right, uh, Bristol never speaks. Go right ahead. Let me say this. The main thing that he never married those guys. So when the son was surprised about the other women, if he would have had them as wives, he'd already known about that. So with their the religion that they have the four wives, why didn't he just marry them prior to impregnating? So when they're telling you a story later on and they have to dress things up, and trust me, I have a sister to this day have not told her adult kids, and they have kids, who their real fathers are. She she don't want to even meet people from her past because she don't want to, she want to keep things dressed up the way she has it now. And that's her story. So those ladies, in all due respect, I don't know them, didn't, you know, don't know the conversation, but it seems just like that sister I have, what is I'm gonna tell you today is what you will know about me, and that's what you're gonna all because you don't know my past, you don't know the story. Because in your own words, you said a lot of that was before your time. So when you met them, they had already redressed the story to tell to other ladies. So the point is that if you don't want to look so bad in your choices and what you gave into, because it's always impressionable when there's a leader of anything, whether it's a 
CEO of a company, a teacher, or anything like that, and you're young and impressionable. So the, the thing is, is that if they was pursuing him, he had a right to not to move forward with that and have them do counseling with other women in the, in the organization, as they had that other men was told to do. So therefore, even though they changed their stories, embellished it, made it whatever it was later on in life, that's their choice. But the original information is the original information, which goes against a lot of the teachings. Now, without that, without saying that, I want to address something real quick with Brother Ellis. When you can't oh, go ahead, wisdom, go ahead. I am so exhausted with men that supposed to be men, only always blame the men that the last forty years raised by mostly women. And the fact of the matter is, we know that there's some knuckleheads running around. Yes, we know that. But when you will not allow women to be responsible for their choices, because they will not allow a man to be part if they want to disregard their fetus. They don't have to. And so a lot of women today, even the eighth grade as a teacher, uh, had two girls in her school told them, because they were talking about what is your future, you want to get married, you want to do these things and all that. Two of them says, no, I just want to have me two babies and get on government assistance, just like my mom did. We won't need a man just, just to help us get paid. And in the eighth grade, so they're not wanting a man that's going to be wrapped up in all that stuff. So you have to allow yourself for both parties to have total responsibility in what they do when they lay down and unprotected. Because if you don't accept the fact that women now can protect themselves against pregnancy, there's something wrong with you at that age. I'm just going to be real with you. And that is the problem. We don't take accountability as a people with bad behavior. And God knows we got enough women don't chew, uh, challenge other women for their uh, behavior and their choices. So we as men and older as we get, right. we got to stop giving passes and always blaming. We got to stop that, brother. We got to stop it all the way. That's all I'll come back in to say. I, I would agree with that 100%. Brother Kevin, a.k.a. Mr. K, says also Elijah's wife, Clara, threatened to leave Elijah on many occasions when she found out about their affairs. That is very true. That That is true as well. She took extreme umbrage with him having those sexual liaisons with, with many of his secretaries. So it's just, once again, and I'll give you another example. I was at the gym earlier this week and uh, the sister, I'm 40 years old, she's 23. She asked me, was she too young for me? I said, yes, you're a child. She says, but I'm an adult, I'm grown. I said, you're a child to me, period. Right? I feel, I, I feel the same way. Um, right? Brother, it's yeah. like, I, I can't, I mean, I just don't, I, I can't do it. I'm like, you're a child to me. Yeah, so I, like I said, I you know, there, there's a big issue. I know a lot of people take issue and umbrage with, with the issues. But like I said, I, I'm fact-based, right? We're going to be fact-based. I know there's a lot of narratives out there, but we need to be rooted in the facts, right? A lot of people, you know, there, there's a lot of misinformation that takes place around this. And this is one of the not-so-glamorous periods of the Nation of Islam's history. But I always argue if you want to be, if the organization wants to truly be accepted, right, then you need to do what? Just be honest. Hey, did, we did this. It wasn't the best. We made wasn't the best thing that we did. We learned from it, and we'll never do something like this again. Rather than engaging in smoke and mirrors and, and subterfuge and and you know uh, you know so, you know talking in circles when you're not really saying anything. And I'm not speaking about you, Sister Muhammad. You were very direct in what you had to say. But typically, when you come in contact with people in the nation, particularly the men, this is what happens. I, I there was a brother. We was at a meeting probably eight years ago, um, and he was talking about no, those were his wives. I mean, no, that, if you know the French toast, they won't. Like, stop it! You've been you you've been brainwashed. You know what I mean? So it's difficult to take people serious when you're easily manipulated. And it's it, for me, it's it's hard. Like you know, we need to be a people who are critical thinkers. You know, ants communicate wise when they bring forth children you yeah you, you don't you don't actually yeah, yeah you don't actually communicate i know and if you do kick your wife that says something about who you are as a man and it wasn't like he didn't have the money to take care of him yeah 
I know I don't have I know a lot of opinions like on the yeah, life I, of Muhammad. Only thing I was defending is don't call him a pedophile. Well, yeah, I mean, one, I, I, one, I, I, of my, one of my biggest problems when it comes down to dealing with black people, especially, specifically black Americans, is that a lot of times we divide ourselves into these little dumbass groups to a point in which we can't get together. Because I know if I say something to offend the nation of Islam, that's over a million black people that I need for any project that's gone. If I say something to disrespect the church of God in Christ, that's five, six million people that's gone. It's better well, not to even attack these other groups instead of just trying to focus on a common denominator in which everyone can come together and work on something. Well, that, so that's really my main issue. When people in the conversation be calling the guy pedophile, I'm like, it, it, you're really dumb your own fucking call. Stop. Well, but 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 I, but I would say this. Because I, we could do I, this I, all I, day. I think ideology, character matters. So I'm not gonna align myself. For example, I was at the gym. You know, I'm always at the gym and shit, right? By the by Lumumba. And a young man came up to me and said, listen, they told me you're an atheist, but you're a Pan-Africanist. I'm going to have some conversation with you about Islam. And he said, well, what are your thoughts on Prophet Muhammad? Peace be upon him, all that shit, right? And I said, uh, do you think he's a pedophile? I said, well, according to the Hadith, he married Aisha when she was six or seven years old, and he consummated the relationship when she, two years later. I said, that's pedophilia. Fuck you talking about? So that's not somebody I want to work with. In fact, I even told him, I said, if I see, because my daughter would come to jail with me, son, if I see you looking at my daughter, I said, I'm going to knock the fucking head off. I'm letting you know now. You so talking about logic? Or you talking about, talk about the Arab dude? That's, that's not, I know, but I'm saying that's not, based on that person's ideology, their worldview, their beliefs, their character, or lack thereof, that's not someone not only would I want to work with, that's not someone I would want to be in community with, that's not someone I would even want to be in proximity with. So but I don't brother, have a problem excommunicating people of a particular religious belief because we know that the second um, largest progenitor of child sexual abuse in America comes from what? Religious institutions. Yes. But, yes. This is the reality. Yes. So when most folks come and they got some type of religious belief, I'm like, cool, you somebody I don't need to be around. Brother Lumba, are, are you aware that there are people here? That official people that's trying to make pedophiles legal. Yeah, I just I just saw a video on it. Um, yes, right. Yeah, yeah they're trying to make this shit so legal. Yeah, this 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 is this is where it's which where it's getting to. And anybody, I don't care if it's Nigerian or who would who would the f, right, going to accept eleven year old, 12, 13 year old getting married. You see right. what I'm saying? Should be this, executed. This that's my. That's and, what and, I'm and saying. I, and I mean it. it. We see this. We see this issue of pedophilia through, throughout Ab Abrahamic religions, right? So I mean, this is yeah. reality, and we know it's an alien. No, you, anyway. you, you, you see it because that's the way. What what you call pedophilia today, even though it's not actually pedophilia, but the brother just said thirteen. Uh, uh, women would have children. I, 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 Aisha was nine when a prophet Muhammad had uh, consummated their marriage. He was, she yeah, was nine but years old. I think that was I, a little early. They jumped the gun on that one. But the, the, the ancient method was once you got your cycle, you were a woman, right? That's the way it was. Bro, I, listen, listen, brother. Um, why would anybody want to be with a damn child anyway? I mean, bro, why? It's only a child because the white man told huh? you it's a child. Oh, white man come determined on, bro. He bro, said, I would cheat, bro. My 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 AR fifteen be working on your ass. What? <laughs> I mean, don't say me. What? Don't be disrespectful, brother. Don't yeah, 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 I don't. Yeah, I don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't he went. He went. I'm siding with the guy. One mic. One mic. One mic. One mic. Hold on. One mic. Because we're going to have a conversation. You all are going to have a conversation. Let's not mention something like that with each other. I know sometimes I would say, "Hey, if somebody," but I'm thinking. I'm speaking about a person who is mythological, right? Imaginary person. Let's not say that about someone that's on the line. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't know if he meant me, but I'm saying I wouldn't sleep with a, uh, a, a someone that young who I consider a child, also. But I didn't mean is, you. Yeah, I don't think he meant me. No. So, but what I'm saying is the ancient method was that it was when you had your cycle. So when you say in these religious things, you see them doing that. That's because the ancient in those times, everyone was doing that. Yeah, up until very recently, the whole 18 year old thing, it's, it's nothing special about the number 18. It's a population control method, right? 
you just if if women start having these children really early, they're gonna have a bunch of kids, and now so they're telling you it's eighteen, and then they've indoctrinated well, well, people. Well, let me but let me say this, Mufasa. I think it's better for women to wait till they're older to have children because if you're 12, 14, what you gonna teach the child? It depends. I mean, whatever you've been taught. If that's but, but that, child, if you twelve, you that's twelve years of me teaching you. Intellectual capacity. Come on, brother. No, no, brother, listen, listen, it, it, it's all no relative. What you teach that, that's my, 12. No, but everything's relative, right? So in our society, we think we, we're, we're not grown until 21. So that's how we act, right? Uh, but if, if the society sets a different age and a different standard, they'll know that at this age, I'm a man, I'm a woman. So they'll, they'll learn with more intention. Now, I but understand it, why we do it our way. Okay, okay. let me let's let's take, like can I ask a question, brother? Just take this off the woman. Okay, just say it's two children getting married. Two, two 12-year-olds getting, um, um, getting, getting married, right? Yeah. Who's going to take care of those two 12-year-olds? Am I, am I, are, 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 are the, the parents responsible for these two 12-year-olds? Who's going to take care of them? Uh, in, in, in our society, it wouldn't make sense for a 12-year-old to be having sex. But you could set up a society where twelve-year-olds can marry, and um, and from my and understanding, and what do they do? I'm saying the practical part of it. Who take care of two twelve-year-olds? That's what I'm saying. Well, I, I don't know about of the two twelve-year-olds being uh, married. I thought usually the man would be a little older and I know. established. I know, right? I know. So say but, for instance, so, I'm, I'm sixteen. So suppose, suppose the twelve-year-old want to get married. Are, are we going to stop him from getting married? I mean, in, in, in a lot of societies, you would, you I would, mean, because you would have to build something and reach a certain standard before you allow the wife, right? So, so say for instance, I'm I'm 12, I break away from the home, I start my own farm, I you know, then I'm, I'm I prove myself as responsible, and then I could get a wife, and she may be 12. Bruh, uh, um, I've I've known 12 and 13 year olds start working at 12, 13 year old, making their own little money. Is that person? That person responsible to have a to have a wife? No, no, no. I already the first thing I said was that in this society, no. In this society, the number is eighteen or sixteen or whatever it is, and the number is fine in our society. But when we start trying to do it across the board, if there's some tribe somewhere that wants to run their business that way, I don't have an issue with that as long as ethnic the woman group. they ethnic yeah the, group. ethnic group uh, okay ethnic Bruh. group. That's that's their business. Bro. You get what I'm saying? Bro. 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 Has a point there because any of you who have ever been out of the country in Africa, a 16 year old is different from an American 16 year old. Exactly. An Arab 16 year old is different I've, I've traveled from an American 16 year old. But they, they still 16. Yeah, they are. Yeah, still but what does that mean though? What what does that mean? And who told you that that means something? Well, first off, and what no one told me is I to, to me is a child. Is the child well, me, exactly? Let me, yeah. let, let me means the child. Like, like the young lady at the gym who was twenty three. I said, "You a child to me, right. even though she's an adult." Yeah, and I'm, I said, you, "You're twenty three, but you're a child to me." Let Let me interject to help all this out. What the brother is talking about is our ancient culture or way was bringing. Because once you are time to reproduce, the women was already prepping you for marriage and motherhood and understanding of that when you get your cycle. The young men usually had the rite of passage, usually around the age of 15. So there was always about a three-year difference anyway. They was already uh, uh, given to be married or wed by the parents already when that time was right. The also was that the father would bring the dowry to the parents' family that had the girl ready to go for marriage. So in that, they was already being raised. We're not raising anybody to be uh, learning adulthood anyway. We want to always be forever our children or child. And that's not the way our true uh, culture or whatever you want to call it was in ancient time. And so in some of the countries in Africa, they still have those ages and they still have those rites of passage and always still going on. So... It's not like we thinking today that we still raising the 12 year old or 15 year old. Most of those countries now that have that age limit of 18 was the colonized countries that they kept that. Though some of them are 16, 15, on average they're 11 and 13, 11 in Nigeria, but most of some are still 13 to 15. And then a few of them are 16 and then some 18. So it's not so much what we see 
we we are brought up in this society where we govern things and so we keep people from learning we have genius children are we going to say that they're not smart and they didn't graduate college at 13 because they were 13 and they should never go because we've suppressed their genius. Oh man, they, they, you, no, no, you, no, wait, no, no. You guys listen. trying to make this thing normal. No, no, no. Wait, 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 you wait, 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 cultures or groups of people and how they are in different countries from where we are where we are so if you are i'm 65 going on 66. i don't have a need for some 18 year old 23 year old running up to me what do they want a sugar daddy right you know i have sons that are almost 50 and 40 and 41 and all that i have grandkids so i'm not so much into so I, but that don't mean I don't respect where they are or they mature where they are. There's some crazy 30 year olds out here that that is less mature than some 15 year olds because they had to grow up fast because they didn't have much help at home. They have smaller kids. They have I've seen all of this. Okay, so what I am telling you is that when somebody is explaining the realities of life in other places, that don't mean they're trying to normalize. We're trying to get you educated, but you don't have to change anything you know or do in this country, how you was raised and how you stand. Dr. Lamuma, I'm going to go and say that Dr. Lamuma could have easily said, ooh, this young woman wants me. But he didn't need her because to him, she was still too young for him. Some other guy his age might not feel that way from another country that's here in this country. Because to him, that's way old enough. For some, they will say, you too old, you you old maid. You should have been married at 16, 18 from that country mindset. So why are you still out here free and loose at 23? So it's a lot of things that we also, if we're traveling and learning, we can't so be ingrained in our own way of, of coming up that we don't see something else. Because that's what happened with America. They were so far trying to tell everybody else what to do that caused wars and things when they was doing that there has calmed down a little bit now, but you can't mandate something else when you are younger in life and country than these people being millennial years. Right. And also, Mr. I think the truth, Mr. The truth, oh, excuse me. Mr. Wilson, I brought up earlier that there was still child marriage going on in the United States of America, 13-year-olds marrying adults. It still happens in the United States of America. Yeah. Yes, there's a few there's a few states that still allow that if the parent consents for that child, they can still marry that adult. That is true. There's only been a few states in recent about a decade that took that away that a child had their own. Now, if you become an emancipated child at 15, you, you can, can marry get married to whoever. You want because you emancipated mean that you showed the courts enough that you can take care of yourself, make honorable enough decisions. You just can't go into certain contract law until you're 18 or 21. But as an emancipated child at 15, you're considered your own adult, taking care of your own self, and you can marry whomever you want at any age. There is no uh, age restriction. So we must understand what's going on even in our own country. Just You just, you just can't keep blatant based on your feeling and knowledge. It don't have oh, to listen. be right. It don't have to be right for you or me or anybody else. It just is what it is in the laws and cultures. I, I think you guys don't also, you also got to take into account that this is political. Like you're in your feelings. Oh, you a kid to me. And that, that what, that's how you see it, right? But at the end of the day, this has been going on for thousands of years. This is one system and that's another. Uh, in Northern Nigeria, the Emir of Kano, Kano as well as the, uh, the president of France, they said that they want to educate the girl child. Because if you educate the girl child, these people won't be having so many kids because they, they, they marry young, they get with a man, then their main focus is how to please that man. And they have a system where that's the way things run. The woman depends on a man. She takes care of the man. The man's not doing certain things. The woman's doing certain things. So they have a bunch of babies. So, so what they're saying is, look, educate these girls so they know something else other than making babies. But really, they just want to pop, limit the population right so 40 50 60 100 years from now 
those same guys, their descendants will be like, oh, that's gross. I would never touch a woman like that. But they don't know that this was a political decision made by oligarchs because they wanted to limit population and change the culture. So I'm saying that you have to look at the reality that there are different ways to run societies. We're built a certain way. I can't look at a 12 year old girl. I was born in America. That doesn't even compute in my mind. But when I looked at it logically, I can see different uh, societies and different structures. M and they've been M going on for thousands of years. Yeah, and Lumumba, yeah, yeah, Lumumba but I, was, I used to think exactly like you. But when I got to Nigeria in 2019, I, mean, I would have had to kill at least 20 million people. Um, <laughs> mo mo I just do that. Most of the re most most African nations is governed, and their culture is either Christian or Islam. That's 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 the majority, especially in Nigeria. But it doesn't, brother. It doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't change do even religion. if you go to the places it that aren't as, religious. Yeah, that, that they still religion. have like regular all cultural. All they're worse than the, than the Christian and the Muslims are. <laughs> they're way right. worse. <laughs> Ain't, ain't nobody they worse than them. No better. To, in my opinion, ain't nobody worse than them. Period. In my even opinion, some, that some of the same things can be said about us in America, even from like 30, 40 exactly. years ago to, to now. Teenagers today, they don't cook. They're more ill-mannered versus the teenagers in the 60s. A teenage girl in the 60s could cook dinner every day. Cook, week, raise kids, come home run the school, house. Do all kind of things. But the teenagers today can't do nothing. So not, the not the teenagers oh, I read. Wait, brother Adams, let, let us speak, man. Let us speak. So it seems like it's it's about how things are structured. And of course, I'm, I know some people in the, in the comments like, oh, they're nasty. Nobody's saying people should marry young kids. Nobody's saying that. Just that there's a difference in how we're bringing them up. That's all. And it's, it's clearly different. That's what I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What do you uh, attribute to children not being able to do what to, well, teenagers of today not being able to do what teenagers of previous generations were able to do in terms of being a uh, household skills, etc. Um, lack of discipline from parents, and also I think with the modernization, um, when you don't have the modern things to some children, and the parents take it on too, it looks as though you're lacking, or you know you're kind of lingering above the prop of, amongst poverty, but. Parents nowadays, they give their children everything. Back in the day, you know, parents wanted you to work for things and earn certain things. And That's true. Nowadays, you can have a, a whole gray card full of apps. Your parents still get your video game console. And Can I can I add something? Can I add something? So, sure. Hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Let's let the sister finish, though. Before, I mean, before. You, yeah, but back in the days, that was unheard of. Back in the days when boys had their fathers in the house, they were helping their fathers build things, make sure the grass was cut. They could take care of the house while their yeah, father went away. I my dad growing up. They could tell my. I know my, my husband will tell my sons, take care of your mama while I'm gone. Young boys today, psh, they don't know nothing about that. Right. So, so uh, uh, what I wanted to add is... Uh, 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 yes, they say uh, they say educate uh, the girls uh, uh, so that they ha they don't have uh, uh, a lot of children, right? But but uh, w what it comes down to, what what I've what I've witnessed that it comes down to is that they are they are uh, um, they are they are actually creating uh, westernized girls. So so uh, uh, you know what what that's what exactly what it is. Yes, what they, what they teach, what they teach is uh, sexual liberty and uh, and this boss lady attitude. Uh, you 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 don't depend on men and and the the, the toxic Ooh, feminine. Well, you said you said boss chick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the toxic femininity or or what we in the West call toxic femininity. That that's that's what they what what these NGOs uh, push at the at, at these African uh, high schools and uh, and universities. That's my that's my experience. Let so me let me ask you the whole let me say point. this real quick. That's not education. That's indoctrination. That's a different thing. But yeah, that, that's a good point. That's you a know, good point. Yeah, it's it, not education. We talk about educating from a culture standpoint. When you educate the woman, you actually bring up the household right. Indoctrination is what you're speaking of. But let right. me add to something Sister Muhammad was saying. Let me add because she really hit on it. 
the reason why the young kids today are different and not doing as the movement asked is the fact that there's no two-parent household for them to see an image of what marriage is supposed to be. Not weddings, right. marriage. Right. And in that marriage, I come up under two parts of household. My mom was 15 and my dad was 18 when they married. They had their first child. And then they had 10 more after that, okay? And we all had chores. That when the girls would come up, you begin in the house. The, the sons begin outside the house. And you gradually learn both. Because in marriage, you have to learn enough as a male. So if your wife was having kids, you still could pitch in. If you didn't have old enough kids to help out, you still could pitch in while she was down with the first few children, even when you work, and vice versa. So what you're seeing is, is that there is no structure for them to emulate to. And so with the onslaught of the woman deciding not to be involved with the man, or they break up or whatever, all of the things that Sister Muhammad was talking about is actually a pacifier and guilt. So I'm going to give you all the things, but I can't give you your father because we are I'm still emotionally hurt from him. So I can't bring him back to you or let you have a relationship with him as an adult should, which can still give you some structure, which should still help you out with foundation. So I'm going to give you these things to try to replace it, like the government gave me some things to replace it. Come on so now. these things are replacement, which can never replace a true structured parental guidance, whether you're together or separate. That is the problem because the real foundation to real children is the true family structure. Because let me tell you something, when you enter marriage, if you cannot make your spouse priority over your children, you're telling your children that they can never have prior to their own spouse in the future. They only do what they see. And so that's why if you have someone seemingly depending on outside resources and not having a unit, your kids, children will never be committed to relationships. They will be committed to things given to them, pacified for them. Well, you know, so, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I remember I was telling my, my daughter's mother once I said, you know, you you have to stop buying her presents all the time and stuff. Mm -hmm. Get buying her stuff. She said, why? I said, because you don't want her to grow up thinking that happiness comes from material goods. I said, happiness should come from healthy, interpersonal relationships. And you look at all the women when you have some on the panels, I need a man to be able to make this kind of money to buy me this kind of things so while I do what I want. Okay. So, you, and then you got these young men coming up, as, as a brother called them, these punks. They are, took on that feminine nature, not that they become gay. It's the, right. uh, the expectation of someone giving them something. They move in with women because they've seen their mother let men move in and stay in the house mm -hmm. that yep. that was committed. So they go out and move in on women the too. Thing. So they're doing the perpetual things that they're seeing from their household. Yep. That becomes their <laughs> understanding of life. So no, that's where some of those pumps come from, brother, that you're talking about. So yeah, 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 but um, <laughs> but um, listen, but um, you, you it, it seems every time these type of platforms come up, the almost a hundred percent blame is always on the woman. This is what I'm pissed about. No. Almost a hundred percent blame no. is almost on the woman, the black woman. That oh, shit got to so stop. No. Okay, it what cannot be. No, what did I say to you first? I said you have to stop disallowing for the woman to have accountability. Also, because when you talk and you kept saying, "Well, I'm going back to the punks." When we when we bring in the accountability on both sides. It's people like you to still want to disallow them. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. That's what oh, I'm go saying. Ahead, go ahead, I, go I ahead. said earlier, I said, I, I, I did say earlier, it's, it's on both. It's on both, right? But black men, a lot of black men always want to blame the women, 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 women. That's all. They that's damn them themselves the is not taking about. responsibility. Well, so, Those so, are so, the right, punks came in. And, so, I, so, and that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to stick to it. Those right, are the fucking punks came, but punks this, came this in. This is what I'm going to say. I'm going to blame the person who okay. has custody of the child. That's what I'm going to look at. If you got custody, 
you know a tree by the fruit it bears. Well, the difference when 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 it's one parent, if you have custody of one one parent. I mean, I've known fathers that had to take the children. Um, um, I know this, I had one friend in New York that had to take the children. The mom, the mom was wouldn't stop taking drugs. Right. You see, so he had to take the children. Well, and, I mean, and yeah, but this, this happens a lot. I mean, this happens a lot. Where you see? I mean, my, and this happens a lot. Where you know. Matter of fact, there was an article in my hometown newspaper where the woman left three her three kids alone by themselves in the house, eight, six, and two. No heat. She put, she left the stove on to heat the house so she could go mm. out to the casino mm. and drink. Right? These things happen all the time. Yeah. Wisdom never speaks. When you go up in the back, you see women doing this with their kids. Yeah. The right? Time. So that's why I'm saying I'm going to look at the person who has custody because most of these women fight to have full custody of the children and give the dad damn near really no visitation. So I'm gonna look at the person who has yeah. custody of the child. Yeah, but you have to blame the judges um, Judges also. Well, and I understand that, but I'm out, but when I'm, ta I'm talking about, well, you know a tree by the fruit it bears. So if that child, is, so I'll tell you this, when my kids will tell you this, like that, my daddy crazy. I said, you live in my house, you're gonna follow my rules, you're gonna do what I say and how I say it because yeah. you are a representation of me. Period. Yep. I, I told my daughter a month ago, she said, well, our relationship, I said, let me make this very clear to you. True story. I said, our relationship is very simple. You do what the hell you're told or there's consequences. Nothing else to talk about. And she zipped it and flipped it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying here? We aren't friends. This isn't a relationship. You're going to do what you're told. You're going to do it how you're told or else. Right. You see what I'm saying here? Old school. You feel, yeah. So, but this doesn't happen in female headed households. Oftentimes, the households are dysfunctional. Oh. There's no structure, right? They they, oh. they they children get away with things. They aren't consistent with discipline. The discipline typically is an emo, a, a visceral, emotional tongue lashing, right? It, it, These it, are things it, that it, happen. It, it shouldn't be. A, it shouldn't be. A, it shouldn't be a female head of household, and it shouldn't be a man head of household. Everybody have their part to play. Well, well, hold on. So I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna push back against that. Day to day, mm -hmm. the show studies show yeah, that man. children do better if they have to be in a single parent household. It's an ideal. We don't want that. We want the two parent household to come back. My parents have been married 47 years. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. If you're watching, right? But the data shows that. Yeah. So children after age five do better if they're in a household where it was is ran by a man and not a woman. The well, David can, well, 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 can I can I use me an example then, Brother Lumba? I mean that's it's anecdotal. So I mean, yeah, I so, right. So so right. So in my house, my household, there was no head of household. It's two parent, two parenting, right? I understand. And, uh, and our children turn out perfectly, perfectly. Okay. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, so is, 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 is it, excuse me. I say that's a big statement, perfectly. That's a big statement. Hey, can I say something? In no, my no eyes, in my eyes, okay, you, I'm using my eyes, right? Okay, can I say something? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. I'm gonna let you tap in. All right, in my eyes, they're perfect. In my eyes, okay. You, you, you see what I'm saying? In my eyes. And that's who's count. You're right. Right. And matter of okay. fact, yeah, smash the like button. Smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Absolutely. Um, Bawana, I'm going to let you speak and then fire. Bawana, go ahead. Brother Bawana. Yeah, yes, sir. I, I understand that it's an uncomfortable conversation because of uh, uh, Mr. Ellis. We are uh, basically, it seems as if we are looking to, to blame the women in terms of what we see in our communities currently. I understand that it's very sensitive. If you are raised in particularly primarily by a, a single mother, most of our families, they say it's 70% in our households are raised by, by single mothers. But even if you say that your circumstances uh, had a perfect, perfect, you say, output. That don't really bespeak of what is we what we currently seeing in societies currently, because the 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 results are the single parent household primarily run by females is not a perfect situation. In fact, it's a very unperfect situation. There is a there is a deficit that is created 
when you have households primarily raised by females, and you have a lot of angry young men out here because they have only seen females, and they ask him the question, where is my father? They don't know how to operate as men. They don't know how to operate as men because there's a male deficit. And you, the end result of it is the tragedies that we are with within our community is so far, so far. So I feel the only way to correct that is the, the men must be included. The men must be included. You can't say, well, we could raise uh, perfect families without the males being included within the equation. Um, well, feminism yeah. makes an argument. Feminist can, ideology makes an argument. Can, but can, I, can, I, can I ask you let something, me, brother? Let, when you're done? Let me no when you're problem. done. Let me finish. Because we are currently seeing the result of that behavior for the past, from the, I think that when it started, 80s or 90s, we are seeing the result of that experience. We are seeing the result of that experience. The father is necessary because there's a necessary deficit. Not, like I say, I love my mother just like every other black man on this planet. So I, I, all of us squeamish when we want to point the finger at the women. But there is a shortfall. You can't pretend as it don't exist. It does exist. Let's talk about it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something that is hurtful. It's something that is unfortunate. But it does exist. The men are needed within our communities. We of are course, needed. Of course they're needed. Who, let's, no let's, one's let's, questioning let's, that. Let me, let, me, let me finish, Mr. Ellis. Finish well, Mr. finish Ellis. so I could rebut you. Sure. So let's pretend. Let's not pretend like that's not a necessary recipe in terms of creating the so-called perfect family that you suggested to the rest of the panelists. I'll leave it. I'll even let you go. Okay. Um, first of all, I didn't say that um, the men is not needed. That, that That's just uh, making any sense, right? Oh, no, Both he didn't parents... say that you made an argument, but there are right. people, particularly feminist ideology, that right. makes an argument. Right. Both parents, both parents are necessary. Both parents are necessary. But like I said, I've been on, on several um, um, panels. And the blame, the the blame, the majority of the blame is hundred percent, almost a hundred percent on women, 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 women. That's what that's what I'm saying. That's my argument. I'm not saying they're not to be blamed, but don't excuse the men them from their responsibility either. That's what that um that's what I'm saying. And as far as women, you say women can't make decisions. Does anybody know the story of um Ya Asantawa? I'm very much aware of, of Yah. Okay. Yah, well, since you know, I'll tell the other panel if they, if they don't know, right? Um, when when um, the British wanted to take the stool, right, from the um, from the Achanti yes, um, the golden, ethnic, the golden ethnic, stool. Right, the, gold, the, golden, the golden stool. The men was ready to give it up, right? And Yah, yes, Asanta yes, said, they, they, yes, hell they were, they were to the damn to no. Them. Right. If you take that stool away, the, the, the that ethnic group is finished, is no more. It'll be non-existent. Right. And she said, hell no, we are going to fight for it. You understand? So so uh, that, that's what I'm saying. And there's a lot of examples of our ancient sisters. Right. From what thousands of, 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 of years ago. Right. Who have to make those decisions. Right, so that's stop that's with this. Stop that's with that's this. this. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So, so, so let me, let me, let me, let me speak to this. And I think this is a good point. Then we got to bring the fire in. Yeah. Yeah. The point. Yeah. I think you're making a good point, right? Because in traditional African culture, and once again, the definition for that is what African culture, independent of European or Arab influence, women always worked and worked with men. And there were times where black women or African women would step up and protect their families, protect the communities from invaders, etc. And they were still seen as part of being divinely feminine. Yes. But we aren't operating from that African center frame of reference now. This is why we're seeing the issues that we're seeing. That's in my terms point of what's what's going on in these females. That is my household. point. That's my only point. That's my brother, point. All right, brother fire, go right ahead. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, um, Delroy Ellis, um, just calm down a little bit. Um, we just want to protect our women. It's not like we, we, um, are trying to be against our women. It's a protection apparatus. And 
no, um, being that we are civilized people, then our woman is supposed to adapt to conversations. Like, don't go around the road because there's a hole, there's a, a, a hole or, or a cliff, a gully or a bridge or something there, you can fall. So if you do not listen, you are going to die. So that's, that's what intelligence is all about. So our woman, I got it. I'm going to talk some psychology, some um, psychology. Our woman um, is actually, they are, we are all colonized people. And in colonization, our woman was captured away from us. I mean, the Western world, Black America and um, the Caribbean. So me and you is Jamaican. So we know we have a single mother problem in Jamaica. And I'll tell you why. So our women have been given a, a false sense of independence from the enslaver, if you may. And the enslaver always treated the woman different from they treat the men, than they treat the men. They, they even govern their sexual activities. So what I'm trying to say to you is um, our women have been convinced through Christianity um, that, that um, they can control stuff. So actually our women is psychologically um, fighting for power over man. So, 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 and these are the results what you see. What you see is the results of women trying to empower themselves over the man. So the man cannot you and she's using soft power, if you may, and, and um, 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 mental power to do this. And she actually trying to, she actually taking hints from the enslaver to turn us as men against ourselves. And they also trying to turn us soft. That's why some of us, some of brothers are homos. You feel me? So what I'm trying to say to you, because she the one who put in our makeup with them. She the one who going out with them, going hanging out with them. She the one who's influencing these things. You feel me? So, 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 so it, you can see psychologically the woman is trying to be equal with us in terms of power I, I disagree you, with so, you. you could talk but i disagree with you yeah yeah well you was a mama's boy also i want to say something about you you hold you hold think you're right. stop, 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 what, what are you saying stop, bro stop, hold on i, I live in decatur wait, 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 georgia wait, 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 where do you want to meet me i got this i live in decatur georgia where do you want to meet me i got this i got this i got this um brother fire on my platform we uh, we what attack the argument not the person we don't do that here Right, I'm, I'm that's, sorry. I'm that's sorry. Not an ad hominem. I would argue that that is very feminine and very. Yeah, I'm, very sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, so we, we don't do that here. I want to say something about. I want to say something, okay. about, I want to say something about. Um, sometimes, um, things is not about oh, a man just being a man. A man is also um the movements of everything. So you have um the Rastafari community in Jamaica, right? The Rastafari community is preaching love, respect for blackness, respect for yourself, respect for your hair. So one of the main um, opposers of consciousness in Jamaica is women. Same with Pan-Africanism in the world. One of the main opposers of Pan-Africanism is the black woman. Because it means discipline, it means um, submitting to to um, making the man powerful. If you may, which is power over. If it's power over the world, it's power over you too. So um, these are the things that's um, that the is going on in the female world. So you can notice how our, there, this one, there's one woman on this panel. Usually there's none because women aren't really 
trying to engage these type of con um, conversation that deal with your personality. If you may, I, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Ellis. Um, go ahead, my people. Dr. Quasi and the whole nine yard. If I told, I, I'm not going to come on this panel and I told you, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you, right? I was a bodyguard for Khalid Muhammad. You understand what I'm saying? And the organization I, I was in New York. You don't know who you're talking to. You see what I'm saying? Don't ever see me in a paddle and call me no goddamn mama's boy or meet my ass in, in Decatur, Georgia. That's one, th one thing I'm going to say. Uh, okay, let's, let's go back to the, to the woman, the woman you know, thing. All right. All right. Okay. All right. We got past I, I that. Finish, I, I, I got that. I, I finished what I'm going to say. You don't know who you're dealing with. I apologize. I apologize. Right? Be very emotional. Well, well, well I'm, I, I want you to know. I don't want everybody in the goddamn pound to know. So who what? What kind okay. of internet um, outlaw thing you doing? All right. Hey, 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 so hey, what? hey, one mic, one mic. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna end that, or I'm gonna have to remove both of y'all. You're right. That's what. But brother, okay. I was here for about three hours, right? I understand that. I never but disrespect anyone, anyone like that. That's I, the, no, that's, I, I, that's I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And as I stated at, at the at the beginning of every one of my shows, you attack the argument, not the person. This is not elementary school. This isn't middle school. This isn't high school. You attack the argument, not the person. No ad hominems, facts over feelings. Exactly. But I had to make my he, point. He, he I had to make my point. He he, he okay. did apologize. All right. So, now so we're going to move past that. Right. Well. Okay. Fine. Good. So now now that we got that got that straight. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and say it again, right? What I'm saying is I'm not saying women aren't to be blamed, right? I'm saying both are. Both take responsibility. That's what I that's what I'm saying, right? Men always are coming here and they blame everything on on, on the women. That's the part I'm saying. That's the part yeah, I'm saying. You have to take that you don't take some respon Let me finish talk, bro. Take some responsible responsibility also. That's what I'm saying. And I point some examples. That's why I brought up Ya Asentua. I don't know if, if you know who she is. That's what I'm saying. That was an, that was an example that she had to take the responsibility. About, yeah, I also know about Queen and Zinga. Right, um, she took. Um, she oh, took. That's what I'm saying. I'm well so aware that, that, that's history. exactly my point. But hold on. Uh, but hold see? on. This is the thing. This is the thing, right? If you destroy a woman, you destroy a nation. Do you understand why that statement is is prominent? Do you bruh, understand, Bruh, Like I said, you you did you hear what I said? I said I am yeah, a but student. What I'm trying to do, no, what I'm I'm trying a student to, of these people, on. right? You're yeah, not telling you me nothing not, I don't no, know. You, I'm saying you're not you, telling you, something you I don't know. You didn't answer my question. I'm trying okay. to say that a woman is. Is 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 the is the um what you call the teacher of everyone, both male and female, from one year old to um at least seven. So what's the problem? So, what, so what's the problem? The the, the so, colonizers so, destroy so, the men and they destroy the women at the same Let time. Finish. Let them finish. Yeah. So when you go ahead and and be putting um and be distributing the blame on men. You must understand that the woman can create our behaviors. You're not listening to me. So, so, so when 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 I'm saying that is like when I'm saying that a oh, woman is anti Pan Africanism and is anti natural hair and is anti blackness and all that stuff. When I say that is she is creating these boys, like like oh don't care about. Um, or see each other as nothing as individual. You can shoot a next another Negro if, if if because she's not instilling these values. Say, hey, you cannot kill anybody black. You cannot. You 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 supposed to love your hair. You supposed to love your skin. You supposed. You can see it in their actions. Why you why they call them we wearing hyenas? It's because of their trend. You feel me? So, and you have to use their trend to understand their minds. You feel me? 
a, a, a person's outward appearance have a lot to do with their inward um, um, way of thinking. So, so you, you saying, oh, the, the boys are shooting up each other and they should be blamed or the boys don't. No, 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 no. These boys just came out of the cradle. How come they just, they so wild already? Who made them wild? Who made, who making these dudes so indisciplined? And that's what um, Professor Lumumba be trying to say, but you're still coming back with this rhetoric that people fighting against women. No, we're not. We actually want them bro, protected. Bro, because bro, hold on, wait, 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 I'm not finished. If you raise pure idiots, then don't, don't get worried. Don't don't be don't be all stressed out and all that when you see we don't own nothing. All of us is a set of idiots. Chinese own our ports. Chinese just come in and in Jamaica and just buy our ports. Who made us so illiterate and dark and stupid that we didn't finance ourselves? properly and the government don't take mm -hmm. care of us e e e enough that we could buy our own port who made made us a, a set of idiots in jamaica who you think is doing it when the, woman the, is the, the, the is, woman is the woman is doing jamaica. according to you the woman are doing it the woman did everything is to, who is the raising woman. those idiot boys that is shooting the up woman each did other it. Who the, they didn't the, have a mother didn't the they have did a mother? the woman did everything you take no responsibility the portion you, the no, the where, is the that, portion where is the woman okay. that fight the woman did it the woman where is the woman that fight one, 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 one mic one mic one mic so this, this is what we're gonna do we're gonna get ready to wrap it up so i'm allow everyone to oh go i around. love i love this i'm loving this i know i'm gonna let everybody go around final thoughts you could touch on of course what well let me with. let me go so i could so i could so i could go to bed let me do my 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 final thought and we're gonna close out I, I'm going to stick to I'm going to stick to what I'm saying. Both is to be blamed. And on um, this this brother from Jamaica, same place I'm from uh, I'm, I'm I'm from, right? Both are to be blamed. The colonizers colonized both minds. I'm the men were Africa. colonized also. They were rape also, right? The men was rape also and colonized also. It's not just a woman mind that was colonized. You're putting everything on the woman, and that's bullshit. And I'm not, I ain't never gonna agree to nothing like that. So, next person. I want to answer that. I want to answer that question. First of all, let me say that we love our women, and, and I can't fire love his women too. He love his woman too. You no, know, we love your Santa, uh, your Santa. We love Queen Nanny. We love all the all the sisters, the revolutionary sisters, who would have done something that is substantial, that is substantial for us moving forward. But when you mention the women you mentioned, you don't mention all the black men and the lives that was lost in the so-called revolutionary struggle in Africa oh, as well. Jesus no, Christ. Le listen to what I say. No, 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 no. Don't say stupid, brother. Don't do that. Y'all, 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 something else, man. No, no, no. Y'all not let listening let to me. Let me speak. Let me speak. Lumumba, he's no, being no, personal, no, Lumumba. No, he's getting no, personal. No, no, no. I know. I, we, we're not Mr. doing Ellis. that here. We're not going to do that. Mr. Ellis, Mr. Ellis, Mr. Ellis, there is balance to the universe. There is balance to the universe. Just as there is the importance of female energy, there is the importance of, of male energy as well. And you would agree to that as a man. What I am saying is that we are living in a world right now which is actively trying to to uh, to, 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 to get rid of that so-called male energiness in the world, especially that black male energiness in the world. And we have contributed, we have contributed to the world as well. And we, there is an importance in, uh, in uh, acknowledging, acknowledging our efforts as well. And I don't want the so-called feminists because these, these feminist ideologies, they have racist foundations, brother, and racist origins. And we, we buttress against these kinds of ideas. You may not understand that, but there's a reason why we buttress against these ideas. We love our women. Black men have always venerated black women. If you look at the the if you look way back in Egypt, we, we, we are the first black men, we are the first people in the world who have black men, black women as gods. 
We put black women in a God position, brother. So of course we don't disrespect black women. We love and venerate black women, but we don't we don't take ourselves out, outside of that equation. And it's important not to do that. So if we are to blame, we are equally to blame with our counterparts as well. And this is this is this is why I say that it's very important to acknowledge we are equally to blame. Don't just put the all the blame in our lap. This is what the feminists are trying to do to us. And we never thought that way. We look, we move through the world based off of equality and my art. Equality, balance. And I'm, I'm we trying to get you to this kind of understanding, brother. That's all we trying to do. All we trying to do, brother. You know what I mean? When you're finger pointing, don't only point the finger at us completely as well. Let's let's share the responsibility together and let's share the responsibility of creating the, the solutions to our problems together as well. That's all we are trying to do. That's all we are trying to do. But I'll leave it there and let the brothers go. Brother Lumba, can I can I he's talking to me, so I have to um say something. You could provide him a tour. All right, so he's talking to me. You 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 said exactly what I've been saying. Equal. That's you said exactly what I'm saying. And I know who who I know who are the black men is, right? I know my brothers. I know what they did. That's what I'm saying. I keep telling you, but you, you guys not listen to me. I said I'm a student of Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark. These are people I met personally, right? I had to bodyguard them, right? Khalid Muhammad. These are these these are people that I that I know that I met. I had to be their bodyguard. Okay, when they were speaking in New York, right? So you're not telling me that I don't know. I'm saying they're equal to, but we were, our minds was colonized together. The women mind was colonized and our mind was colonized. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. We're equally to blame, equally to blame, right? That's what I'm saying. Okay. But brother, 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 brother Miller, uh, I'm gonna let you give your last thoughts. Provide your last thoughts, Brother Miller, Jonathan Miller, Brother Lewis, Brother Lewis, no, nope. Sister Muhammad. Uh, thanks for having me on. <laughs> no problem, anytime. Wisdom never sleeps. Last thoughts. Well, what I can say is this. Just Sister like Muhammad wanted to talk. Go ahead, Wisdom Never Sleeps. Like I was saying, a lot of times what we find with, they often say that the, the young ladies that are coming up without a father in the household and they don't see what a good father does with the husband, as a husband, as a father, so they miss that. They they don't know what that really looks like. So it's hard for them to have a true relationship with men if they haven't seen a good man in front of them. Regard if the father right. even absent, if he's not there in her life at all for whatever reason he's not, she don't know what that true man looks like. And the same with the guys that are raised in a single parent household with the mother. If she's busy working and doing whatever she needs to do, she's not nurturing usually. And so the nurturing side of that male gets missed. So therefore, he's going to blame women and not be so inclined to women because he's never been nurtured by the woman properly. He's never been seeing the man treat his mother properly as well. So there's many things going on because of the nurturing that is missed by these guys. So they go out still seeking breast milk, acting crazy and things like that. So there's things missing from children when both parents are absent, even though one is there. There's still some absentees while you're still in the same house. Right. So, so it's not just the man being absent, even if he's a deadbeat, a good beat. Sometimes he's, what I know personally, 90% of the men that people think are deadbeat, they're fighting hard to spend time with those children. But because the mother, they're not in love trying to spend time with that lady any longer, that's not going to be, that's going to be a problem. And especially gets another uh, uh, lady. Now, if, 
I've seen men where they go on move to do another family and disregard those kids. And that is totally wrong as well. You should still take care of your children, no matter what relationship you're in. So yeah, there's, there's not just blame. I call it accountability for everyone. It's accountability more than blame. So the individual and individuals need to be accountable for their actions and lack thereof or crazy behavior thereof inclusive because we're raising a bunch of kids that have no bearing, no foundation, no direction, and nobody to really go to but the peers just like them. So just because you're a single parent, and I hate that word, I just say you you, you got children and you not may have been married. Because you can be divorced and become a single parent, just like we know 70-80% of the time. So my thing is, is that, yes, Brother Ellis, there are a lot of panels. That's all they do is drill about the women. Those are not true men yet. They're not developed in this. This is emotional men that still, and I always say when you see a man either fighting against women all the time, either he's seen that with, with other men, or he's missed his nurturing where he cannot truly connect with his mother and love her the way he should have. So he's going to blame women because he has nobody to compare that woman he's turned down to. So if he has a strong, good mother in front of him and he see bad behavior women, he can call out the bad behavior of that woman or women. Okay. Just like women will say all men, which is just a few men that way, because if she was raised by a good man, <coughs> She can call out the bad behavior in the bad man, not all men. So most times they're putting people in categories of all because that's all they know as an all group. Right. So it's accountability, not so much blaming, but being accountable for everything on each part. Y'all have a wonderful night. You too. Brother Mufasa. Yeah, I ain't got too much to say, but I will, I will say real quick. Um, when my daughter was small and I broke up with the mother, um, she ran away. I couldn't find her. I had to hire a private investigator. Um, it was a long time I didn't see my daughter. I had to hire a private investigator, get her served, take her to custody court in order to uh, get back in my daughter's life. When I get off of this uh, this show, I'm going to finish writing, uh, um, what do you call that? It's a letter to the court, a uh, character letter, right? Mm -hmm. For a friend of mine who... Right. Uh, his girl is doing the same thing. It's a sister. They were together. Right, they were right. doing the thing. They were calling it revolutionary love and all that type of stuff and all that. And now she's keeping his child away from him. And then the family's uh, kind of getting around her saying they don't need him. So when people talk about that, um, it should, it you know, this is just something that we see. You see what I'm saying? And that when we bring that up like it was being discussed and then you um go to the other side and like yeah but what about the punks and what about the punks it almost is like i'm not saying this is what you were doing delroy but it it comes off as running interference against the topic at hand you see what i'm no, saying that's not what i was doing no i'm just hold on hold on we're gonna we're gonna be okay because okay because because what you what you're speaking to is the practice of parental alienation and parental alienation is a major issue i could just say from what i know in america and then what happens is if things go well the woman says see i raised this child all by myself we didn't need the dad if things go bad it was oh man well you know uh the child needed the father and the father wasn't there these things happen on a regular basis i've experienced it with my ex-wife my son as i said i just got a call yesterday he just that, that he's been charged with two serious felonies, right? And I ain't seen my son in three and a half years, but I'm still paying child support. You know what I mean? So the parental alienation is a real issue. And in those type of situations, you have to hold the parent accountable who's raising the child. Yeah, but if we don't talk about these things, at the end of the day, it's just going to look like the guy just left. You see what I'm saying? Right. Well, right. he just didn't want to be a dad. Yeah, that's what it's going to look like. But like in my case, like I said, I couldn't, you know, my father kept me. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't I couldn't see that happening. So I did everything I had I could to uh in order to um get my kid back. But like I'm talking to a brother, I'm talking to, he don't got the same wherewithal or makeup as me. 
You see what I'm saying? Right. He's dealing right. with this differently. He might be uh, 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 fighting suicide behind this. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wasn't mm -hmm. fighting suicide, but it's it's more to it. But we can't, at the end of the day, take away the accountability from the person who's keeping the kid away from the father. You see what I'm saying? Correct. And Correct. we can't just, each, each situation where there's a single mother, there are many of these situations where the woman wanted it to be like that. It didn't have nothing to do with no punks. It didn't have nothing to do with that. There are many where the woman wanted to be like that, and that's something that's being spread, and that's just a reality. You know what I'm saying? But um, like I said, I wasn't trying to attack you, Delroy, but I I, I felt like I'd be remiss if I, I did feel that, so I, I just wanted to say that. But that was it, bro. And very quickly, brother. You, you on mute, bro. You on mute. I'm getting some feedback. Uh, stated that we need to choose partners better. I would agree with that. But I also know from lived experience that when you have a child with someone, the relationship ch changes dramatically, right? And so what you tend to realize is that this person could be a great partner, a great spouse, a great girlfriend, a fiance, a wife, or a great husband, et cetera, but then be a horrible parent. And I always give the example of Christina Million, who married the singer songwriter, The Dream. She said he was a great boyfriend, great husband. They had a child together and dude was like, I ain't doing nothing with the baby. So it is a game of Russian roulette sometimes to where you don't know how the person is going to be as a parent. You just don't know. You really sometimes have to cross your fingers and hope this person won't keep me from my child. Hope the person won't undermine me when I what? Have to discipline the child. Because most people like myself, I had those conversations with my ex-wife. And then as soon as we had our son, no, leave him alone when he's doing something wrong. What the French toast are you talking about? I got to correct the boys so he doesn't go out in society and become a damn menace to society. Didn't matter. I would get on him about stuff. She would call the police on me. Now he facing 20 years in, in prison. Who would have known? And when I met the woman, she was hosting a Malcolm X birthday celebration. Let me add one little quick thought on that, Doc is the fact that kids do the same thing. You can have the first child and they're the only child to get all the attention. As soon as you get the second child and got to give them attention, that child snaps to a whole nother being, a whole nother person when they were the perfect child in the beginning. Jealousy right. sets in and they go off and come be the, one of the worst kids ever, still rebelling to get attention that the new kid was now receiving. So it works right. in now, that, is that true, level yeah. is too. That's true. Very much so. Yep. That I've, I've seen that happen before. So like these, this, these things are extremely unfortunate. But once again, as I stated, my ex-wife's family, they came to court and said, we're going to testify on your behalf to get this boy because we believe if he stays with his mom, he's going to end up in prison. And guess what happened? Right. So this is what we're speaking to, because more often than not, this is what takes place. Parental alienation is a major issue in American society when it comes to children. A major issue. Parental alienation. We got to We got to keep it real. Brother Bronze and then Brother Fire that, that, to um, close out this evening. <clears throat> OK, here we go. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, wow. If uh, if Dan Dinest is uh, somewhere, hey Dinest, thank you uh, for having me. Um, okay, uh, uh, so um, uh, what we uh, what we tend to forget uh, in this uh, man versus uh, woman uh, couple, fam family uh, injured families, uh, what we seem to forget is, you know, you know when when women and men are equal when their nation is conquered. Because you both go bow, you bow, you go bow through life. And women cater to the actual man in power. So it's, it's, it's a natural law. As long as we are in this conquered state. As but, long brother, as brother, hold on real quick. Hold on. We're seeing the exact opposite now. In fact, there's a thing that Dr. T. Hassan Johnson talks about in his book called the husband-son crisis. Well, we're seeing women... Of, of financial means, women of educational means, right? Seeking out men, purposely seeking out men with less education, less money, and then seeking to what? Then dominate that man in the relationship. So we're actually yeah. seeing the reverse now. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. I, I'm going. I'm, I'm going towards that. I'm going towards. Okay. That. Okay. 
so so uh, uh, women cater to, to to the actual man in power. They they take uh, they take what the man in power offers them. So uh, the man in power offers them Section Eight and and uh, and welfare on one side, and on the other side, the the man in power offer them education and uh, and a well paid job. Right. So so uh, what 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 do we get? We get we get uh, 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 well educated uh, 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 and well paid uh, women that that uh take and i and, and i'm and, and 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 let me finish please they take children from men from popular men uh you know uh we all know that 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 these women take uh, have children with the same men and it's always uh this uh masculine quote unquote you know really fat quote and quotes uh, uh these masculine men uh, uh have have uh, multiple uh, baby mamas right and the and these and these uh, these females are are educated but what what i tend to see uh, is is the black man actually is a victim because what i see here in the netherlands and most probably in the in the united states is the same shit the, uh, these women of other races come to take men from uh, to co come to take children from black men why it's easy to blame them just point at the black man and it's done you don't have to explain anything everybody is on your side and and it's done the child is yours just think about it it's 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 our state our conquered state that have our men uh, nailed down and we uh, so so what do do us black men have to do like 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 every day you know when you get a job you have to do two three times uh uh, uh better than than the next man because you're black so what what do we have we have to do in our situation yeah we have to do two times three times uh uh what what other men what, what men do from other groups uh why because we go uh, we have to get on their level we have to seek power as a group. And that's all I have to say. Let me say something real quick to, to that. It's not that we have to, you know, we brought up saying that we have to do three or four times more to get on their level. But the reality is we are the original people. We are the people that have the, the, the civilization that taught civilization. They are the babies to our people. We just have to know who we are and because we, once we know who we are, we do in excellence because that's who we are, not to seek anything from anybody else to get back on top. And we do that as a group, as an individual, which becomes a collective, and then we, re, we regain where we're supposed to be. But we are, at that time, we got to be accountable and responsible for running the nation, not looking for outside help. But it's not, we were taught that we got to do twice as much. But no, we've always been twice as we're twice as old on this continent, in this world, really than anybody else. So be the real, get back to who we originally are. The inventors and everything else might have not patented everything, but we sure invented most of everything and taught everything. So that's what we really must be teaching and understanding. Yeah, but there's a distance. There's there's a distance to where, where we are and where we were. So 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 still we have to do two times, three times, just just to get on the level uh, of of other people. Yeah, uh, I would and, say and, and, and so to 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 get on the level where we were, we have to do five times, six times more than 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 the average. So uh, uh, and I forgot the original the original um, uh, subject. Uh, was of course uh, all these people that that don't want to be African. Well, uh, 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 on that on that subject, it's 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 what I said earlier in the in the show. Uh, drop it like it, it's hard. Ain't nobody got time for that bu bullshit. Let's move on. We have we have things to do, like repairing our families and and uh, and the structure in our in our in our societies. But uh, again, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, yes, Joe. Out. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say this. Um, um, our women are not really seeing the future, and and what what it takes to to grow our people. You feel me? I don't think that you know, not very few of them are seeing it. 
on a majority level, our women are acting like we've never been through anything. And that's how they're raising the kids. Like, like we are not a people who was under oppression as is still under oppression. I, mean, I, I, um, I want to say this, right? All, all black men should endorse Pan-Africanism and black consciousness. But I tell you this, if all black men do that, you're gonna lose a lot of your black woman because black woman is not with pro-black shit. You feel me? Hold on, hold go on. Uh, sister Asada, I hope you are willing to provide a retort to that. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm not saying all, but you can count them on one hand how much of them is in the black conscious and 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 pan-africanism um way of life and and what that does is actually give us black men power to overwhelm the um the um the enslaver and the, the colonizer and colonization if you may and our black women don't see that far to know that yo um we should endorse pan-africanism and we should teach our children around this around um black pro, um pro-blackness and all that stuff and pro-africanness if you it's, it's it's not part of our main problem is our women, our black women. They are very Un far away. Unbelievable. From Unbelievable. I swear to God. Part of the main issue. Go look right now, right now. Um strip clubs is is um what you call sexualizing our women and and is um what you call exploiting our women well how much women you see fighting against that um, uh, uh, very few women fight against that uh -uh. okay 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 um um unbelievable no body exposure right sexualizing women and body exposure and all that how much women is against it again very few most women would like like to do their own thing, go on their exposition and walk around and acting like an idiot and all that stuff. Run the town red, all that stuff. And Pan Africanism and Black consciousness is right there. They're not interested in that. And it, it, it don't make us as men powerful because, first of all, you're not teaching unity. And the woman, even if the men decide that we want to teach unity, they're raising a set of dudes who fight against that. If you may, all right, me and me and um, Mr. Lumumba and and some others and diners right now, diners having issues with the with the um FBA dudes. Who raising these FBA dudes? Who make them don't like their 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 um their own people who, who, who raising some jamaicans you know some jamaicans who, you, they they never will claim africa who raising them yeah, it, I, I, would say, I would say that, that that issue we tend to find is systemic and part of that has to do once again we talked about with the disafricanization process where african people who were enslaved and their descendants were uh there was a ruthless negative indoctrination that taught us to hate where we came from. Yeah, and someone and is- and, and the reason I'm saying and that is we, found, we see the issue of black people seeking to disassociate themselves from the African heritage, even when they were two parent households. Right. So I mean, that, yeah, that, that, that yeah. is not an issue you could put on a black woman. And brother, fine. No, well, no. Yeah, black I, oh, let me say this real quick so I yeah. can correct you on something. And this is why Brother Ellis have an issue with what you're saying. When you're talking about the strip yeah. clubs, the OnlyFans and all that with the women, I know that's not great behavior, but if it wasn't being formed to see simp men out there putting money and supporting it, they wouldn't be there. 
So that's why some okay. of these feminine dating game apps is going down because a lot of the new people are not on them like that. They don't want that. Who you is know? creating? Who no, is creating? The the women, listen, listen, listen. The women that's doing that, women are not out there tipping them. It's men that's going into these places. So if we as who women, are, right, who right, are right, creating? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. One mic, one mic. Let me say this. I get what you're saying. But at the same time, if, if we other men can reach those simp men and say, hey, if you want to help change behavior, you got to stop paying for the behavior. So I agree. It's not, so sometimes we have to reach those same young men if we can, so they won't support bad behavior out of women and still blame women for bad behavior. People only do what you support them, especially monetarily with the OnlyFans and the strip clubs. That's just the way it works. You have rappers, they, they wouldn't put the trucking people in there for women if they said, no, we're not. You can't blame the rappers, only the women and both. Both of them are accountable. It's accountability for both. That's all I want you to get when you're talking about your dialogue. Please. He, 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 he can't understand that. He, 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 he don't have the capacity oh, to understand that. Come on, because I, I'm, I'm, look, it's, it's 12 o'clock here on the East Coast. I'm trying to, so Sister Mahalo, yeah. go ahead and, and we're going to let you close out. All right, thank you, man. No problem. Okay, and what was the question that was being asked of me? Uh, so, Kylie, hey, brother, if you're still in the comments, can you please provide the question for Sister Muhammad? I just subscribed to your channel, too, Sister Muhammad. He blame everybody, Sister Muhammad. He blames every woman on the planet that's black. You know, women do have a women do have a big responsibility. Well, you know, and, and one of the things I can agree with regarding the teachings of the nation is that, and this is, we know this is just universal, is that the woman is the first teacher of culture to the child. True. Mm -hmm. And I can say that my mother did a great job teaching culture to me. Um, and one of the things that I can just say, let me tell my camera one, that I, I shared this with my, my parents like maybe a month ago. Um, <laughs> he said, it's six in the morning here, cry me a river. I got you, brother. It's all relative, right? Was that I realized, I told my parents, that I realized when I left my parents' home when I was 17, that the women in the world weren't like my mother and my sister. And I had a, a you're talking about a hell of a, 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 a awakening, an eye opening to realize that. So there's something to consider, you know. But yeah, the first teacher of culture is the, is the woman. Right, and I, but I think a lot of that has gotten to the point where women have started to devalue their roles as mothers. For some and reason, that is feminism. Feminism makes that argument. Literally, yeah, it's, it's, I've read the literature myself. Like literally, they make that argument that being a mother is oppressive to a woman. Now you know literally. what I have. My husband and I have seven children. And I don't, I've never felt oppressed by the teaching and the instilling mm -hmm. discipline. And I've never felt, you know, oppressed by that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an honor to do the job, in my opinion. Right. And you have to look at it that way in order to respect it. Right. Hold on. Are you agreeing with, uh, what the last brother was saying? Uh, what since the moment? He, what did he say? Cause you know, I have a, I step away periodically. So he blamed everything on black women, period. I, w I wouldn't say that. I, I think what okay. he was saying was that it was more the, the issue was more the women. That's what he's saying. Everything is not black women's fault because, in my experience, I've seen women do derelict things, and I've also seen black men do derelict things. Correct. Uh -huh. So where I think the only the experiences I've had with chil honorary children in the neighborhood, there used to be a couple of little boys who used to steal things from my backyard constantly. And uh, they, they were raised by a single father. So it's not always, I know some damn good single mothers too, but ideally, yeah, I think we should have double parent, both parents in the household. But I think the, the degradation of our culture has caused a lot of this. So poverty will make people do crazy things, men and yes. women. But uh, uh, Sister Mom, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, all right, so you know our um our history and what the um both the male and female had to go through. A lot of times, even on the slave plantation, the women had to step in 
and protect the men. They just had no choice. Sometimes sometime just sleeping with the master, making them feel good that night so you don't sell nobody the next day. You see what I'm saying? So the women had to make a, a, um, a sacrifice. Also, I'm putting the blame on both of them because we were both colonized. We were both we were both raped. That's another lot of thing that um, a lot of people don't know that the men was being raped also on the slave plantation. You see what I'm saying? So we both were colonized. So my thing is, a lot of these platforms, these people just want to blame everything on the woman. Period. You see what I'm saying? They have no balance at all. You know, and and that's what I'm I'm pushing um 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 I'm back against. I I I know exact. I I said earlier, a friend of mine had to take the kids. Because the wife wouldn't get up. She was a nice lady, but she wouldn't get off drugs. Right? And he had, he had to take the kids. And he had a hard time getting the kids because of the system. You see what I'm saying? So, so I, um, um, it goes both ways. You need both parents in the house. You see what I'm saying? And both parents have to raise, raise the children. Everybody have their entity um, uh, and their um, chores that they have to do to, to, to raise the children. To raise the children. That Go ahead. Did the brother get cut off? What happened? Yeah, he was yeah. mute. Yeah, go go ahead though, sister. Yeah, but you know, in instances, I don't think there is a. Some people say, "Oh well, that's what men do, and that's what women do." There are instances where some sisters can be just as disciplined as men. Yes. So, in order, you know, we have to kind of navigate both of those things to be a couple, to be in the household with the children, That's to make true. sure everything's covered. So, right. you know, sometimes sometimes my husband cooks. Sometimes I, I there's certain things I discipline on and certain things he dis disciplines on. Right. So you just have to come together and decide, okay, what's our setup going to look like? Because everybody's setup is going to be different. Thank you. Is your husband the head of your household? He is, yes. Now, do you think most sisters would be able to just easily answer that question and say yes, like you just did? No, because see, I look at I look at family dynamic as a different thing. I pride myself on having disciplined children, well-mannered children. You know, I'm I, I, I take great pride in that. So when my children want to do something crazy, I make it a point to know. Okay, you know what, your father, you have to talk to your father about this, and this is going to be a problem. Well, you know, I let them know straight at from from well, jump. And Sister Muhammad, if I could just interject, my mother was that way. The same way. My mom would be like, I'm going to tell your dad when he get home. And we'd be like, no, no, hold on. But no, nope. I'm going to tell him when he get home. And my dad was like, well, if she's telling me this, that means I got to do something about it. Right. Because I'm I'm going to do my dis because I'm a disciplinarian also. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have two story. Mother. I don't mean to. But I remember mm -hmm. being three years old. And I had to go to my brother and sister were in school. My dad was at work. And this is before I started preschool. I actually remember this. We had to go to the grocery store, my mother and I. We go into the grocery store. My mother tells me, don't say nothing. Don't touch nothing. Don't do anything. And then she said, you see that sign over there? That's where the bathroom is. If you do anything in contravention of what I just said, I'm going to take you in there and get you, and get you a whooping. And I remember being three years old and I didn't say, do, or touch anything when we went into that grocery store. I still remember this. It was 1986. I did that same thing. My children knew. We go straight to, and I wouldn't, I, would, I don't spank my children in public, but they will get it if they need it. Yeah, I, I, My mom never spanked me in public, but I believe she was going to if I would have, I'll never forget it. Yeah, we'll go to the bathroom, but like, not yeah, I, I remember you telling me that, and I believed her, right? So, um, so I, I, I would, I, I would say that you know, my mother raised us because it was three of us the, the same way. Yeah. yeah, children, children just need you know, men are, I mean, and naturally, it's just like that. I think our problem is we like to fight with nature. You mm. can't fight nature; nature's gonna win every time. Mm. Men are a little more. They, there's something about the father's voice 
this that makes the, children fall in line. It's just that's just how it is. But that's their job. They're the protector. We are our, we are the protector. That's true. Yes. You see, that's, that's our, our job. job. Like that's what I'm saying. We we have certain jobs. We each have certain jobs. Is the man the head of the household? Delroy. Not so, in, 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 I'm 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 gonna say it again. In my household, in my opinion, no. I we both have our jobs to do. We both have our, our, our jobs to do. If 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 somebody break in, in in the goddamn house, yes, my ass is going to, going after uh, whoever it is. That's not her job, right? If something else um 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 having to do with with the running of of the house, that's her job. I don't know. I don't want no part of it, right? I'm not going to say what furniture to buy, what to cook, and all those and, and and stuff like that. That's her job. She have her part, right? Nurturing the children and and stuff like that, right? That's most of her part, right? So I'm I'm saying we have we each have our our job to do and to raise the children. That's all I'm saying. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? Let me say this real quick. A lot of times we get confused on by the head of household. Look at it from the perspective of you have a CEO and you need a COO. The chairman of operations is usually mother. She operates the whole house anyway. But there's got to be a deflection to a final decision or something to the CEO, which is usually going to be the dad. And the reason, and that, that's just the order of things like it is. It's not wrong with that. It's not taking anything away from the mother. Or the wife is nothing, and it's not taking anything away from the father. We got to stop not wanting to be in that which we were placed into because then that's why things break down as well. You put too much on that woman, which you shouldn't have to. She should have a place to go where a final decision that even though she may know what it is, she shouldn't have to make it when the man is there. Not only so, that, the reason why the kids, I'm in, run your household the way you want. I'm just telling you that's the way things should, that's why she can deflect like that because she understands that as well. This now, is a good point, Jermaine. Now, now, what I am saying too is about when the father's voice, because the moment like you come up like I did, you know, on that type of parenting, the reason why the father's voice is mostly feared to be heard of his involvement because he's a warrior first. He might look like he's out working and stuff, but there was always warrior, front line, uh, creating this. That's why they know how to protect. They know how to fight. They know how to defend. But the point is, you don't want the warrior to have to snatch you up. Okay? Right. Because right. if he has to come from that front line that grown to man. check you, right. you are already shaking because of that. That's the image when the chief comes in. Don't mean the high priestess didn't have less power, but it get to a point where she all have to say, okay, I'm going to tell the chief. I'm going to tell your dad. That resonates with them because he's not normally involved other than seeing when he comes in. You so said exactly normally, what I said. Yeah, but That's what I'm it. saying is he's still the CEO, the ultimate defecting. He's the warrior. So true women knows their power and strength. They know they operate in everything. The man knows that. He knows it, without her that the operation wouldn't run. That's why she's a chief operating officer, if you will. But in <laughs> the end result, he still got to make sure that she have everything when she comes to him and say, honey, look, this is what we need. This is what I need to keep things running. He's got to make sure she have that. That's what a CEO does. They're not in the daily operation. They're in the overall growth of the house or and or business. They have to make final decision and look from where everything comes. When a child gets adult, like she says, the discipline, and she, they have certain things to do, and they still they're gonna still come up. Now he's got another person that might be the the, the chief of something else because they was raised to do that part and take over that part. But in the end, he still got to make sure that person is also taken care of. You're, so, you're not far off from what I no, said. Hold on. All right. So listen, mm -hmm. hey, look, I got to get to sleep. So we go. <laughs> All right. So good night. Bro, bro, bro. Until next time. Good night. All right, good night. Good All conversation. Right. Good night. No Thank doubt. You.